if we're actually cut somewhat right too. Sup everybody, this is Carrick with ACG and I'm here with Abzi for the best Yo. gaming podcast number 429. 429. Yeah. Not yeah, right. 420. Ah, oh, 9. Dude, nine did you see out. I I saw this picture um I think yesterday on Reddit where it was like uh it was this guy had a had a hundred dollar bill graded because the serial number was sixty nine four twenty something something. Oh wow! And did he? Yeah, is, so is he it worth it more? Because if I don't cause... know, but he just has it like graded and in like a little container and stuff. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would assume that would be worth more just For because sure. of you know, just because of what it is. So and boobs at the end. Sorry, it was eight zero zero eight. Uh, five at the end. Oh, yeah. whoa! So that's that's yeah. got to be worth way more. It's, yeah. it's, it's like when you get a boobs. <laughs> you get a collectible game and like you know Carmack signs it or something. It's going to be yeah. worth more. Anyway, yeah. sup everybody? Thank you very much for joining us. Absolutely appreciate it. Um, what's the next review? The next review will be Rogue Trader, I think. Yeah, Rogue Trader. And Walter Walter Genson states, and I wanted to pin this. He says another podcast. I watch ACG less and less since the channel switched from reviews, previews with jokes to blah 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 podcast three times a week. It's two times, two times. a week. And, uh, and yeah, there's not a lot of reviews. That's absolutely true, especially because I took a vacation, but whatever. It's cool. I understand. And I think that you should definitely find somebody else. If, uh, the podcasts are bothering you, I enjoy them. I think they're awesome. And they actually let me do more reviews because I think it removes a little bit of the stress of that. I've talked to Abzi about where you're trying to, you know, sometimes there's a game that comes up and you're like, well, I'll probably do this one. You know, it, like, because whether it be money or whether it be, you know, just because, well, just because somebody's complaining. But I've noticed, at least it feels to me like not only do we get longer term fans, more people who are enjoying it in the Discord, but for me, it's a stress reliever and it lets me actually dive into games. I would say, especially this year when it's been so busy, let me dive into games with a little bit of a fresher attitude. Because one of the things I get from you guys is like we did last week where we talked about average games. So like when you are like, hey man, um, here's an average game, and then sometimes I'll pick up on it and playing those average games or being reminded of them lets you go into a game without having those expectations that are, you know, at a million because all you did was the play, you know, play those massive titles and stuff like that. And it is so funny because I'll do a small game and it'll get no review, you know, no views. But then if I don't do a small game, people will be like, How dare you? I'm leaving. And you're like, dude, man, nobody's watching hey, this. I mean, you need to stay in your place. You need to only do reviews, dude. You can never yeah, branch dude, out. You can have I, I hear you. Nothing but else I, I, in life. I get it, though, because I used to drop even dirtier jokes, and I've seen people be like, oh, you don't drop as many dirty jokes. I'm like, I wouldn't be here if I continued to. I mean, they just de they demonetized everything. Yeah, I've thought about an OnlyFans where I'm just like, dude, here's the OnlyFans review, man. Prepare. Just dark and dirty. But you know somebody would take it, put it on YouTube, right? They'd take it, put it yeah. on YouTube, and then somebody would bitch that I said something and be like, how dare you? I mean, you we know, started so off win. the last podcast talking about how many times I jacked off, so... Not you. Human. I mean, all of us. We talked about masturbation as a whole. True. But I, masturbation Communal. as a whole sounds really, <laughs> really dirty, but you, you get yeah. my drift. Um. So thank you to everybody who comes, and I absolutely, uh, I absolutely do get it. You'll be seeing some reviews from me, but it'll be enough... Uh, it, it, it'll be exactly what it is, two, two podcasts for the continuing future, as well as many reviews as I can get. Love the games, $2 Super Chat. When's this damn GTA trailer coming? Hope it's great. What do you When's think? When's the game, GTA game trailer? Awards, game Awards after or before? Um, I don't think it'll be Game Awards. I mean, if it is, I'll be very, very surprised, because first of all... um. It's bigger than the Game Awards. I think GTA is. I, I think GTA is its own big thing. It does not need the Game Awards. The Game Awards mm -hmm. would want it, but if it did pay to have um, Rock, Rockstar show their game in the Game Awards, they would definitely use it to market the Game Awards for more people to come and watch so they can right. increase their viewership, even if they wanted to spend that much money. To, so so I think it'll be its own thing like every other trailer they've since 2013. I don't know. I think since ever. Um, where they just release all they need to do is release a YouTube video. They need they don't need anything else. So if it's on Game Awards, I'll be very surprised and it'll be awesome. But I think it'll be either before or after. Yeah, they don't. Uh, you know, the people that used to work there no longer work there. But when I dealt with them in the past during the GTA Five trailer and and Red Dead, they were very clear that it 
it would have actually fragmented the talk and views towards the game because their community is so big that it is actually bigger than anything else. Like it yes. is, it's bigger than than uh, like the Game Awards, which is crazy because I think the Game Awards was watched by a million people or something like that. Yeah, I think a million. Yeah, and and. And moreover, um, if 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 let's say the Game Awards did pay to have Rockstar, that tweet would have said "catch our trailer at the Game Awards," um, you rather think so? than "catch our trailer" in yeah, the beginning of December. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Yeah. Uh, if they, instead of well, unless they have some participation with each other, but yeah, I would agree. There is. It, it would have been better to be like, "Hey, man." Check us out. We're going to be on the Game Awards, and then have even more people come to the game because. Yeah you know that a lot of people will watch until that that GTA trailer drops in the Game Awards. Probably and then at the leave. end of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, so it has to be <laughs> yeah. at the end, right? Because can you imagine that at the starting? You know people who are just GTA fans or don't like the Game Awards would would segment pretty pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Fighting D-Dog, $5 Super Chat. KOTOR, most likely struggling because they're having trouble getting the gameplay. How would you make the combat, for example? I would copy Dragon Age. So if you don't know what he's, I, I'm, I think you do because I think we've talked about this. But real that time turn with pause, baby. I, I still think they stick with the old. I loved, what was it? You could, you could bank three moves. I think you could. Oh, you could for that for the original. Kinda, you go like boom, yeah, boom, boom. Could, can then, you still pause? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's 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 kind of like that, but with a cue. Um, I thought you said like G uh, Dragon Age when, and, he did. and that's when I replied. He did. Oh, he, he said, said like he would Age. copy Dragon Age Inquisition if he could. And yeah, I I don't know if they will. Personally, think that they are not gonna do. I, I think they're gonna do like real time. Uh, at this point, you know, cater to masses, do right. real time, fully like action. I don't think they'll uh they'll do like a strategic anything. Uh, in my opinion, my but I big... would love I love real time with pause or whatever they had. Yeah. Yeah, my big hope is that they just keep it because I loved banking yeah. the moves because I would just be like bank, 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 and then watch and switching it characters. and then switch character. Yeah, and then yeah. or unbank the move, put a new. I, I actually love the idea of real time with pause with bank, but I don't. Yeah, know if there's many games like that, but I, no. banking yeah. feels good to me. Like there's something about it where I feel unstressed, so I can be like mm. heal, uh, flurry because I remember flurry was my favorite. Heal flurry you know, critical attack and then jump over and be like, you know, do this, do that. And then you're watching it. And yeah, if something yeah, yeah. doesn't hit, right, you're like, oh, I can't oh, think oh. of many games that do that, honestly. N no, to I mean, Final Fantasy had then... gambits, right? But that was when it happened. Gambit's cool. Yeah. Gambit's cool. Dragon Age had something similar. There was some program, like a little did. bit of mm -hmm. programming. Inquisition, right? Where if you're lower than 10% health, yeah. you could use a heal yeah. to do that stuff. Yeah. Dude, I love that because then I think the game developers can be like, let's let's like amp this up because we know game players can control some of that stuff. And there, the idea of having some jackass continually dying because he won't grab one of the 27 health potions you have. And you're like, mm -hmm. dude, you're not a pariah. Fucking heal yourself. What are you yeah. doing? Or they so, use too much, like motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Go, yeah. Go, you just hear him gargling in the back. You're like, what is that sound? Dude's just taking all your all your healing potions. Yeah, yeah. that is I, I love that in Final Fantasy. I love it in Dragon Age, Inquisition, any little bit of programmic kind of stuff. And then Kotor's Jade Empire was fully uh that that was fully action based. So I don't think that one had any banking. Oh but, yeah, uh, janky uh, as fuck. I tried. <laughs> it, 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 tried. Is, it is janky. It is janky. I love it, but it yeah. is janky. Uh, uh, yeah. SP3CU, first of all, uh, 11 PLN Super Chat. I want to say appreciate you jumping into chat yesterday. That was awesome. We had a huge uh, Discord patron chat. He just says, love you guys. Thank you very much. Love and then Hush Out Ghoul, $2 Super Chat. Will you stream the Game Awards? That's like the 15th uh, question just for this podcast I've got on it. Yes, I will stream them. I, I may be alone because it is like... 4 30 I'm, p.m bro, for me I, i'm gonna be there with you dude it's gonna be okay. like 2 a.m it's gonna I'm, be 2 a.m it's up. gonna yeah it's gonna no be work next day yeah. it's gonna be hella early for a lot of people in fact it's going to be very early so and then also i wanted to say we uh if you jump into patron now we are removing the 48 hour wait for the discord which we used to have because we had administrative issues but i think i've got it all fixed up so if you jump in used to be a bit of a wait now there's not a wait. So if you want to jump into the Patreon and the Discord, you can do so without any issues. Let's look at the first bit of news here. Let's let's get through a couple questions, actually. 
Uh, I was asked multiple times, are we going to stream? Yes, I am. So anybody who asked that, um, we're not going to go through each one. Uh, Ty Tigris Douche Gang. That's a username. Why don't you just switch to one console or the other and do a podcast that focuses on one? It seems like those podcasts get a lot of traction during rumor season or when big news pops up for specific consoles, and they do a lot of cross content. Now that I write this, I think this might be the worst idea I've ever had. <laughs> okay, so please good. don't you, do you this. <laughs> I was like, what yeah, is going on? Why would, because I have somebody take yeah. some of these and put them in the document for me. Uh, I appreciate, mm -hmm. I appreciate the, the, uh, <laughs> putting that in there. Yeah. We're not going to do console specific. It doesn't work oh, for me as no. a reviewer. And <laughs> you get that incest kind of feeling to oh, it. Oh God, I hate, I'd hate that, man. Yeah. I'd it's much, it. yeah, we won't. Yeah. We, it, it just doesn't yeah. work, man. It's like, it's just one of the things that I, I cannot stand. Um, uh, let's see. Lindsay, Lind, Lindsay says, thank you so much for the rough game shirt. It's amazing. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate that. Thank you for buying one. Cooley, Cooley I says, will you, be, will you be streaming the Game Awards? Yes, we will. Uh, ben Ben Gigachad says, I've returned my PlayStation portal, but I gave it a chance. The restriction on bitrate was noticeable instantly, and I went back to PS Play. Why do you think they use such an underpowered device? Money? Is it? Is it money? I think it's money to make a mass product. Yeah. Yeah, right? of course. But like, I feel like, uh, I feel like they would have made more. I, I don't know because a lot of people are buying them in anyway. So, so I may be wrong, but, but for me and a lot of, a lot of the communities I'm in, I guess I'm in some bubbles where, they're just the use case is so low for that that if they actually made like imagine they made like a an actual ps portable version kind of like an xbox series s where mm -hmm. it's like an underpowered ps5 but portable where you play the games at like let's say 30 fps at 1080p right that would have been way better man for in my opinion but like obviously yeah no i agree i think I, I think it feels um it feels like what they i saw uh and I got contacted by some people on Reddit who were doing some bitrate tests for the portal uh, because I had com complained about it in the, in the uh, podcast. And I don't know if that's who posted, but they were saying they were getting 11 to 8. Now, I don't, uh, mine was showing up at about 23 a second. So if they, were get, if they were getting 8 to 11 or 23, that's still less than what you would want for a 1080p screen. You would want sure. somewhere around 30. So yeah. I or think streaming. Like internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. SIM card. One of the biggest complaints about Xbox um, Cloud, which I I like, but I notice when I was doing Starfield, which on the consoles I'm, is still 30, it was pretty bitty. So yeah. and streaming just, it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while. And I think that this device, maybe they'll patch it. I'm, exci I'm excited to see them patch it. I don't think it I takes mean, it a very powerful device. Mode. I know, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, it does have an airplane mode, which I do not yeah. understand. But has anybody in chat got a portal? And if you like it, don't worry. I'm going to tell chat not to be dicks um, just because, you know, we've had some issues and stuff. I'd like to know if anybody's got it and is happy with the portal and just what your experience is, good or bad, if you've got it um, or had it and returned it, which I'm actually hearing a lot of, which is uh, which is sad because I it would have been nice to have them not have to waste their time buying it. But and also, let's just say it would have been a no-brainer to just have Bluetooth and it work with, like, any, any Oh, right. right. Bluetooth like, doesn't uh, do the head Like, headphones. that's definitely a restriction for money to buy the $200 yeah. Yeah. headphones, right? Yeah. yeah. They're good, though. I mean, they, they're good. I mean, I, sure, I they're $200. And, yeah, they're $200. <laughs> that's the thing, right? Here's the, yeah. here's the weird situation. The same price. For $200, yeah. the earbuds are good. For $200, the portal is wanting which I think is probably the easiest way to look at the entire situation and be like yeah. 200, 200. You can get something for 200 in one segment of technology and for 200, you can't. And, you, you know, you and can't add those get up and you can get a what brand new PS5. Oh, damn. And PS5 dropped, right? <laughs> Black Friday sales. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. We're going to talk about the scams that are black, the absolute scams I saw from major websites this last two weeks were incredible. Also, Oof. I don't know if you've noticed, but SEO hit a certain title. I've done this for this amount of time, and here is what I here are the items you should buy. So you'll see I've reviewed monitors for 10 years. Here are the monitors you should buy. I've reviewed 
mouse or, or mice. But here's what's crazy, Abzi. We'll just jump into this right now because that fucking this is pissing me off. I go into a certain website who has a podcast three weeks ago talking about monitors. Two monitors in specific they've talked about and said they did not think was worth getting number two and three on their list in the Black Friday sales. And I was just Oof. like, what are we doing? What are we, why are you, why would that's you even do That's also inattention to detail. Like, that's, well, it's uh, either, hello? that's the problem, right? It's, it's black and white on that. It's like Sith yeah. and Jedi, dude. You either did it on purpose, <laughs> dude, yeah. right? You yeah. did it on purpose or you made a huge mistake one, two times minimum. And then also, by the way, same person. It wasn't, I want to make sure this is clear. It wasn't a different person. It was the same person making the list. That's what, that's what was going through my head. Is it maybe a different person that made no. that? Same person, um, same person. And I just was like, wow. man, I, I, I get that Black Friday is a big deal for websites. Sponsors are a big deal for some YouTubers. Not getting demonetized is big for me. So there's certain things you have to do. But if I'm telling people the portal isn't worth getting, I'm not going to put the portal on a Black Friday list. Right? Like, that's idiotic. I I, I don't know if this is like me being, um, you know, kind of kind of just a doomer on everything and just like... Doomer. black build, you know? <laughs> right. But... but uh, I've gotten I've gotten to a point where where when I, I you know when I Google like what what should I buy or you know top you know headphones or top yeah. monitors or I cannot rely on articles or anything anymore. I I want to see user reviews. I want to see yeah. user experiences now, and it's and and you know it's and I even trust that's those. questionable now. That's questionable, you know, but and, it's and more at, trustworthy. At the same time, I trust those or like an aggregate like read a lot of people's experiences. Rather than mm -hmm. just an article with 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 techies and and you know professionals and stuff, and mm -hmm. I just don't trust them anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's an odd situation, and it's sad because then it just gets into this whole thing of like, it was the podcast, including myself when I do podcasts, was he just being in a bad mood that day, you know, or yeah. did you do the entire article? And you just want, and to me, what bothers me is I feel that there are more than five monitors. You didn't have to put two and three in there. Right. Right. You could have, right. you could have found 150 monitors and not <laughs> made that mistake. And it wasn't a small diss on the podcast either. It was like, oh no, I don't like this for this reason. There was very sort of specific reasons for it, but it was just one of those things that pisses me off. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about good stuff though. Dragon sure. Dogma showcase. Oh my god, man! What'd you think? I instantly I downloaded the uh, uh, Dark Arisen and modded it. Um, I I want I I just want to be in that world. I want. <laughs> I do it. I thought okay, I let's start with first of all. So they showed the big ass Titan, the Shadow of the Colossus kind of looking gameplay where you're fighting the Titan, right? Um, mm -hmm. and the 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 coolest part about that to me was the Titan destroying a bridge. So it's like. The bridge was there in that world. Then after this fight, the bridge is gone because the giant destroyed it. Yeah, and that's awesome to see. And we've seen it in trailers prior where there's so many things like, you know, you can uh, top over this ogre to make a land bridge. The the mages have like a platform thing. Like I love this this uh this kind of environmental dynamic environment that was about. By the way, an anthem was was supposed to do that. I remember the first trailer of anthem, but um. Yeah. That was that was something I really really liked. Um, another 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 thing. The Tempest also always looks really cool. I think I I want to really play that class. But the Illusion guy, the the Trickster, I yeah. love that shit, man. You're just standing in the back and just kind of you know. I love the uh, elusive spells in uh, in Skyrim. Like I always liked going that route and just. Do you mean uh, illusion? See, like, you said elusive. I want to make sure we are talking about the same thing. Illusion, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. illusion no, spells. Right. Like I love the idea of debuffs usually, and mm -hmm. the idea of like a character just sitting in the back and kind of uh, fucking with the enemies, you know, like uh, doing some random stuff to get them confused is really, really cool to me. Um, another thing uh, that Elven language was hilarious. It sounded like The Sims. It was so funny, or like or, or, or like a monster hunter. Daka. Argon yeah. dial schnare. <laughs> that was, that was funny. Yeah, it was very bad. It's like monster hunting of language. Right? Yeah. Um, but it's really cool that they um they're they're going going all in on the on the pawn, pawn system as well. The fact that um there's double casting now. I saw there's like a clip yeah. where, where like this guy's casting a fire spell and his pawn is casting a fire spell next to him. 
for a big fire spell, which is really, really cool, that camaraderie. And uh, and the fact that, like, as before, how, you know, your friends had pawns that maybe did certain quests that could help you with other quests, these mm -hmm. pawns can now translate languages for you depending on what they've encountered, which is really, really cool. What about you? I also don't think that's the only thing. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so mm -hmm. the pawns originally, I, I don't know if you played it recently or i'm sure you remember but they had their list of knowledges they'd learn about three stars of wolves or maybe five stars and that the more they fought wolves with your friends or with you the more they learned um i don't think language is the only thing that's coming up i think that's one of the larger things but it feels to me like the pawns in this were saying more direct stuff to what was going on like when you're yeah. fighting the giant, they were talking about how to defeat the giant. So my opinion is it won't just be wolves are afraid of fire. It might be it might be information like you should flank to the left or I'm flanking. You know, I, I haven't been able to see that yet, but I'm hoping that that's what mm -hmm. happens. The only thing I noticed, and this is an audio guy bitching, so no one should take us seriously. Uh -oh. But it bothered okay. the hell out of me through the entire thing. The pawns sound like they're in your earphones and not in the world. Oh, it shit, sounds like really? they're in a booth. Yeah. So there's no effect. So when you're when he was flying down towards the giant, they're like, uh, you know, he's super big. We need to vote. And it sounded <laughs> I didn't like notice it was, that. Yeah. Didn't... <laughs> it, it, and it caught me. I was sitting there listening. I was like, oh no. But I'm it's not gonna it, it would never affect the entire review score, but I will mention it if it pops up. But they can't they're not gonna do proximity like lethal uh, company or anything because if a pawn got out of the way and you needed his info, that would be stupid. But it did, yeah, it did bother me a little. Oh no, it, I it, could see that for sure. That yeah. would bother me too, yeah. And it could have yeah. just been that momentary cut that I was like, what is going on? But whatever, it's just me bitching. Pawns look awesome. Uh, graphically, they all look better. They say they're using photogrammetry for the character mode because in Dragon's Dogma, I love Dragon's Dogma, but you could make an ugly man or an ugly woman. Yeah. That was it. You could the character not make, customization was dude, not that good. <laughs> they looked like they were made of clay and rock that was just hammered together, right? It looked it looked terrible. It, it just almost like a voodoo doll. It just looked yeah. bad. And yeah. I saw people making like Hillary Clinton, and they did a good job, but it looked like AI did Hillary Clinton five gens ago. You know, you were yeah. like, that's not really, that's just a person with her hair or whatever. This looked good, man. It looked yeah. really good. They did a good and, job on the character creator. Yeah, and I love uh, I love that there's the morphing stuff where you can just take a character and morph it to another looking character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think they said main pawn, like last time, and your character can be created. And then every, all the other pawns are going to be randomly generated or your friends, which will be awesome. Or your friends, yeah. Yeah, the pawns yeah. look like they had made a step up. The villagers can attack enemies, which looks like a step up. They had three main bosses that they showed, or maybe two. Mm -hmm. No, they... Well, they had a semi-boss uh, Minotaur guy with an axe mm. in the starting of one of the... I don't know if it's still playing, but in the starting one of the trailers. And then they've shown all different kinds of traversal. I wonder if you're going to have the traversal thing with size again. You're too big to get through this hole, or you're not Probably, tall Probably, right? And, and now there's different races, too. Yeah, there's different races. There's uh, yeah. human and then Catman, right? There's Khajiit, basically. Yeah, yeah. And then there's... Can he be an elf? I think they said elves you could not be. I could be. Okay. Yeah, you cannot be elves. I'm almost sure it's stated that they're not a playable race, but they're a, mm -hmm. a, a choosable race for pawns. Could be wrong. Somebody. Can heard. I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, how am I this so sexy? Let me, how let me are describe you sexy? it. No, just how go for it. What were you um, so in the start of the game, when everyone starts the game, all the pawns are going to be babies. They're going to be fresh. No one's going to have a smart pawn, right? Yeah. Yeah. So everyone's going to be on a level where pawns can't help you, right? Pawns don't know shit. So, so you're gonna. So I. Th that's a really, really cool thing to think about. Where if you play the game on release, you're gonna have a very different experience, and you're gonna train pawns. Yeah. And then later on, people are gonna use those pawns that maybe if you replay or if you uh, play the game late, you're gonna have that help, which is really cool. And then you, yeah, that kind of eliminates the uh, internet guide portion where, oh well, these pawns can be my guides. If I get like a high level one from a friend or something, pawn. right? So here's yeah. my question though. Since they're gonna have auto generated pawns, my assumption is those Ooh. guys will have skill levels. Oh, they will okay. know well, about wolves. They will know I that's my guess. 
That's but my maybe guess. not like an all because because in 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 Dark Arisen now I can find a friend spawn that is like all knowing. Like he's a mother, he's right. a beast. You know, this guy used him to hundred percent the game. But I'm I'm guessing the auto generated ones will be more kind of. Um, you know, specifically, yeah, and level, to something. And, and you have to go up and level to get certain pawns, right? Isn't it sure. in some like yeah. if you're 13, you can only get 15 or something? I think I remember, yeah, yeah. and then there was also yeah, money sure. involved, if I remember, right. yeah, yeah, so, there were like a, a point system or a ranking system or money or something where if you didn't have enough points, you can't recruit really, really yeah. strong pawns, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I reviewed it on one system when it was new. I yeah. believe the switch. So no pawns from anybody other than reviewers. And they were pretty poor, but you could buy the more expensive pawns. And I'm almost 100% sure they had higher skills, but they won't be maxed out. Maxed out, I don't even know if that'll be a thing for pawns that are artificially made because that's something a human does. That's a mini maxer. Mm -hmm. That's a platinum guy. That's not necessarily sure. for the gameplay. So I just feel like it'll have some. They'll be higher than others, but probably won't be maxed out unless you get super high and they have DLC like Dark Arisen. Because remember, Dark Arisen was like, you need to be level 50. And I was like, fuck that. I went in there at like 46 and just got smoked. So right. maybe if they do DLC, that's really hard. So we did get asked about my comparisons, not yours. My comparisons uh, about... Uh, Dark, uh, Dragon's Dogma and Elden Ring and why I compare them. Let me find this one. It says uh, multiple people have asked this in our chat. Let me find the one that actually asked it first. Well, Mini Nukes is close. He says, how essential do you think the first Dragon's Dogma would be to this one? Also, it reminds me of Elden Ring. Uh, is this very similar in design established in Dragon's Dogma 1? Or do you think there's a link uh, or a lot of intentional inspiration between those that are taken like maybe it's generic but tarnished equals arisen kind of thing uh big echoey english accent demonic narrator voices maybe it's just a fantasy thing and then i had somebody else asked because i consistently compare it to uh, dark souls do i mean it's as hard as dark souls i don't mean that at all i mean the world the starkness the loneliness the mystery because it didn't explain everything it was just like for example i remember going into that wind tunnel a uh, cavern or or valley, valley of the wind or whatever, and the wind pushed you back, and you had to figure your own way around it. It told you that that was going on, but you you sort of had to go. How do I get through this? How do I? Where a lot of games are like tutorial pop up, tutorial mm -hmm. pop up. I I could be wrong on that, but I do feel that there's a connection there, something that like yeah, feels. I mean, go ahead. Yeah, no. When I uh, when I saw Elden Ring, I think we even talked about this in the first gameplay trailer when we were like, yo, this gives me Dragon's Dogma vibes. It was like the opposite where Elden Ring gave, yeah, gave us Dragon Dogma absolutely. Dogma vibes. Yeah, I do remember yeah. that when Elden Ring was yeah. first shot. That is true. Yeah, that popped up. I think also there's some devil part. It, oh, I'm sure. not saying it's Devil May Cry smooth, but there's a bit more combos and something that goes on with Devil, Devil May Cry and Dragon's Dogma that doesn't go on in Dark Souls or Elden Ring. Uh, they're a little bit more cumbersome on purpose. And I think Dragon's Dogma, they tweak it a little bit. So you're, you know, and you have all these weird things leaping off friends. Remember the shield leap where a guy runs yeah. towards you and leaps out? And you're just like, what so the So cool. Yeah, it yeah. wants you to be the hero where Dark Souls is sort of like, there's something about it. You have to work more for it, maybe, I guess, might be the term. I don't know. Yeah, and um, you were saying, what were you saying? Oh, shit, I just lost my train of thought. Um, damn, I forgot. Devil May Cry. I forgot what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Devil May no, Cry. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's isn't it also the same combat director? I believe so. Yeah, or yeah, some, yeah. multiple people have switched between those for sure. I yeah, was talking for to sure. Yeah. Lansby. By the way, uh, good to see you back, uh, Lansby. He's doing really well. We talked for a couple hours yesterday, and and he was asking the same thing. He was like, "What do you mean, like dark? Oh, Devil May Cry?" Because he laughed when I said they're a combination of them. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's hard to describe until you play Dragon's Dogma. It's really hard to describe, but it, there's something very Dark Souls and how long attacks take, and how like the magic, or even just swinging a sword, you can get hit up if you're not watching out but then there's also a more arcadey element to where you can sort of game the system and and there's little like the water on the lantern so a lot of games if you had a lantern on your waist it wouldn't go out if you went into the water and we'd laugh about that we'd be like dude just swam across the creek and he you know the lantern's still going and instead dragon's dogma is like lantern goes out mm -hmm. and you have to you have to relight it and i think that that's more dark soulsian than than what sure. we see in some other games um, graphically, it looked good. 
but still Dragon's Dogma, man. Dragon's, I yeah, don't I mean, know. It's not the best thing in the world. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's certainly yeah. Resident Evil lo does look better, but with what they're doing and the and the open world and how big it's gonna be, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. It's awesome to see like the specs. A lot of people can play it, can run on potatoes. Yep. Recommended is a 2080, not even TI. Um, RE engine is always really dope and optimized, and uh, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, I mean, I is just... that what this is on? Yeah. So they switched from the... MT framework because that yeah, was their I old for the moon engine. Interesting. Okay, I wasn't yeah. aware of that. So their old one, I believe. I'm almost 100% sure their old one was an MT framework, which had... Yeah, it wasn't RE. Yeah. And remember, like, the 360 version came out. I don't even think it was 720p. It was, like, 640. You know, it, it was where they sort of... <laughs> and I remember playing it yeah. going, it's a little it's a little blurry. So this one looks good. The lighting looks awesome. I think that's one of... And the grass. The lighting does. The grass looks like grass yeah. instead of cross hatches. Man, like, mm -hmm. you forget mm -hmm. what old grass looked like, but it looked like a bunch of X's <laughs> yeah. drawn on the ground in, in grass. Yeah. And this one has full foliage. And yeah, dude. It... I just love, oh. the uh, again, the dynamic environments and the way sh there's destruction. And, um, and you know, in one of the trailers, we saw there's like a river or whatever and like rocks uh, blocking a, a leakage of water mm -hmm. or whatever and you hit it and and you start dude all that stuff like i really want to see um the stuff you can do it's just uh, dragon's dogma just is you know there's a lot of emergent stuff that is really cool yeah, but the exploration in that is not like Elden ring exploration is literally exploration it's like going places and finding stuff but i'm very very excited to 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 explore like um things you can do to unlock stuff or things you can do to and get that's past where things, dragon's you know? dogma is stronger than elden ring in yeah. my book because i actually like that i like you're too short to get up this cliff yeah. and then i yeah. know somebody else a pawn maybe or or another character i make would be tall enough but then they wouldn't get through a cave there's things yeah. to blow up to get i it's that environmental puzzle work that i loved Elden Ring, and it had some of that, but there's something in Dragon's Dogma that are like, Dragon's Dogma is cumbersome. I saw somebody saying it was pretty clumsy. It is very clumsy. Dragon's oh, Dogma yeah. is clumsy, and um, one of the things about Dragon's Dogma is it's it's anti-Ubisoft, um, and I, I love a bunch of Ubisoft games, so I'm not saying, or Ubisoft, I'm not saying that their games suck. I'm just saying that the 45 it's seconds... The opposite. Yeah, you'll be walking in Dragon's Dogma, and there'll be goblins in the ruins... And maybe in the goblin area, but the one thing that was shocking to me was like the lizard guys that are invisible, that are on the rocks, they're only in the sunny areas like lizards would be. And so it sounds dumb, but I rem I was talking to Cadiz about it yesterday going, dude, that was one of my favorite parts was hearing that snoring. And I thought the game was bugged because like, why am I hearing the snoring? And then you look onto the rocks and you see that glittery chameleon look and it was the invisible the, like lizard man or something there's always something a little extra that goes on in dragon's dogma which i think yeah is and awesome. the, the, that's another thing um and you know how much i love elden ring but yep. uh but even the thing with the lantern turning off and i know you likened it to dark souls but stuff like that and um again the environment stuff and and just like uh, um the 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 feeling of like oh what if i try this would that work i feel like um, Elden right. Ring is more gamified in that sense, where you go around and you kill stuff. But in this, it's more like Zelda, where where yo, I'm gonna try doing this and see what happens. You know what I mean? Which which is really really cool to me. Yeah, and they're both they're different. That's it, it, I don't know why people are always. If I compare something, it almost never is of the opinion I'm not gonna play the other game. Instead, yeah, it's I'm not like, better oh, or worse. Right? It's, it's like oh, Dra yeah. but Elden Ring's got this stuff that Dragon's Dogma would never be able to do. And sure. never, yeah. like, oh, even the horseback riding probably wouldn't work in a dragon. We'll have to see, you know, what we're going to get. But it it's awesome to see him. And I, I have no issues, like, saying that, like, Elden Ring's one of my favorite games of all time, but Dragon's Dogma is one of my favorite games of all time. I think. Yeah. That's why I don't do lists, because once you get up to 10 favorite games of all yeah, it's time. It's like, are you seriously saying this is better than this? Or are exactly. you just like... Exactly. It's just yeah. so bad. Um. $2 yeah. Super Chat, Sailor Mercury. Will fast travel still be limited like the first game? And feel free to ask questions, guys, about Dragon's Dogma. That's what I was wondering, too. Mm. How they were going to... Because I do believe that the world... A world at large will bitch if they do fast travel the way they did. Despite me loving it. it. <laughs> me too, and, man. And That's thinking, what I want. <laughs> dude, Cadiz was telling me, he was like, I, he didn't even copy the port stone. Because you can take the port stone down to the Black Panther. I didn't, I didn't even interact with that stuff. Yeah, or some, I don't think, it, Black Cat, <laughs> was it Black Cat Pawn Shop? But you could copy it. 
And he was yeah. like, I didn't even know that. I, I walked everywhere. Like yeah, everywhere. It, that's yeah. the I love the travel the juice with the ponds, in that man. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, with them just chatting it up and you're just like, you know, it's they're like saying the, the same Colossus. stuff, but it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's got the stark sort of dire Warhammer uh role play kind of gritty, you know, where you're worried you'll get a cut and come down with you know, tetanus or something. I, I dude, yeah. I I can't wait. I but mean, I, what I saw looked really good. But I do hope if they do add fast travel, um, like have it um not like an instant like map thing. Like I like to have it in the world in some way, whether it's fast travel stones or carriage ride or something like that. You know, I, I prefer that. But I mean, it, it, yeah. it's not going to bother me if they do. And I just won't interact with it. And, you know, if the options are always good, but, um, you know, I, I prefer like lose, like having something taken or having a risk versus reward or something to it. Yeah. I didn't use like the we flight talking... suit much in Spider-Man because it traveled too fast. And to me, Spider-Man was a swinger. Mm -hmm. which sounds weird but he was he, he swung everywhere so the idea of flying just didn't i i used it but i found myself just enjoying the swinging so dude yeah, i they, never ever do it, used fine. fast travel in spider-man no I, mean, I mean i used it to test it but after that never <laughs> yeah. ever ever never, ever dude. did i use i i loved i'm like oh my quest is at the far end of the map fuck yeah i want to go there <laughs> Chat, know, do I you liked, use fast I travel because i don't know if anybody's talked about this do you guys use fast travel in games yeah, so I, I would say I didn't use it uh, in Skyrim. I barely use it. Skyrim, I think I, you know, overall, horse, you can call it fast travel. I use a horse in Skyrim. I and like there's that. carriages. And there's, I used carriages. You know, did you? See, I think once I got a horse, I just was like, I don't want anybody, or maybe I was worried about losing it. I can't really remember. Did you very use? Very little. Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I know very little, but some I, I rem like some moments where I was like, oh, I have to get to the city right now or I wanted to get there to do something where uh, I'd, I'd use the carriage. Yeah. Did uh, did you find yourself using fast travel in Red Dead, too? Oh, dear. Um, there were trains, right? I think I've used the train like once and campfire. You could camp and then. Oh, I never like, did that. Teleport. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that's that. the same as Red Dead 1. It's been a while since I played Red Dead 1, but yeah. Over. Oh, I I do like the idea. So never found NC says never traveled in Red Dead. Um Necro says generally I try to limit fast traveling only when I got my empty bags in an RPG. Oh yeah. So yeah. If you have a bunch you know, of bags like, in an RPG. But, there are games that I feel like are geared towards me not wanting to use fast travel where, where I just love traversing the world. Mm -hmm. But there are games like, let's say like an Assassin's Creed Valhalla or some shit where I'm like, yeah, fuck it, dude. I'm going to fast travel in this one. Or, um, you know, those fast space horizon. I fast traveled a lot. Um, plus it, it had like a re like it had a thing where there's a campfire. Hush out Casey. says he only uses fast travel. <laughs> Kingdom Come Deliverance, I used it, but there was also like a mechanic for it. So if yeah. there is a mechanic for it, I'd be more inclined. Um, but also in KCD hardcore mode, I you just can't fast travel. So there's I like that. that. Too. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I just what I like is a game that says you want hard mode, and you're like, yeah, but then it gives you options because maybe you don't want all the bosses to be 200% health, but you right. want fast travel to be turned off mechanically. So that you're forced to use it. But again, I walk around games. I know a lot of people, somebody just said that they game on a schedule. So it's like, okay, I totally, like that does yeah. make sense of why there's, sh it shouldn't meet everybody. I don't think a developer needs to kowtow. We saw how that worked with uh, Fallen Lords or whatever, where they were changing <laughs> stuff because of the PVP and it was ruining the normal game. It was just a disaster. Yeah. But when it's still being made, they could take input. I, I, I don't know. I don't even remember Elden Ring's fast travel. What was um, Elden Ring? Eld yeah, no, Elden Ring. You just press the map. You fast. You had to fast travel to. Uh, you had to fast travel to enter the uh, the little uh, round table. Gotcha. Remember? Oh yeah, you did have to tra fast travel to get to there. Yeah. Yeah. So, plus, there was a lot of moments where, like, you'd open a chest and it fucking transport you to like the middle of nowhere. Um, because I remember, like, I would never use fast travel, even when it transported me to freaking Kaled, and I, I went outside and I was like, dude, I am in hell right now. This is scary as shit. I ran or like, I, I jumped on my horse and like went through it all the way back. But then it transported me somewhere near the capital where I literally couldn't like leave it. So I had to fast travel. I remember that clearly. I think I also yeah. get worried about fast travel. I don't know if that's what you're saying, but because of bugs. So sometimes when you fast travel, you're just introducing the chance of 
unloading the memory for whatever you're doing yeah. and all, all the da True. data and then reloading and you're stuck and you're you're like yeah. hopefully and i think a lot of games auto save before a fast travel or auto save right at the end of something but i have had games where i fast travel and show up with no clothes or whatever and you're like yeah. it's funny but it's not fun there and there's a huge difference that's we were laughing about silver saying he likes bugs and i was like there's a <laughs> difference between funny and fun a bug can be funny i don't think a bug has ever introduced more fun into a game I mean, not in a, think about that. a real way for me. It's yeah. it's introduced funny moments, but funny not... for sure. You know, funny for sure. Um, I'm sure I can't think of like bugs, a moment. But... I mean, you can make. Uh, I guess you can make the the what do you call it the um, the argument that they are fun for um, like Super Mario sixty four, for example. Uh, the their their glitch. I don't know if you is it the same as a mm. bug exploits. I don't know, but they make it fun for speedrunners, I guess, where there's like mechanically intensive bugs that you can reproduce that are hard to reproduce, but you need skill for it. Right. I guess those are like the only thing I can think of that for that. Yeah. And I think also it just depends on what type of gamer. If you're a platinum gamer, which I'm not, then you might there might be something that helps you out. If you're a gamers on a schedule you may really hate bugs because you might have wasted your time but it might also yeah. help you but for me i would say i'm just average in that i want to experience it overall that pretty much uh in a very specific not a very specific way but in a way that is i would say more generalized than somebody who's a speed a speed runner they're looking for things yeah. i'm i don't think i've ever looked for a bug or an exploit in a game that i've reviewed and i don't think i ever do it nor, i mean if there's one that is exploitable i might use it but I've never looked. I've never like, you know. Cause dude, I, but oh sorry. Uh yeah, no, like um, like even bug free games or like games where you're like you're reviewing a game, for example, and you play it fine and there are no bugs, like nothing happens, no game crashes, yeah. no visual bugs, whatever. Even those games still like if you try super hard enough, you're gonna find something. Like Doom, Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal was super bug free, everything from start to finish for a lot of people, including me. But you look at a speed run and it's like, oh, he just looked down on the floor, did this thing, and now he's over yeah, the map. Right. You know what I mean? You're always like someone I think posted, I think it was a death from Rockstar saying, um, you know, there's like around 70,000 bugs for GTA 4 or something like that. And um, and that that is, you know, that's not like a crazy number if, yeah. if you because there's so many small, 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 small edge cases that people will just not find unless they're looking for it. I do like the idea of whenever I review a game, it'll be less than a week later. It'll be like two days later. And somebody will be like, if you look into this corner and you jump three times and you, you shimmy, it yeah. teleports you somewhere. And I'm like, what the what the hell is going on? <laughs> and it's some bug that if you get a million people playing your game, you're yeah. going to find stuff that you never expect. I mean, we've even had a Discord where somebody will show a bug that they've got in their game. And I'll be like... What the hell is going on? Like, that is crazy mm -hmm. to see those kind mm -hmm. of adjustments. Um, it looks like most people here are saying that they don't like bugs. Some people are saying it depends on how you like the game. And I would say that's for sure. BitLira says, uh, Breakpoint, I don't fast travel much. Vehicles were fun and patrols were sparse. Yeah, if it's an enjoyable world, I think I skip bugs. Uh, or skip the fast travel. What else for Dragon's Dogma 2? Monsters look cool. Uh, the, they, there's a oh, worry vocations. that the there's a that's mm. what I was that's what I was just going to bring up. Did you see? There's a lot of worry that some of those classes are gone from the original. Really? It's, yeah, I don't know if they're showing the new ones means the old ones are gone. But I I did see a post where there were and there was a lot of replies. People were like, "Does that mean some of the older, you know, I don't even remember some of the names, but some of the old, I don't think they'll be gone. I just think those are added. Yeah, jobs. I don't. I also, there was a list or they showed like a bunch of vocations and like a little thing. Um, but it has me believe there are more because you could see, like, for example, the mage is blue, the warrior is red, red and blue makes like this class. Okay. But the illusionist, like the class at the very end, the trickster or whatever, was pink and purple. And none of the others were pink or purple, so that has me believe like there's more oh, base classes or something. Right, that there's more base classes. Yeah, yeah I don't think they'll lock them out, but there is a possibility of locking one out to the cat class too. Mm -hmm. You know, they did also say the illusion, the trickster is only for players. Did you see that? They stated not for that, uh... not for pawns. Interesting. So yeah, so there's. I'm assuming it has to. They'll explain it in the world. And be like, hey, mm -hmm. there's a reason why this is. Norse says, thanks, Abzi, and ACG. You're welcome. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you yeah. for watching. 
Um, Sojourner says, favorite fictitious religion in a game? Mine is the Church of Children of the Atom in Fallout 3. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, so... It's a good one. Favorite... Favorite fictitious religion? I don't know if I've tracked any of them like that. Yeah, I don't know if I've... I know of some... I know of the... Uh, or faction. One in Let's just say Star faction. Yeah. Faction? Let's say... Yeah, because I think you like the faction Ooh. in Starfield. Uh, the, the R, the... The scan, the, the uh, mysterious the hacker, ones, the hacker group. Oh, dude, I love uh, Ryujin, man. Ryujin, Ryujin is yeah. so dope to me because I love that corporate. Uh, yeah. Just, I love the fact um, that you start off bringing coffee to someone and then you do jobs for them and then you get like towards the end, like a lot of different choices that affect it. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. I really like those corporate espionage missions. Um, I would say for factions, faction. I also liked yeah. uh, Wasteland 3 had some different factions in Wasteland 3, which I really liked, but I'm spacing on the names because it's been a while. They oh, yeah. just, oh, oh yeah. Far Cry 5, the cult. Yeah, the cult was awesome in Far Cry 5. They could have gone even farther, but I did like the <laughs> oh, dude, psycho you're religious right. cult. The Wasteland 3 cult, the one, or not cult, the, the faction that worshipped, uh, was it Ronald Reagan? <laughs> or, yeah, there, uh... that's actually what I'm thinking is there was like a presidential <laughs> yeah. thing. And I remember when I was playing it going, that's awesome. He shoots eyes off his lasers, man. Lasers out uh, of his lasers eyes. Lasers off yeah. his eyes. Yeah, dude, yeah. that was so sick. That, I, when it comes to, you know, and that is why I changed it. The religious ones I track, I think 5 was awesome, uh, Far Cry 5. But when it comes to factions... There's been a lot of crazy factions in all the Bethesda games. Dark Brotherhood is obviously one of the, like, absolute Dark favorites Brotherhood for a lot. Yeah, from Oblivion, I mean, for sure. From, yeah, There's Thieves Guild from Thieves Guild. Skyrim, yeah. They do a really good job with at least one or two factions in all Bethesda games, I've noticed. It feels like mm -hmm. they have generic faction to capture 70% of their audience. And then they have, yeah. like, side faction, side faction, and they get weirder as you go. Uh, Starfield, I think, went really weird with Ryujin because it was like hacking stuff, and it not the rest of the game didn't really feel like that. Or or oh well, dude, what what, what's it? really what's really cool? Say what you will about Starfield, but um the um uh what was the main the UC Vanguard? Uh, at at first glance, you're like, oh, this is gonna be like a Genero, like right. oh mission. But then as you as you play through that faction quest line, there's just so much cool shit like really cool political stuff and uh you know I'm, I'm not gonna spoil it but like you know someone or something and like four choices that dynamically change things and then you know have the chance of giving you what do you call those the uh repeatable quests and and uh the, it's, it's really cool they change the world in some way i really enjoyed those quests. It wasn't as generic as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would agree with that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like, I do, I notice that in a lot of games where they do a, they'll, they do a generic and sometimes they'll switch it up. Like you just said, sometimes it's not, and it's just sort of the catch all for the people who want to work for the military or the pirates. And you're like mm -hmm. pirates, military, and you sort of know where that's going in almost every game. But I did notice with Starfield, like I said, like you said, like it or hate it. There were some later quests in almost all the quests, not all of them, but there were some later quests in a lot of them that twisted it a little bit, which I thought was probably them looking and saying, let's make it so that if a person does go with the generic pirates or the generic, you know, Star League, we're going to coalition. What is it? Co uh, coalition? In that game? It's not coalition. That's from Rift. Vanguard or Vanguard. the Sistaf? Yeah. And where you get, where you sort of, it's sort of generic, but they throw a they throw a couple surprises in there, or even just the story building they did, where there's a couple missions where you were supposedly the good guy, but you would hear people talking, and you know there'd just be like a third party NPC going like, you know, you took all my stuff because my brother did something, you know, or whatever, and you're like, whoa, what? Yeah, we're not we're not always the good guys. I think that's awesome. Far or uh, not Far Cry, but Dragon's Dogma. I don't know if they have any factions. We'll have to see because. In Dragon's Dogma, it felt more like land locations. There were like the monks in the scary area. There were animal or different kind of creatures in areas, but I don't remember really having any. Were there any real factions? It was mostly about the monster groups. Like, yeah, I think it was the different races and the, and the yeah, monsters. Yeah, it was sort yeah. of which surprised me because are cat people at all in Dragon's Dogma? 
in any i don't remember any allied uh races other than human i might be wrong were there other allied i like... thought they were all monsters almost like D D episode yeah, they're all version monsters, one but... where it was like humans yeah elves dwarves and then everything else was a racial and, monster uh, yeah and this one looks a bit more story heavy and mm -hmm. uh more mystery with like characters and and uh you know cultures and stuff like that like you know just by showing the elven stuff you know there's some more mystery there yeah, and I, they, so I listened to the trailer for this game, and they stated that they are going, that it is 500 years in the future, but it is also an alternate world. So you're like, mm. all right, or an alternate story, alternate whatever. So it's just it, a different it, game. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, to me, that's exactly what it is. It's like, all right, no. so that's that's okay. It's just a different game. It is, it's, you know. You don't need to play the first one. No, no, you don't. It, no. You should if you can ignore, you know, that it's older and stuff like that. But it, I don't think you need to play the first one to enjoy yeah. this. Plus, like, there are good mods that uh, increase the graphics and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's always, I, I think with the the original, maybe because it, it was the AMT framework, there didn't seem to be as many. But I think for this one, we're going to get a ton. So mm -hmm. next thing I want to talk about Bethesda. Speaking of Starfield, so people oh, were freaking yeah. out because Bethesda was. Going to Steam, they had obviously they had employees that were going to Steam and responding to negative reviews on Steam with with what I would consider to be canned answers, yeah, canned responses. Yeah. What was funny is then the next day we saw multiple developers stating that's normal and here's why, and they all stated the same thing: the canned responses don't work as well. But that turning one person around, if they say, hey, why is this way? And they're just complaining. They were, and, and one of the Steam developers was stating, you have no clue. Like, if you can turn five or six people around by explaining what's going on because they're mad or what have you, it can very much help the algorithm. It can very much help how this works out. I do agree. I looked at some of the responses. I don't know if you did. They're pretty generic. They're pretty generic, and they're, but I got to yeah. tell you, it did not surprise me because I would say this was three years ago in the podcast when I was explaining that developers were already complaining to me about YouTubers saying stuff that was untrue or articles, to, and they were starting to fight back in whatever way they could. Now, I'm not saying lie. I'm saying fight back when there is a clear complaint that is not real or that's a part of the game. And that person that they're talking to maybe just didn't didn't vibe with that. So to me, I was not surprised. I was surprised with the canned. They're a big enough company. They should have just hired somebody. Yeah, right. That's the thing. Um, I I know. So I know for Fallout seventy six, they did a thing where it's like, oh, you're right. Thank you for the feedback. We'll work on improving it yeah. or something. And mm -hmm. I think that's fine. But the responses I saw for Starfield was just a bad look to me. Like some of them. Uh, we're like, oh, yeah, you don't like loading screens. Well, you know, you could see your customized ship in there. Um, we're sorry you don't like it. Um, yeah. You know, there was just a lot of, it was just a lot of, you know, not, there's no like, oh, thank you for, you know, we're going to work on something or or something like that. I just felt like, you know, especially, yeah, they're canned, but uh, they, they they all seemed, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I just, I, I didn't think they were the best responses. Let's say that. Yeah. Yeah, in no yeah. way, shape, or form, by the way, anybody who's listening, is this unusual? It is a, It is probably unusual to do the canned responses. Um, however, yeah. because Starfield is so contentious, and because you can... I purposely did not do this in the title. If I had put Starfield in the title, you would get 100 to 200 more people. It's just yeah. the way it works right now. And I'm like, nah, we're not... We, we talked about this earlier where we were talking about some articles and uh, that we were going to talk about. And I was like, I just don't want to talk about those. Like, they're just... That's that sort of, to me, is like getting into the woodwork of, of stuff. But for this particular issue, probably not canned responses would be best. But I do believe <laughs> yeah. that some responses are good. And I don't know, Abzi, how long we can sit here and bitch and say companies aren't listening and then somebody is responding to you. And you're like, you're still not listening. And you're all, well, they are. It's just bad. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't have been canned responses. True. Because that True. is a major complaint. Oh, people aren't listening. It's like, well, obviously they are. And I think Bethesda <laughs> has for a yeah. long time. But go ahead. Because, dude, I saw like a, literally a negative review that just said midfield. And then there was like a massive <laughs> canned response to that. <laughs> yeah, see, right? Right. Yeah. The, when you respond to somebody, there's multiple ways to do it. I've done it incorrectly incorrectly so i'm certainly speaking from experience here because if somebody 
just upright lies in the comments, you can bet I'll be in there and be like, nope, it's not what happened. It's not what I said. It's not this. It's not that. But if it's something that is real and they're like, I wish you covered music more or whatever, you're like, well, this is all I got, but that makes sense. Like, I get that you might want That's, that. That's, yeah, that would have been cool. That is at least me. Their, yeah. Theirs is like, it feels like they have an FAQ, or as we call them, mm -hmm. facts, but there's an FAQ that a customer service rep was, or a Fiverr person was asked to copy and paste. And it's like that. And they even used a quote from Bethesda's, one of the Bethesda, one of the Bethesda people talking about when asteroids landed on the moon, there was nothing there. And so they pop because somebody said, and, it was they, had plan. Fun. and <laughs> they had fun. And that I'm like, <laughs> if you had asked me, I could have given you like 50 responses for the same thing that weren't as canned that still yeah. were like, we get it. Some places are bare. And I actually felt like a lot of people's complaints were Starfield, at least in our discord, were that maybe the, there were too many planets that had stuff and that they were, yeah, it, some it, of so the same stuff. Well, no, like I saw some people being like, oh, there's a little more forest than I expect, uh, you know, so I think some people went okay. into it with the opposite and they were like, I want Baron. I want elite dangerous. I want everything to just be. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not alive. Especially like like silver. I saw. Uh, yeah, because. Uh, oh, yeah. Silver sometimes was one of the people complaining about the. Yeah, you'd land on like, like a random moon. Like mm -hmm. you'd want to be the first explorer there. Yeah. Nothing, but yeah. you'll see like, uh, you know, a bunch of labs and stuff already there. Yeah, yeah that it. is true. Like. Yeah. You're the you're the top explorer. Here's your ship that no one has as powerful as you. And then you go and there's 85 bases. And you're like, well, somebody got here. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah, that, I mean, yeah. that's a, that's a that's 100 valid. There's a lot of valid complaints about it, but this one is like 50 50. I get why they do it, but man, canned responses. You're the only you know, you got enough money. If you're gonna do a canned response, or sorry, if you're gonna do a response, it should not be canned. That's all I'm saying. I honestly just just thank you for the for your feedback will improve the game or something stupid like that would have been a way better canned response well and sometimes it's opinion. not it's their game developer choice so it does feel like a game developer could come up with some good answers and be like hey this mm. is you know the idea that we were trying to portray is this that would be a great answer and those answers we see them in the discord where somebody be bitching about a game and somebody would pop up with a you know, a developer quote or whatever. And then that developer, sometimes that developer quote becomes the discussion. People are like, oh, wow, okay. So I get it. So I've seen it change even on our, in our I, I shouldn't say even on our Discord, most everybody's open-minded there. But I'm, I just mean, I have seen it work. And I think it. there's nothing wrong with it. But yeah, canned response. Too much. Too yeah. much money to be doing canned responses. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, we're missing some super chats. We're going to get these real quick and then jump to... One of Abzi's points, uh, the one that you uh, were talking about prior to the podcast. Do you remember that one? And I asked uh, you to get the... Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, let's see. Danny Passion Official, $2 Super Chat. I'm really excited for Dragon's Dogma 2. I never played the first one. Yeah, you don't need to. I think you're going to be incredibly happy. Souls Keeper, $11 Super Chat. Gents, I hope you're having a good time. Received my Steam Deck OLED this week and a rekindled Monster Hunter Loves and it's ri or Rise Addiction, Monster Hunter Rise Addiction. What's been your favorite monster hunting game? In the genre. Okay, so he's not just talking about Monster Hunter. That's good. There's different games of Monster Hunter. Oh, yeah, I guess you got the like, genre Dauntless. of monster. Yeah, and some people brought up Dragon's Dogma when you're leaping on the back of the dragon and stuff. Dragon's like... Dogma has a lot of Monster Hunter in it for sure. But I would still um, say World is my favorite. I really liked Wor Monster Hunter World. Worlds, World. Oh, fuck. It's, it'll that be world? hard to choose between World and Rise for me because they, I love them for very different reasons. I love World because it was more of a methodical monster hunting. It was very, uh, in, there was a lot of intent. It was way less gamified. You had a lot of systems. You had a, a lot of running and tracking, which I loved. And Rise just was balls to the wall gameplay and traversal and shit, yeah. which I also loved. Um, yeah, I can't choose one over the other. Yeah, and I yeah. would choose, I liked Rise, but I just, for the world was just like, dude, there was something about it. It just felt expansive. It felt lar It felt like the animals sure. were a little bit more reactive. Um, Rise was made for the Switch originally, right? Yes. Yeah. So I think there's that technology-wise, There maybe there was some stuff. But overall, I mean, they're both good, but I will say they play slightly. I mean, they do play di environmentally and atmosphere-wise, they play different. For sure. You know, world, world has a more expansive and rises much quicker with the, what is it, wire bug? Yeah. Dude, 
That goes to speaking about no uh, like imagination wire bug. <laughs> a bug that has a, a wire. A bug has that a has a wire. You're just like, yeah. dude. I mean, I guess that's yeah. the way, you know, there's yeah. no real reason to call it something else, but it is like, damn. Um, yeah. Kijun LNG, do you still use your Legion Go? Yeah, not only. But, so I returned that one because that was borrowed for the review and got one on a, a payment plan, and I'm pretty happy with the Legion Go. It requires two or three small changes, but I mean, I, I've shifted. Not shifted, but away from the other ones I like. But I will say it's dominating my time more than some of the others. It's got a shorter battery than the G deck, but it plays games, but the G deck doesn't. So, I mean, there's that. But yeah, yep, still play it, still like it. Very happy to get it. The only ones I've returned, I returned a Chinese knockoff. I don't even remember the name. I returned the AO or whatever it's called. That other brand, like the A mm -hmm. Yo Yo or whatever. AO Play or something. Yeah. yeah. And I returned my Steam Deck. And those are the only ones. All the other ones I've either got, um, or luckily I have a friend who has let me borrow um some Chinese knockoffs that are good, but they're they all have little issues. But I've really been interested in checking their form factor. Like are they comfortable mm -hmm. or not? Because they all have a slight they all have I their thought you own... returned a rog rog ally. Oh yeah, I did return that yeah. POS. Dude, everything a <laughs> man, they're done. I'm done with them. I'm done with them. I'm done with them forever. I will never ever endorse another product from that company. Well, I didn't endorse it, but even say that I liked it. They the only time I'm going to bring it up on podcasts or reviews or whatever is when I say I didn't like it. I just they're dude, I've had so many problems with their shit and their customer service is in horrendous so they're the nvidia of customer service man they're Oof. just or the sony sony nvidia and asus are really close to one oh. yeah so what was the story that you brought up okay so i did not know that um there's Wolfire games uh they made um a game called let's see here um they made a game which is on steam uh and it's called overgrowth Mm -hmm. So the developer for Overgrowth, Wolfire Games, back in 2021, they uh, they uh, they filed an antitrust lawsuit against Valve, denouncing anti-competitive pra practices from Steam's parent company. Um, now I don't know what the hell it's really all about, um, but I'm going to read this. I guess this is what Go the defendant it. says. Um, so the lawsuit added that Valve takes advantage of being in such a dominant position to exploit publishers and consumers. Um, the uh, one aspect of Valve's scheme, the defendant said, is to is its Steam key price parity provision, which ensures that publishers won't sell their game for a better price on other platforms. Okay. As a result of these practices, other stores struggle to compete with Steam, and developers and publishers reportedly have no choice but to continue selling on Valve's storefront. And this is a quote, removing all doubt about its policing power, Valve also reserves the right to deny keys or revoke key requesting privileges if they disadvantage Steam customers. And while the language is couched in terms of protecting Steam customers this is a charade blah 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 um this is what they but they filed the lawsuit that this is the lawsuit that was filed by will fire games against valve and now gabe newell ordered to make an in-person deposition for valve v will fire games lawsuit uh valve had initially asked for remote deposition due to health concerns relating to covid so he doesn't mm. want to have it i guess mm. in court he wants like a Deposition. He wants to zoom in on zoom the ACG podcast. Yeah. 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 Uh, in an order filed on November 16 in the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Washington, Will Fire Games said Newell is uniquely positioned to testify on all aspects of Valve's business strategy and that an in-person deposition would allow it to adequately assess Newell's credibility. But Newell wants a remote deposition because of COVID. So that's what's happening right now. So... Dude, um, personally, like knowing that some court cases are handled remotely and stuff, I don't see any reason why he has to show up in person. That does seem dumb. That does seem dumb. You can do mm -hmm. you absolutely. There's I mean, we've seen it when it was the height of of people not able to travel. We've seen it prior. There's no issue with it. He, there's no reason he would he, he has to show up. That's just more of a power play kind of thing where it's like we want, mm -hmm. you know, and assess his credibility. 
in person versus Zoom. It's like, listen, he's we on can Zoom. read his body language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, maybe they're yeah. worried he's going to have a teleprompter for answers. And my personal opinion is that's fine because sometimes when you see answers given from people, they contradict not because I'm not saying they're not guilty, but you will also get people who just contradict as they talk because language is, you know, a little flexible, as we found out this morning when somebody posted a meme. But, dude, Steam is that way. But at the same time, I don't know about you. I don't know as much about the key and the requirement for other companies to all or other stores to have the same price. I wasn't even aware of that. I'm not yeah, even 100% that. sure that's something that... I mean, I guess I'm against it. So if you show up on Steam, what he's saying is you show up on Steam, and if you do, you can't sell your game for a cheaper price on, on like, Ubisoft's? Well, not Ubisoft store. Well, then Ubisoft. So does that mean that Ubisoft can't run a sale on Assassin's Creed on their store unless they mimic it on the Steam store? Would be I interesting. I guess. I don't really understand it. But now they're saying the filing also centered around the 30% cut that, the, that Steam takes. Yeah, they do take a big so cut. That. So... Dude, we hear developers talking about that all the time. I know everybody loves Steam, but many developers look at that cut and they're like, wow. Like, it, it, that is, it, when you start, and when, like, Epic will waive the cuts many times, and I get why people don't like either one, but at the same time, like, I can see why financially oh, a company sure. might look and go, I saw a dev uh, uh, defend the the uh, Steam cut yeah. and, and shit on Epic for doing the 100% thing just to just to uh, attract developers to the other store because uh, he thinks that Steam is more consumer friendly because of all the features it has. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess it's a very nuanced discussion. Like the 30% cut, what are you getting with it on Steam? I guess Steam is like the biggest platform. Mm -hmm. People are on it. A lot of people are on it every day. Um, they do have, um, they do show games. I mean, as, as, as uh, have you talked to like developers about like, I don't know if you'd call it SEO, but 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 visibility on games and Steam, like how it works. Visibility, um, if you pop up, is much higher on Steam, if you pop up. Mm -hmm. So you will get some small devs that don't pop up, and we've talked about the search on Steam because of the tags are all screwed. For you sure. get all kinds of crazy stuff. But yeah, if they pop up, it's a big deal. If they pop up, and not everyone can pop up. Like we've seen Lethal Company just Yeah, yeah, you've seen ones that. explode. Um, but obviously, I believe wasn't uh uh alan wake 2 was just on epic right yeah and it sold like hotcakes so it's like it did know. sell like hotcakes yeah, yeah. would it yeah, have it sold did. more if it was on steam yeah and if Probably. it was on ubisoft and if it was down on the corner as a physical version which physical. it wasn't yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. it would sold it would have sold more but does that offset lack of cut or a, a smaller cut i don't know that they, is a good they uh, seem to say it didn't. that is a good yeah, that is a good thing to think about. Like, if you are a smaller dev, would you be better off taking the thirty percent hit for Steam's uh, for for like the just that mass amount of play players who use Steam, or is it worth it not to take the thirty percent hit and release yeah. it on Epic and have people be mad and stuff? Um, and it's he's not know. the. I mean, these aren't the first developers to also stats. bitch about <laughs> Steam's uh, uh, about visibility on Steam. I mean, it is a problem. It's beyond a problem. Mm -hmm. Just like Xbox has a problem when you look at games, you hit see all and it opens up a different tile and you're like, what? The, you yeah. know, because theirs is broken. Like the mm -hmm. Xbox store is a, a mess. But um, I, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. The idea of getting Gabe in to talk is good. I don't think, he, again, this dude, that's a power. That is quite, that is quite literally a power play. Like, nah, man, he's got it. And Coming the wording person. of it, you know, we got to have him in person to judge his credibility. It's like, there's really not a bunch to do with credibility. It should just be the statistics and looking at them. But yeah, it's there's all no gonna... reason for him. To show no, him. and you know what it is? It's like when something gets big, we attack it. And because once something gets big, it just has a higher chance of something also being wrong with it. I mean, that's that's the way, that's quite literally like how entropy works. So I see this all as really interesting, but I don't necessarily see what Steam does as anything other than a market that someone else can take advantage of if they do something different, which is what Epic is doing. Mm -hmm. And or, go, good old games, right? No DRM. Isn't that their thing? Good old. Yeah. Game. That's their good, biggest thing. That's their biggest no thing. DRM. You own your games. Yeah. 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 Which I think is great, yeah. but it also means they're instantly pirated instantly. So oh, there for is sure. that, right? There's, so there's, you, there, dude, yeah. there's a website that is, that has literally, it is GOG games website, but it's all, it's all like you download for free, like everything oh, on there. Because like they're all there. Yeah, because they're all there. It's just full. It's just a folder you can download. I used my friend's uh, account once 
to try out Baldur's Gate back in the day and there was no restrictions. There was no like, like two people can't be on at the same time. Right. There was yeah. nothing. Yeah. 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 That's an interesting one. I don't necessarily love Valve. So I'm, I'm open to, I love free market kind of stuff, but at the same time, I do understand that they, there are legit issues we've seen where you're just like, dude, Speaking of legit issues, I just want to bring this up shortly. It's not even a discussion point. But did you see the uh, Silent Hill remake studio and what they said? So, so what did been, they say? I so saw a lot of stuff about that. people been asking them, right, about where this is yeah. and where progress is. And they basically said, it's going smoothly, but we're not the ones who should be communicating with you. It's Konami. And it was just <laughs> oh, like yeah, throwing I them under that, the bus. Yeah. yeah, it was like, yeah, hey, yeah, man, yeah. it'd be Twitter, really right? nice if Konami talked to you. Like, I, I, I don't <laughs> yeah, know yeah, yeah, why yeah. it cracked me up, but when I saw it, I was like, <laughs> like they were, yeah, it was yeah, awesome. Yeah, they yeah, said, like, we're Konami. really not the ones who, you know, it, sh it it falls under the purview, I guess, of the of the publisher for that one. But I just thought it was yeah. awesome. Don't talk, It wasn't me. Don't talk to me. Talk to this guy. Talk yeah. to the boss. Yeah. Yeah, I talked to the boss, like a CSR mm. passing it up when you get really mad at them. And they're like, let me get a manager. Like at this point, they were like, dude, Konami needs to get on the phone. Um, and then the big one, Te Tech Raptor dropped this, which is Star Citizen and its biggest crowdfunding day ever. 35 million in 24 hours. So, dude. Dude. Isn't that crazy? No. You know why it's not? Like, it's not at all. Because looks matter, man. And they showed that trailer, which showed that the game is coming along. This is all connected to the trailer, by the way, that they showed I with their new see tech. The trailer. Yeah, so it was all their tech. And this is it. Starfield's out. So it's a known quality. We know exactly what Starfield is because it's out. We know what No Man's Sky is. And then they showed Star Citizen and its space and its planets and its people walking around. And it looked good. It doesn't surprise it surprises me it was only 35 million because it looked really 3. good. 3.5. Or 3.5, sorry. Wait, wait, this says. 35 million in 24 hours. Wait, crowdfunding day ever with 3.5 million. Wait, you're right. Yeah, 3. Their 5, link is yeah, wrong yeah. and their says link 35. Is 35. Their link <laughs> says 35 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, yeah, so yeah, anybody yeah. getting mad at me, that's their link. It legitimately says but 35 that's, million. It's just crazy to me that now it's their biggest. Day. Dude, there's so there's so much budget in this game, man. They have so much budget in this game. Dude, I bought um my ship in 2015. For forty dollars, and I get I didn't the know single you player in game with it. Did I? I didn't know you. No, it was, yeah. and it was back. I was still in college, dude. Oh my god! Yeah, they and locked was, down. The game was running at like twenty FPS. Yeah, and now, dude, I've been messing around with it. Runs very well compared to what they're doing. It's yeah. they've locked down Squadron Forty Two, and they're. I mean, the features are there. Like Indio has talked about it because uh, uh, Abbreviated Games does all the or Abbreviated Reviews. He does a lot of like updates on Star Citizen, so he's the guy that I sort of go to. When is it coming out, man? Well, if they lock down Squadron Forty Two, I would say two years. <laughs> Whatever I, they I say, mean, I'm just hopefully. guessing two years. Yeah. Do you think the world is gonna the world of gaming is gonna collapse when it's out? I think what that, if it's what if it's reviewed badly? <laughs> well, here's the weird thing. I don't like early access, but I can tell you right now their systems work. So I've been messing with their so that's you don't know what the systems are in Starfield till you get it. Right? Well, people have Star Citizen. They can see how this system works or how that system works. And they are open to early access. They have changed massive things that people have been like, this is not right. This doesn't work. So there's actually a there's been negativity in the past, but there's a pretty positive back and forth with Chris Roberts in this. Because I think that guy is what he's almost like a like one of us nerds who found a way to make a bunch of money making a game he wants to make. And he's done. He's known for space games. Freelancer, uh, wing commander like that's his shit. So I don't think people would be too surprised. Now, when it comes together as a package, you could review the the writing the acting, but we've seen is that it, is too. It, is it going to have that stuff? Like other than the single player game, is dude, it's it got like... so many movie stars it'll blow your in mind. It's got Gary Oldman of for Christ's sakes. And the like multiple Jillian version? Anderson. No, this is Squadron Forty Two. This is the same. Oh, this Squadron is the single player. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it has, doesn't it have the Gladiator. What's his name? Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But if Russell Crowe's in there, I hope not, because that dude can't act. I love Russell Crowe, but <laughs> wait, does he? Well, oh, he okay. can. I guess. I I should take that back. I like him. Beautiful in some mind. Movies. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. He's okay. He's okay. But yeah, it'll be it'll be cool to see that Mark Hamill's in it, of course, because it's Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill. And yeah. They showed this graphics update, and this is why it sells. 
I mean, the, like I always joke about, people are handsome from far away. The more you get into the nitty gritty, the more people can pick things apart. And they've actually gone and adjusted those things. So the first cutscene with Mark Hamill, they showed the old version and the new. Oh, dude, the new version looks wicked. I mean, especially for a game this big. You know, they use that look, facial. Yeah, they use facial, facial tech. Thing, right? They increase the graphics. They stepped it up. So we'll have to see. It could. It's not vaporware for sure. It hasn't mm -hmm. been va vaporware for years. Will it come together? I don't know. But I do believe. I do believe with them locking down Squadron 42's features and saying. Uh, this is we're we're now delivering the single player game. We're not adding anything or subtracting anything. We are we are finishing up the single player. I would say 50 50. 50%, 50 okay. it launches and all that stuff doesn't come together. And then 50% where we get it and we're like, maybe it's not worth it. You'll have that discussion. But did you I don't know if you saw this. It's 63 million right now. 60 sorry, 635 million is what they've kick started. That's not the most expensive game made. So really? Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, well, there's rumors GTA 4 cost n near that, you know, and then Red Dead cost a bunch. So it is the more expensive style. But as we're getting farther and farther, we're starting to see some games costing two, three hundred million. So what seems like a lot isn't as much when you look at spread across. You know, we haven't got the two game, games. so there's for sure that obviously. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's I'm excited, dude. This I'm gonna My, when, uh... when that comes out, I'm gonna probably be dead. <laughs> I mean, dude, well, it's, you know, two years my, from now. I mean, my, um, my uh, excitement, I mean, obviously my excitement waned off a while ago. I mean, I don't even exactly. think about Star Citizen anymore. Yeah. But but my initial, when I was very excited back in the day, when I was like, uh, you know, looking into it a lot, uh, my favorite thing was that every single thing is just a manual thing. Like you, you just got to do every, there's no yes. gamified, right? You got to do everything. Like even they showed, like, a, I think they showed a thing where you want to drop your Rover from your ship and drive your Rover or whatever around. Yep. And you had to release stuff and do everything and do that and power this on and do everything manually. It's like take red dead and how like he loots everything and you have to see him and multiply that by hundred. So I really hope they do the same for the single player game where it's like everything, you know, it's like kind of a sneak peek of what you're going to get in star citizen and, where and everything is. Oh, sorry. You know, sorry. Go ahead. And everything. Yeah. Is where everything is just like manual and, and, uh, and, and intent and all that stuff. Yeah, I was just I, I just wanted to point out, and there's no cells in the way there are in other games with mini loads. They were showing a guy with a ship and he went cockpit to cockpit with the other ship and he was able to push their buttons in their ship. So he was able to basically push the other guy's buttons in the other ship and control it from his ship's cockpit. Mm -hmm. And they it was showing interactivity. So it's there's no cells, there's no loading of things, there's no cutoff stuff. It's like this is everything is real. Which, really, no games yeah. done. Which is going to be yeah. like, it'll probably. You that's know. like my the, my main. Uh, that's like the main thing for me is like the main everything. excitement, sort of. Yeah, but it's... I really hope. Uh, I mean, they've shown a lot of. Like, uh, remember that trailer that showed a lot of immersive sim elements of like, um, tackling quests and doing yeah. stealth and doing all that stuff. I don't know if that's in the game yet, but uh, I want them to. I want to see more of that. I want to see more civilization. Like, are you going to be able to go into a planet like that, like planet that they showed there is like a massive fucking city. Like, is it, is it a massive city with people it in is it a massive and life? City. Dude, like one of their main cities. And I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it, but I landed and it is. Dude, it's ridiculous with its own tram system and everything. Like it is monstrous in size, monstrous. It they they he is pushing it like which is why the technology has now took taken us what a decade to finally get there. Um, yeah. some more super chats real quick. Scott Jelank, ten dollars super chat. Sup, Scott? Thank you very much. He says I spent three thousand on building my dream computer over the last two years. My new TV has GeForce Now. Remembered you saying it actually works. Hooked up a controller to my TV, and now I own a three thousand dollar paperweight. Well. It's not that bad. I mean, there's some games that don't run on GeForce now, but I will say that, you know, depending on what, what games you're playing and what you want from the game, it, it for sure is a thing, and it's very cool that we're seeing that. that it, it's a good replacement for people who don't have 3,000. So, so, sorry, Scott. I apologize that... Uh, well, I don't apologize. I feel you when it comes to spending a bunch of money, and then you're like, hmm, there's some other options out there. Rob Brockett, $2 Super Chat. Late to the party. Open AI discussion. I don't know if there's much to say about OpenAI. Um, 
Oh, dude, I saw a very cool uh, use of ChatGPT today in, in Reddit. <laughs> where yeah, what was guy, that? This guy posted a whole Reddit post without any punctuation. And the top comment was like, hey, I just added punctuation with ChatGPT. And it was like fully with quotations and 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 commas and, and yeah. periods where it necessary. And it was like, this is an awesome use case for it. It's a very, and, <laughs> yeah. and what, you know, the new rumor is that it can now do basic math, which is the big thing which is what AI has issues with is some, it, once it gets too mathy, it starts losing its mind. And that's supposedly one of the things that might've been generally connected to that guy being fired and rehired, but we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think for writing stuff, it can definitely fix things. I mean, a lot of editors are probably gonna use it, that kind of stuff. Like it's like, it makes sense for people to use that. Um, Pelicki says, didn't you, uh, didn't you say GeForce Now has problems? Yeah, for sure. So GeForce Now, one of the biggest problems with GeForce Now is that I believe it's a different executable that GeForce uses, and it requires its own update. And we've seen games on GeForce now where they don't work. What's weird, though, is there's been times where on GeForce now their version was working, and the patch that was coming out on Steam was causing issues. So I don't know. They're they're supposed to be patched pretty much uh, at the same time, but I've had issues with GeForce now for sure, especially when it comes to the occasional game just not running, and it says something like it's in maintenance. And then mm -hmm. you go, and anybody you talk to is a admin, uh, an ambassador. They they don't work for Nvidia, and they will just delete your comment. So if you ask a question, if you're like Hitman is still in maintenance for three months, delete, and you're like, you son of a bitch, you know. But they don't. <laughs> it's like the stock answers, and they they just don't care. Nvidia does not care, by the way. Nvidia yeah, is no. so far past profitability, dude. Holy shit. And oh, AI they could chips. slap on any price they want to. They could, uh, yeah. To they you. so GeForce Now is great in that you know, like that it's streaming, and so therefore there can be issues. But my PC has issues sometimes too. So mm -hmm. you know, you never quite know what's going to work and what's not. Um, when it comes to GeForce Now, I would say, or sorry, when it comes to GPT, I love the idea of it fixing grammar and stuff. I wish it would work on Android because I will type in on my tablet the voice and, thing. Dude, you can, yeah, and the voice, I mean, there was a Ruggiero, I think, was one of the guys in our Discord, and so I think it was Villain, where they were like, dude, I just stopped using Androids, because it would replace words with shit that made, no, I mean, it doesn't even make sense, like, it, you know how ChatGPT tries to make sense? Android yeah. does not care, and it will just, <laughs> yeah. so you'll be like, yeah, man, I really like that game, and it'll be like, yeah, man, I really like that Palisade, and you'll be all, what? <laughs> that word it's never connected in the English language. Why would those, why would it think that was words? So also, why don't they like Siri or whatever? Um, you know, why don't they implement actual AI to it where it can an actually answer questions rather than being like, Hey, I'll look that up for you on Google. Like, you just know why? Use, just use GPT. A well. a AI costs so much to run a single query. Open, a open AI is still losing money on queries. Oh really? Why? Dude, cuz it costs cuz it's the bitcoin of today. It is well past bitcoin. Like remember when Reg and I would be in the podcast worrying about bitcoin's environmental effects? Like China, you know, having bitcoin farms that were throwing heat into the air. AI sure. and the running of an AI server, it's ridiculously hard, man. Ridiculously hard on That's why you don't see a oh, lot yeah, of the server. Yeah, the server and the hardware. Right. That's why um, Microsoft has their own AI chips now that they just either announced or released last week at their Microsoft event. Elon Musk. Um, he, I, does he? Does yeah, he? he made a new one for uh, the free speech AI. Uh... Oh, did he? Okay, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I, I think that's worthwhile too. Like having um, competition is worthwhile in the AI space. Gronk or something. Yeah, I forgot Gronk, the name. Gronk yeah. is a did he name it Gronk? That's from the football no, player. No, wait, 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 wait. Elon Musk AI. It's it's not called Gronk. What's it called? Okay, Google, come on. Um, it's gonna take Grok. Grok. Okay, Grok makes Grok. Grok. All right. Yeah, because I was like yeah. Gronk. That's like the football player. Um, speaking of AI, Eurogamer had a, a, a thing here says EA is working on player voiced characters in games and a patent. So I don't know if you saw this. So. Basically, EA has a patent that if you're playing a single player game, let's say, and you want voice, you would be able to yeah. record your voice and then it would do its little crunch and your voice would then play for your single player. Or if you're doing multiplayer, maybe instead of doing emotes for hi, you can say hi and it'll be your voice, which, by the way, seems really backwards because why couldn't yeah. I just say <laughs> yeah, hi yeah. and voice chat? Whatever, right. you know, yeah, um, yeah. 
Dude, I'm not surprised because I, I I posted those Randy Macho Man Savage being a DM in our Discord where I was messing around, and I, I was stunned how good it was. So the idea of yeah, using I, your voice. I've been uh, I I tried out the AI um, mod for uh, World of Warcraft Classic, and dude, it's it's scary mm -hmm. how good that is. It's yeah. scary how the inflections are good, and how like if I'm talking to like an undead quest giver, how he re responds versus like a dwarf. It is insane, um, but uh, it, I just hate patents, man. I hate patents and gaming. I hate patents. I, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. That's the it's only like, thing. It's and I like the idea. I like where they're. Well, I don't like where they're going. I see where they're going. Um, we'll have to yeah. see if I like it. I love the idea of some of the older games having voices that didn't, and and you know maybe not even supported anymore. So like you get a game mm -hmm. like uh, well whatever you get a game you like that's ancient. And it doesn't have voices. The idea of hooking it up to ChatGPT to do a voice to me is yeah. that's awesome. Um, it's not a voice actor losing out at all. It's completely separated. Then you get into people getting jobs. That, where I do understand, I do think people need to be ready because no one's stopping. We're done, man. Like those guys mm -hmm. are just moving forward. So and EA mm -hmm. looks like they're moving forward. I, w I wonder why though they think that's easier than chat. Maybe it's because they. I mean, in single player games, uh, when you have sense. only a few responses, like let's say you're playing an RPG, although mm -hmm. I don't know what, maybe like Dragon Age, let's say. Well, Mass Effect that makes had sense Shepard, there. so let's talk about that. So you remove Shepard Mass and Effect. it's Abzi doing the voice. Is that let's say you... it's like a complete character creator and you create your own character and it's not like a half, you know, Shepard type thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can see, oh man, wouldn't it be jarring though a little bit? Like hearing yourself, it would be jarring a little bit. Like, if I hear myself, dude, I'd rather just, I don't know, man. I'd rather just say it myself in my <laughs> head, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'd myself. have to see. Yeah, I, I no, I, I agree. I actually, I, li I like the voice actors more than me. Yeah, I don't think, though, I don't think, at least right now or for the first, like, next 10 years, maybe next five years, I don't see them completely replacing voice actors. I feel like, let's say you have a game massive massive open world um you're gonna have the top dogs the main guy like main there's always like a tinge i feel like there's always a tinge of humanity that is necessary for like a very compelling story or narrative or something where you'd have the, the main characters and main side quests or main side guys i'll be voiced normally and then usually in games you will see like in yakuza like those those side those those uh NPCs that don't have a voice that's just yeah. text and 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 those would maybe probably um replaced with AI. So I see that happening. I don't see yeah, voice actors actually losing jobs over this at least right now. So this is not to complain about anybody. I've made bad bad videos. Everybody's done something <laughs> bad in their life that wasn't at the top tier. So I want to point that sure. out. But I saw a couple different people saying there's no spirit in AI voice, blah blah blah. And I didn't really want to be rude on Twitter, but I was like, I've heard many a voice actor have a terrible delivery. Oh, yeah, 100 so, percent that happens. Yeah. And and where the AI, when somebody replaced it, sounded better because better. the direction wasn't good or the voice. You know, there's some actors that you love in a movie. Keanu Reeves, I love him, but in a game and I liked him as Johnny, but it was more of the the overall vibe of him. Keanu's yeah. not necessarily elastic when it comes to his acting. I think everybody agrees with that, but um, mm -hmm. not to be rude, but man, I, I mean, I've talked about it in a review where I'm like, dude, this is really bad. This was delivered in a very poor way and it's just really flat. And then, you know, I saw people complaining, oh, you know, AI, I can tell right away. And I'm like, listen, man, AI testing has shown that a good majority can be fooled on a short sentence. Mm -hmm. For example, if you got uh, Macho Man, like I said, if you just have a short sentence, which, by the way, some of the Yakuza ones are those one-liners, you know, mm -hmm. where somebody says something. It's like, would a person be able to tell? I don't know. I think oh, we dude, are, I, 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 I do. I think a lot of people think they can and they probably could. Dude, I posted a video on Twitter the other day where um, someone took the Japanese voice of Kiryu, mm -hmm. like the Japanese actor. And, you know, he only speaks Japanese, mm -hmm. took that and with AI made the English dubs using his voice and it was pretty good i'm not oh, gonna lie wow. it was pretty yeah. good it was his own voice speaking english it was a little jarring oh but it was interesting really, really good. so they yeah they, uh, yeah that was the other thing i saw recently was a translation one where instead of translating it to siri's voice or something it translated it from the person's voice so that's yeah. what you're saying is they took yeah. his 
Japanese speaking whatever words they put it into one and then it translated it into English into and it was English. still his voice. Yeah, still that's his when, voice. Yeah, that, that was yeah. really cool, man. Dude, we're yeah. living in a future, Abzi. <coughs> Maybe five years <laughs> in the future, I could be married to somebody from France and not speak French. Mm -hmm. You just got your little earpiece in. They've got their earpiece in. You're like, I love you. Blah, blah, blah. You know, wherever it, it could all just be trans. It's a weird world we live in where that yeah. stuff could be trans. And, you know, like EA's patent, it's like that's what they're looking at too. Where imagine, well, that's another thing. EA's patent, let's say I play a game and I speak English and I say hello or what have you. And then it's translated into their language, but with my voice. Like yeah. that's that's sort of cool. Imagine, Imagine hearing it. myself talk like Russian or something. Well, maybe you insane. wouldn't hear. Maybe we're putting too much of an emphasis on hearing yourself. What if this is yeah. more along the lines of you're playing a game or what have you, and you can play with somebody? For example, I went into Division One, and there was a lot of people from Thailand, and I can pick that up because I've read it and I have friends who speak it, but I couldn't speak it. But imagine being able to speak it because it's just doing. Oh that yeah, you just speak English and yes. it does that translation, right? Like, yeah, yeah, dude, it would be yeah. like, run to the right, there's a car there, and it just, it translates. What do you it, mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, I don't <laughs> no, know what like, that was, but yeah, No, exactly. I just translated it. Oh, yeah, did yeah. you? That, there you go, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, that's the magic. Yeah. That, and that brings the wor gaming world, I want to say, yeah. together in a way that I don't have right now. You and I have joked about old games, they always get invaded by hackers or what have you, but I think a lot of people also think those, that if some, if a different nation gets it, uh, like and hasn't had it in a while we are immediately like oh it's something questionable it's not it's like a lot of people from a, per a place finally get access to division we have people who don't have access to xbox live still in their in mm -hmm. their country so they're getting in and imagine being able to play with somebody from the discord you know you get people in the discord where we're all talking some people have really thick you know accents or what have you even if they're speaking english sometimes it's hard to tell so to yeah. me that's exciting but at the same time I do get where people are worried. I'm gonna. They be can worried. make Obimas make sense in chat, dude. Yeah, yeah, like because his accent was really thick, and it, they like even uh, sleeve will joke around about the other people from different places in England, depending on where they're from, and even he's like Glasgow, Ooh. Scotland. Yeah, where he's you just like, wow, that's a, yeah, that's a thick one. He's like, even we have. Yeah. So I love the. I mean, that probably wouldn't be translated, but I love the idea of jumping in. Imagine just jumping into a game with somebody from Japan. You just you're just talking, and it. it it's, like to me, that's that's why I started the international podcast. Was to, but they all spoke spoke English. But the idea, let's oh my god, imagine in the future where it translates in Zoom, and we can have somebody who doesn't even speak our language do the podcast the entire time, yeah. and it's just auto train. Like to me, magic. Like it, that's just more gamers for me to talk to. Like at that point, for I'm sure. like. Maybe we will have to change the industry, but that is then the place I'll, I would I'll like to go. I finally understand all those Russians and Counter Strike. Yeah, and you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. there you go. No, yeah, no. so that one's exciting. What else do we got here? Do you have any other uh, big uh, stories? There's a bunch um, big. Let's see. What do we have for big, big, big? Let's go big. So you saw that uh, half of CDPR is not working on Witcher 4, but there's not much to say there. Um, what did it turn out to be? 400 employees? So half of yeah, around there, so... 400, 500 uh, employees working on it right now, full force. I don't know what the other half is working on. I think there's other IPs and a multiplayer thing, probably. Um, CD, I think Cyberpunk is completely done. I don't like maybe uh, just a few updates here and there. Yeah, they said fixes. just one. The they the engine is not good enough to get, like it doesn't support what they want to do. So I I, I do have a feeling since they're. Uh, reintroducing or not reintroducing they're introducing the mod kit or whatever to Witcher 3 um, that's Red Engine as well I think that's their farewell to Red Engine maybe they'll yeah. re they'll introduce it into Cyberpunk as well which, we, that which would, be would be great. cool that would be great because dude I um I got bored one day and modded Cyberpunk with around 200 mods 190 and the shit the modders did some work for that game dude like they, you can sit down, have drinks, uh, eat food, um, uh, better vehicle handling. If I if I hit another vehicle, I get fined. Car insurance, uh, new locations. There's like a there's a whole stock market where you can invest in stocks and like short them. And quests you do that affect them would will affect. The, it's basically like GTA. Um, there's like a lot more because there's like uh, text chats 
and uh, and Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. So there's so people can just make content for that. So there's a lot more yeah, fleshed quest. out text chats and quests and relationships. And there's a lot of hidden secret stuff in Cyberpunk. So one of the mods gives you quests to do them and shit. There's so many, so much cool stuff there that I didn't know about, uh, including graphics mods and one that actually makes path tracing better as well. Um, uh, and there's also... There's well, real this, quick, uh, I want to talk about the 400. Yeah. So 400 sure. people are working on Witcher 4 is what they say. Do we know what the other... Are, aren't they doing one other game? Isn't that... What They're doing the Witcher remake as well. Witcher 1? The Witcher 1, yeah. Dude, how did I... Okay, I spaced that. All right, so they got Witcher 1, which wouldn't be 300, but let's say that's... So they probably have three games then. They probably have... They probably have Witcher 4, 4 whatever it's going to be called. They have Witcher Remake, yeah. and they have this... I know that they announced they were working on a game that they haven't said the name for. Yes, so there's and, three games and they're in pre-production for the next Cyberpunk game. Oh, right, 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 yeah. Hmm. Well, whatever. Like, I'm glad they fixed it. We'll have to see. I think Witcher 4, there, there's just more of a chance of that one being good. I just think... Yeah, I, and I, I don't I, think I it'll don't... be... It'll be four. It won't be like a continuation. I think it'll be like you a don't? completely separate story. Not I don't Geralt? think it'll be like Geralt. Maybe Siri, But I think it'll be like a, a, a case where you don't have to play the other games to really play this one. Like it'll be like a whole new adventure, whole new people. Yeah. Even though Witcher 3 was wrapped up very nicely, especially at the end of Blood and Wine, I think this will be a completely different thing just um, in the world. I had asked people about AI, and I do want to make sure people know I do read your comments. Oregon Fresh says EA recently patented tech. That is what we were talking about uh, earlier. Ian says I'm from North England, and I need a translator for somebody from Glasgow. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And by the way, in America, obviously, I have East, West, South. You have all these different places. And when you talk to somebody who's thick in it, and they've been yeah. in it forever, and somebody says something fast, man, I'll be like, what, what, what? Like, you know, mm -hmm. actually having difficulty understanding him. So I think that's cool. Rogerio says, it's a future. Heck, it's already there. Just, uh, or it's already a thing. Just a matter of implementation. We'll be like alien language translators in Star Trek. That right there is probably the best explanation. For sure. That is pretty I mean, you just like much... walk around, go, like imagine going to like France or something and just speaking to other people normally yeah and sbz says cool and scary imagine if the, uh you can completely transform this podcast into another language yeah i mean that's to me like or, or where somebody from another language can listen to the podcast without youtube's terrible translations one time mm -hmm. i made a mistake and somehow the german translation got sent to germans so it the primary language is normally english no issues and if you switch it you can switch it to yours but youtube I don't know what it did, but it was like, this one's going out to people who've logged into YouTube and say that their primary language is German. And Reg contacted me right away. He's like, dude, nothing makes sense. Your tag <laughs> yeah. doesn't make sense. Your title doesn't like make Google Translate, right? It was using like Google Translate. And, you know, it doesn't right. know slang and it doesn't know, infl it doesn't even know, like you know, sentence structure. It just sort of knows word for word and it pounds it mm -hmm. down. And word for word doesn't even work East and West Coast in America, let alone Japan or S Spanish speakers who have like male and female, you know, inflections on their words. So yeah, yeah. it was it was pretty yeah. bad. Can GPT uh, can GPT translate? GPT can translate really well. Yeah, it, it, and it oh, yeah? actually be, so GPT isn't just trained on English; it's trained on everything. So it it knows a little bit better where to put like how to adjust something. Because I think I sent For something sure one time to than Google. Yeah, and I think I sent something to Johnny one time. I think it was Johnny, but it was somebody who, yeah, because Johnny's from Brazil. I'm pretty sure it was Johnny, but I sent a couple things. I was like, how does this sound? And originally, this is years ago or whatever, It did. he said, he's like, it doesn't make any sense. And then mm -hmm. later, it sounded quite, it just sounded like somebody chatting in Discord, which I think is, yeah. that's magical. And it, it depends on how it's used, but I just think it's, I can't. I'm not saying I want to lose a job, but I mean, at some point, it's even going to affect creators where I can say, I like the game, enter. And it's like video edited. You, you know, how, what do you do? You like the graphics? I like the graphics. And it'll just like gives you a questionnaire like a wizard. And that's then exactly you just go what like, will happen. Boom, boom. It will even yeah. even if it's bad. I've already seen a multiple YouTube channels do the long explainer videos in like science explainers, and they're pretty bad and they get tons of views. And they're like, there's times where I remember one, one of them was like, the star Beetlejuice is a star. This star is, and you could tell it was that AI repetitive. It was repeating star 
way too many times and had like 4 million views. And people are like, this is great. Now, it could have been bot farms <laughs> for this is great, but I don't think Damn. it was. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else do we got for some chats before we go back to news? Zombie says, how's life? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, we, good. Uh, we went and visited my parents for Thanksgiving, which was fun. First time nice. I've been to their house. It was Red Dead. Right out of Red Dead, man. It was awesome. It's like so, a cabin? It. They've got a cabin, but they live in... Oregon's big enough to have its own coastal range its own mountain range and its own desert and they live in the desert and so it's redwoods and like that oh, rock form. yeah so we pulled Great in and one it was it was like it yeah. was i walked out and it's also silent which is never silent here and ever you go outside and you hear somebody on a motorbike or you know for sure. and there it was nothing except for coyotes and wolves which was awesome like you hear coyotes, beep, 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 beep. it was so are there like so two great. oregons in in america oregon no, city it's just right? one big oregon Oh, one big okay. Because my friend, I think Oregon's he lives fat, in Oregon man. City. Pretty uh, Oregon um, City, Oregon. Maybe I don't know. Is there another? Maybe there's Oregon? another Oregon City. There absolutely could be because there's 18 uh, Toledo's, which is where I'm from. Dude, Oregon. he shows me just the most beautiful picture. Yeah, I think it's Portland. Uh, damn, there's a lot of really cool shit like Crater Lake. That looks like Crater Lake. Lake's by the way. incredible, dude. Oregon's like this was the first time I traveled in a while. And because we got the car and I was like, yeah, we'll drive it. We took the dog. It was a blast, yeah. man. It was cool to like go. And it was it, it is different, by the way. Desert. I mean, it is true. Sand grit on the ground. It was like nothing. I live in undergrowth and Pacific Northwest giant forests. And this was like redwoods, no undergrowth. It was just it was it was. Yeah. Oregon Fresh is. Um, he's oh, wait, in there's Grants Portland, Pass. Maine, right? Yeah, there's Portland, Maine. Mm hmm. But you said Oregon City, which pretty. would be different. I think Oregon City, I, I don't know of another Oregon, but there might be. There might be. Oh, like, okay, okay. Maybe I was thinking of Portland. I don't know, but he just showed me pictures that were just beautiful. I yeah, think it was, it was Oregon. It was a good trip, man. We had a good yeah. time. I, I Definitely a fun uh, Thanksgiving, even though it's sort of, you know, my parents are getting older. So it's like you go and I have my mental issue uh, of like remembering them at 40. And they're now double that. And you're like, you know. Dad broke his neck, so he's like all stoked oh, up because they fused everything. And you know, everybody's a little older. And I was right. I was incredibly impressed though, man. Mental acuity, those two got it nailed. Because I'm a fast talker and I do not hesitate to be like blah, 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 and my mom was just keeping up. And I was like, that's awesome. You know, because I'm always waiting for the day where she starts repeating herself or something, or where I do, <laughs> oh, no, which has already man. happened. Yeah. Um, oh no! Flip cup, ten dollar. Just wanted to say thanks for the podcast. Definitely good to listen to during work. Loving the Discord as well. Thank you very much. I saw you in chat a couple dozen times. Actually, I don't think I've jumped in because you're late and Pacific Northwest. By that time, it's like nine at night. But appreciate it, Dinosaur. Five dollar super chat. Happy Wednesday. Do you guys prefer donations through super chat or higher patron memberships? They're equal, man. I think with the patron membership, there's a shirt level and there's sticker levels and a couple other things, so you get more from that. YouTube is great, though. Yeah. Um, Johnny Q says, hey, CG, I don't have time, so I just want to say goat of reviews. Thank you very much, even though somebody else said I never do reviews anymore, but I get it. <laughs> Bend, Oregon is a treat. Portland is Oregon and Maine, Dell says. Yeah. Yeah. Portland. Portland's probably been used a couple dozen times. Toledo, Ohio. Land of Toledo, Oregon. Land that has a port. Yeah, pretty much. Right. Newport has also been used a bunch Newport. of times. So, yeah. Yeah. Not too surprising. Um, let's see. Then he continues and says, what's the favorite thing to see when you open the Discord other than me? This is also zombie. This place is great, and I hate missing out I on definitely all the cool don't Thank like you, zombie. I appreciate of, that. Sorry. I don't like seeing all of zombies 100% uh, trophies. That's for sure. Something <laughs> that I, hope he's listening. I hope he's listening. <laughs> yeah, what did he post <laughs> yesterday? He posted a platinum, and you were like, oh my god. It was, dude, there was one dude who was like, I hate for spoken, but I got platinum in it. I'm like, whoa, no. Um, um, yeah, zombies always post yeah. in hilarious stuff because he does those. There's a couple people who do those. Or uh, MH Toast, I love seeing his posts because they're always the worst <laughs> games ever. And we thought, <laughs> yeah. no lie, people were talking about Saints this in Row. the open. We all <laughs> thought that it was a, a an act because yeah. they're terrible games. Like, yeah. not terrible. They're Gollum. I mean, yeah, in yeah, fact, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's beat Gollum. And yeah, and he doesn't like good games. It's funny. Yeah, it's a dude. And we thought it was an act for the <laughs> longest time. There was no yeah. chance somebody, but he loves bad games. And and, yeah, and yeah. by the way, loves them to the point of like you can tell he loves them. They're posted and he's yeah, I mean he hundred percent Saints Row. Yeah. Yeah. 
A hundred is the Saints Row the new one? The yeah. uh, bland land. The yeah. One. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, dude. I love that kind of stuff. I would say my favorite when I pop in. It's gonna sound really weird, but I love it when somebody and this is just bothering me lately, but I've noticed that as we started crunching down in the last like two or three weeks, this is some recency bias, but last two or three weeks I've been crunching down on clickbait. And I'm like, if the person, if read the article before you posted it, and we started sort of crunching down and saying, you can't just post it and be like, ah, this company sucks. I'm like, we need to start. That's not what the article says. This person didn't say that at all. They said this, which by the way, if you hate that, that's fine. But you know, you've got you post something. Um, mm -hmm. And I noticed other people were doing it. And I thought that was awesome. I woke up one morning and it might've been, well, you do it, but I mean, outside of the podcast guys. And I, I thought, and administrators, and I thought that was awesome. I popped in, and there was, somebody posted it, and then right below it, somebody was like, "Actually, if you read that article, this and the," and I, I was like, "Yes, it's good to see." I like it when is, I, when people say Google it, <laughs> just Google yeah, it. because yeah. you don't get because it's easy because things do suck, so it's easy to get really negative or even get really positive, and instead having somebody be like, "That's not what was said at all. That was clickbait." Here's the proper article and linking to maybe it's a lesser known website, but linking to one that actually like the guy, the take two guy where he supposedly said he wanted all games to be rate, you know, cost exactly their hours. And oh, then yeah. that's not what he said. And then later, yeah. Christopher Dring, I think is his name on a different website, broke it down, was like, that is not what was said. It was this. But let's continue to discuss if that thought. Pro and I was like, that's such a good article. Good. And then yeah. somebody posted that one. I was like, this is actually what you should be looking at. And I was like, that's awesome. That's it's I, such a good feeling. I love, uh, I love obviously always seeing positivity, but my favorite, favorite thing that Discord has been the most useful for is people recommending or bringing in like games I've never heard of before. And just dude, dude. yeah. Like Neuromancer the other, the other day showed me that game called Laika, which is like a mix of, uh, it's like a very dark story, but you're playing as like a, like kind of like a little hamster or something, but it's also what's it called? It's 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 uh, L A I K A Laika, and it's basically uh what's what's that uh, trials game like that bike trials game mm -hmm. but with guns, and it's really really cool because oh, like I you see do his a post right now yeah I yeah, see Neuromancer's like, post right now yeah you do like a back flip to reload or a front flip to like uh -huh. uh, parry again or something like mm -hmm. that and it's really fucking cool so stuff like that or like. Um, I think Vicarious uh, Visions showed me Signalis, which became like one of my favorite games. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the that's the dopest thing because there's so many, so many, so many games, small, big, double A to keep track of that. You know, you're bound to like miss something that would probably hit you. You know what I mean? Hit you uh, good. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say for long term, that's probably also. I mean, other than yeah, the uh, people talking about stuff. When I jump in there. I will almost every yeah. night somebody's like, I tried this or I tried that. And either I don't know about it or I do, but I never got to it. And then because we're nerds, a lot of people took screenshots. So lately I've been for the question of the day. I'm like, everybody post your favorite screenshots from these games, whatever. And then people are just excited. And all of a sudden you have these games. I never, I guess I never would have thought a screenshot would work in that game or wasn't whatever. And they have these screenshots of goofy stuff or, or beautiful stuff. And you're like, whoa, that game is not what I thought it was. Like that's, mm -hmm. you know, cause you only see a trailer or whatever and you get people who like it and it's, it's sort of talked about and then gone. Cause the big ones, I think dominate conversation just because, but yeah, it's awesome to go in there and find somebody to be like, dude, I got, dude, this, yeah, like nobody's that, talking about good, this game. That's a smart thing because of the trailer. Like for example, for Laika, the trailer, I was like, oh, you're like a cute hamster dude on a bike. Mm -hmm. And then your answer goes like, oh, it's a dark story. And then the first thing I see, I played like the first five minutes there's like a child who's dead who oh, has wow. guts so goes dark. now like t yeah it's super dark like um yeah, it's fucked up but i thought it was like oh it's a cute game you know <laughs> i, I never think that happened with bramble too until i reviewed it yeah. and even some people miss the review they don't watch the reviews or they just didn't know what it was they thought it was one thing and then now we've had a couple of people play it or like no dude that's not what like this game is this, this game. and so <laughs> you right. have people going like oh my god i want to play that now which is awesome because december and november were a little dead so it's cool to see oh for sure we've got some time for people to I'm jump in i'm bouncing around like so many i'm I'm like trying out so many different games and yeah uh, it's been very fun something. been very fun yeah. to have that extra time because i bounced into some stuff i just wouldn't have um robert yeah, seven for the past year sorry yeah. no go ahead 
for the past year all i was playing was like the new game coming out new game new game new mm -hmm. game i haven't had time to like check out other stuff yeah have you checked out so you checked out Leica? was there any others that you've checked? and by the way anybody in chat feel free to um pop off in a game that's smaller it'd be nice to know indie games that you know like just for whatever reason haven't caught on if you have any uh feel free to post them but has there been any for you that even a double a game that maybe we missed just due to time other than like yeah, yeah, much... i mean like i dave i the talked diver? about american arcadia the other time yeah american um, arcadia i love dave the diver i think it's a chill fun game book of travels i talked about last podcast which i think it's such an awesome game book of uh, hours or book of travels book of travel did i talk about it last podcast book of travel well, no because yesterday kel in the discord was talking about book of hours as being incredible and so oh, it might just book be of hours? book of it might they're probably two different games that just come close in the name but interesting he, yeah he could not stop talking about book of book, book of, i mean of hours. He, he didn't talk about it in depth i just mean his it was pretty glowing in book of uh, narrative book of crafting hours. rpg oh this is really cool man so that's not book of travels then you are talking you know, about book a of game. travels is like you're you're in a um you you create your own character their own backstory do all that stuff it's kind of like a 2d 2.5d game and uh you live in a fantasy world and there's no like no quest or whatever it's just you're you have your kind of like a notepad thing like a book mm -hmm. and you just go and you talk to npcs and you discover secrets and you learn about the world and just travel through the fantasy world and oh, learn weird. stuff and and there's a and you're in a server with like maybe seven or eight other people but like you don't really run into them much but you can play with a friend um and and you just like you just travel around walk obviously there's like eating and drinking and resting and stuff but uh but it's very 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 zen it's it's not like it's very chill you're just walking around and exploring and it, I, I found it really really cool yeah, yeah for me i would say um the honest truth is i've the the games that i've been finding are from people in the discord they're not like i'm not playing anything somebody hasn't mentioned because people will mention ones that i'm just like oh man i i just didn't i didn't even know about this or i didn't think about it but there's nothing really new for me i would say that i'm going back to games in the last couple of years that I, I i tried death stranding again um i tried uh D dave the diver i i'm doing a little bit of dredge dlc dredge is awesome oh like, there's dredge dlc is, for it mm -hmm, yeah nice. and so there's you know, there's games we know of. I haven't really hit any of the super, what what do you call it, indie or ones that I've missed. Tried a couple Call of Duties. I decided to jump. I beat, again, Infinite Warfare. Um, those are always fun to go in because you know what they are. They're popcorn, yeah. right? There's yeah, no yeah. thought process yeah. in those games. Just like, I like the story and I did it. Uh, super <laughs> Chat, Robert. Go ahead. Say? <laughs> no, I sorry. I there, it was uh, something I also posted, but someone just mentioned the Halston demo was pretty intriguing. And yes, I mean we'll talk that about that in a second. That's the awesome. horror game, we will right? We'll talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got that on the list to talk about. Robert seven one four five dollars super chat. Carrick, more of a personal question. What do what do your parents think of your success as a YouTuber? Your passion for gaming. Um, what do they think? Uh, Jesus, what do they? Think? Do they know like what you do exactly? They know my dad pro dude. Well, okay, so hmm. <laughs> my mom and dad, um, hmm. I'm the <laughs> I'm pretty put together with all my personal life and stuff, where some people in the family unit maybe aren't. So I think my mom and dad are pretty much like Jeremy will take care of himself. They took like I moved out, I took care of myself. I think I needed to borrow money for rent one time in my entire life where other people you know, there's been situations where they've had to help others. So they wa my mom watches the podcast occasionally and she'll laugh about a story I told. But um, I think my mom and dad are just uh, YouTube's a little confusing. They both do Facebook, but I think and Facebook to me is confusing. I went to Facebook a couple yeah, days ago. Yeah. Dude, they're fucking oh, no. <laughs> chats going up and down. And oh, you want to talk on Messenger, but not on the, you know, their page or whatever you can do. You know, it's all separated. It's like, can you still poke people? <laughs> dude, that... I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, so with YouTube, yeah. it sounds like it, it's much easier and it is, but my parents haven't, my mom gravitates towards it for horse videos. But I talk about shit they don't. My mom doesn't play game. When we talk like this, she does listen because we talk about science or books, and she's a huge like she's a voracious reader. So she loves mm -hmm. to read, and she she reads sci fi and fantasy. But dude, I don't think I've ever asked. I think my I think they would ask if I needed to borrow money. 
I, I know that sounds really weird, but I think my parents are pretty open to your, you do whatever you do. I think if I needed financial help or if I, uh, if there was some disaster, they would, um, they would chime in. But otherwise my mom laughs at stupid jokes that I make. She didn't understand the Peter North joke because that was the first video I knew she watched because she asked what Peter North, uh, pinata facial, facial pinata like items out of a body in Borderlands when you shoot them and they explode. <laughs> My mom was like, who's Peter North? And I was like, just don't even go there. You don't need to, that, that, let's not search him on YouTube anytime soon. But yeah, that's a good question, man. I don't know. Maybe one of these days I'll ask. I don't think my parents care as long as I'm having fun and um, taking care of myself. I'm assuming they don't care. I mean, they've never, my mom and dad are not gossipers. They're not really that kind of people. So that is a good question, dude. I should ask my parents. Um, back to zombie. He also says this place is great. I hate missing out on all the cool discussions while I'm at work. Dude, quit work, right? Like that's the answer. <laughs> I thought you were gonna go another direction with that. Oh, did you? No, no. Quit, I quit. thought you were gonna be like, yeah, you could just listen it later. Listen to it later. Oh, oh yeah, like, I could also say that, but I could also that. just say quit work and listen to us. Just um, fucking quit I, work. Dude. IQ Baller says, any thoughts on performance and quality of PS Portal versus Steam Deck OLED running Chaka Four Deck for PS Five Remote Play? Still trying to get a PS Portal. Uh, it's out. It's sold out everywhere, but currently also testing, I think it's called Chalky, on the OLED Steam Deck. Um, I would say stick with your Steam Deck, by all means. It's ten times better. I, oh, there's yeah. not even a comparison. I, Dude, I, I and Chalky, I think is how it's pronounced, I love. It works better than PS Play, um, and it doesn't cost money. Yeah, dude, you're good to go, man. You, you're set up. There's, there's no reason you should switch off of that. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here for questions? Well, let's talk about Holston. So this is a horror. So what is going on with this? It's like a horror game. Is it big budget, small budget? Small budget indie. Um, and basically um, you have like, yeah, the, the, it's like a top down view. It's a very cool survival horror, very atmospheric, uh, set in 92. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's, a, it's, a, it's like a top down view. But when you aim, it goes down to like third person, like Resident Evil. Oh, so it's kind of like Signalis, okay. and then mm -hmm. it switches down to the Resident Evil. And apparently the demo was so good that it's over like 170,000 people that wishlisted the game. Oh, and wishlists matter, right? We like developers oh, yeah. are now constantly like wishlist Especially our game, these please. Devs. Yeah, Hol yeah, yeah. So if anybody's looking, it's called Holston, H-O-L-S-T-I-N. So is it Alone in the Dark Resident Evil style world? Is it fantasy? Uh, the what is the, it? There is some fantasy elements. I'm thinking it's low fantasy. It basically, um, because it, it is kind of like Resident Evil-ish, but it mm -hmm. has like the weird tentacles and weird stuff that happens, maybe psychological stuff. Um, from the blurb itself, uh, let me just pull it up. It says, late November 92, a small isolated town in eastern Poland struck by a foul calamity that slowly begins to consume everyone and everything it touches. Gives me some... Uh, huh. Gives me some... Uh, Silent Hill? Uh, Lovecraftian type Lovecraft, shit, yeah. too. Like, vibes, yeah. Last known whereabouts of your friend Bartek before he stopped answering your calls. Now you need to follow in his footsteps to uncover what brought him to this town and stuff, yeah. And so, do any idea on release date? No, to be announced. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would probably want to check it out, but I like the early access to be announced stuff. I usually don't check. Um, yeah, I don't do demos it's either, really so well. I, I, I held off on, on. I didn't play the demo, but I just watched the trailer, and it looks really, really cool to me. Um, reading here because I asked the question. Uh, SBZ says I think Carrot got disowned because gaming is bad. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Connor says, Far Cry Avatar honestly has me hyped. Looks gorgeous. I think the spin on the gameplay playing as the Navi, Na Navi right? Uh, and mm -hmm. environmental actions will will be enough to recreate the spark. I will say I've been hearing a lot of people who played it and a lot of people who are just in the Discord or generally actually more and more stoked for Avatar. I think it's because it's in a good time frame where maybe people are playing their games they've missed and this might be one of those titles that they jump into. Oregon Fresh says, yeah. Discord got me into uh, Lost Odyssey, and I can't believe I never played it. Incredible writing. What were you going to say? Oh, yeah. I really want to play Lost Odyssey. Um, I um, I was uh, in the, the boat where I looked at Avatar in the beginning, the first mm -hmm. couple trailers or whatever, and right. I was like, nope, I don't like Far yeah. Cry. This looks too much like Far Cry. The world yeah. looks beautiful, but I don't, give a, I don't care. 
but then the preview there i think the latest previews came out and uh it really set itself apart i saw all the verticality yeah. jumping out jumping and, and landing on your mount um i saw there's so many environmental puzzles and traversal and stuff and i'm like yeah this is definitely not far cry even though it might look because it's like first person whatever mm -hmm. uh, outpost but but i am i am very interested and i think uh i'm gonna keep my U ub play um uh subscription Account. to try it yeah. out for sure yeah i think it just looks like a game that might just be the you know a random open world shooter that is in avatar land that allows you to fly around and that might be good enough it doesn't need to yeah. change the world and right? i don't it's... care about avatar itself like i don't either do i, I don't yeah. care at all, at all. Yeah. either do i yeah. Um, so we just answered, somebody else asked if we were excited for that. So, and then Kulo Band says, dude, I'm playing Bramble right now. And holy fudge muffins, holy <laughs> fudge muffins. Is that game dark? Um, Aries says dredge they're playing. Yeah. Er, er, nice. uh, dredge is awesome for the King Two. risk of rain. Another dredge, um, subnautica for the King is awesome. Paranormal site rain code. Yeah, par uh, so that one's another... Is that a multiplayer horror one as well? Which one? Uh, the para Parasite or para Paranormal Site? Paranormal? Para, I don't it's know called what the... Paranormal Site. I don't know what that is. Oh, okay, because I, I haven't heard out. of it. Yeah. Uh, Le Lethal Company. Lethal Paranormal Company site. was rough, but it was it was good. Evil West. Uh, Infinite Warfare is a great space campaign. Yes, it does. It's a horror adventure game. It looks like uh, it looks anime. Overwhelmingly positive. Hmm. Tech Guru oh, says, I appreciate cool. everything you do. You saved me tons of cash. I'm glad, man. That's my job. NC says, Lost Odyssey is my favorite Final Fantasy game. <laughs> Dude, I, <laughs> I just I got want that it. joke. I don't know why I, don't I didn't wanna... even pick yeah. that up. Yeah. What were you saying? I guess I have to like do it, play it on an emulator. I, I don't think I have a choice because I really, really want to play it. Lost Odyssey. Um, well, what are they playing it on? Are they playing it on old I don't consoles? Know. It's, it's only available on Xbox 360, to my knowledge. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Or you can I, backwards compat. I think right? it's backwards compat. I think, let me check. I'm, I think, lost. Odyssey. I just don't have an Xbox. Backwards. Pat. Yeah, let me. Oh, right. Yeah, backwards compat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not possible on PC unless it's an emulator. Um, but it, yeah, backwards compatibility. Oh, mm, maybe not. Oh no, it says Twitter. Yes, Lost Odyssey is backwards compatible. So yeah, if you don't have an Xbox, it doesn't matter. You could it could be as backwards compatible as anything in the world. Yeah, if you don't have, have a system, do you're not playing it. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you guys. I I saw what you guys were uh, doing, but I wanted to look it up and just verify. Yeah. So it's backwards compat. Lost Odyssey is awesome, and the joke is one of the main guys from Final Fantasy made that, and I know he even took the menu sounds and that was a big deal it was like i guess the yeah. menu sounds people love and so it showed up ransom says blacktail thanks to you blacktail's awesome and dude i don't know about you but every morning i'm waking up expecting a layoff and d the worst thing is it's proven what we've all known just that it doesn't matter if you do well like we're yeah, getting hit with so dude did you see that yesterday the time splitters devs um the embracer was saying that there's a very good chance the time splitters devs will have major layoffs before december or before the end of december time splitters what have they done recently they were doing a, i believe it was either a remake or a sequel for time splitters oh shit sure. yeah yeah I, don't, so, I mean it's 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 normal i i feel like at this point um i just expect it out of everyone too it does but because, you always hope the honest truth yeah. is you always hope it'll be the low performers right yeah, you always yeah, hope, yeah. Oh, well, not hope, but if it's going to be anybody, how about that? Yeah. If it's going to be yeah, anybody. Yeah, you wouldn't expect like a, like yeah, a really Min May good or whatever about. who does all the best turn based and yeah. they shut down. And again, stress is what they said, but they did say stress from trying to fight for finance. Yeah, there's a lot of environmental factors right now that you're just kind of forced. Um, there's no, like, you can't. Like there's nothing they could do. I feel like I, I know, I know it's 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 awful to see a lot of devs being laid off and stuff, but it's just how the market's going right now. I feel like, and and you know, outside of gaming as well, and you can't really, I don't know where to put the blame. You can't really put the blame anywhere other than uh, unless unless a company's doing way more than necessary or something. I don't know, but everyone like that's how it's you know the cookie crumbles right now. Yeah, and then later on, a couple of years from now, you're gonna see massive. The opposite Absolute, direction. Just, that, exactly. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing. I guess the only blame I would have is some companies, not all, but some. You're like, man, I wish you would have saved, banked some of that 
but you know, we don't know how much they had over, but sometimes you're like, it seems like they could have banked some of that to continue, you know, continue during a down time. But I don't know if you saw frontier also just stated that after testing, um, out other genres, they've decided to go back to the tycoon games and everything because it didn't work financially. Mm -hmm. And they, it just sucks. Cause it's like, we always hear this story about why don't these guys attempt something? And it's like, it only takes one or two failed attempts and not at the $500 million huge AAA game. We're talking about even small games. It only takes one or two, you know, stretching of your wings and failures to just be like, we're going back to the thing. And you'll see people say, I hate sequels. And it's like, well, apparently a lot of people don't because, you know, Jurassic Park number two, Tycoon, whatever, will do better than this new tested game that somebody tries to release. And it's just sad, but it is life. Souls yeah. Keeper, $6 Super Chat. Carrick, did you play Xenoblade Chronicles besides 3? I played 2 a little bit, but 3 is the main one I did. 3 was awesome. 3 was awesome. You played and beat 3, right? Yeah, I loved Switch? 3. I didn't beat 3. Uh, I need to play again. I'm I'm, I'm hoping. I'm, my, my thing is I'm waiting for the Switch 2 and hoping it'll be available to play at 60 FPS. Backwards, on it. yeah. Dude, <laughs> but, uh, like we, and a little higher res, right? We've talked yeah, about this Yeah, 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 yeah. Better anti-aliasing. Um, yeah. But I played 1 and 3 and I loved them both. 2 I didn't really get into. But I never played uh, X because uh, I think that's only on like DS or something like that. Uh, so, X? Or we, I, don't, I forgot. Xenoblade yeah, Chronicles, Chronicles X. X. Yeah, I never Did you play the new Persona out. Battler, the per Persona, whatever it's called, Tactic, Tactic, I'm not, Tactica? I liked Persona 5. I'm not a huge uh, Persona person. Oh, um, really? I never even beat Persona 5, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I always go back to it, and then I say I'm going to beat it, and then I'm like 40, 50 hours in, and then something just happens, and I... Uh, and then I, and then when I think about beating it again, I think about the start and having to redo all that, and then I... You know what I mean? So the I, stuff I, yeah, I that bothers do... you, even when you're like two or you know twenty or thirty hours in, and you realize when you start over, it's just going to bother you more because you already know it's there. You're going to have yeah, to exactly. learn about like, it. Like I don't want to go through like the eight hour intro again, yeah. or like but let's I, say I, the I Red Dead Two game. opening prologue. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I you know I did that opening like five times. Actually, I just the did last it. time uh, I will two weeks ago, and it was rough. I it's just that's my personal <laughs> opinion. It was it. I will, I will admit the last, like, it's not that long, but the last time I did, I was like, okay, well, I've done this so many times that like, okay, like I know, like, okay, we saved John, go back. We do these two missions. One is hunting. The other one is raiding the camp. And then we go back and we put the thing on the bomb on the, on the train track and then boom, you know, it's like, okay, I know it by now. I know it by heart. <laughs> like, you know, but there I are think... save, uh, you could download a save game. After yeah. It, so. Yeah. You can, And I could have, because yeah. this is the PC version I'm playing on the Legion, but yeah. I will say that. I think it's needed because you care about those characters and they want you to care about them and they want you to see where John is. They want you to see yeah. where I'm, but I got to tell you, man, this is only the third or fourth time I've done it. And man, I hadn't even got to the train. I think the train actually bothers me, to be honest. I think the train is one of the more restrictive levels because you're on a train and you got to stop the steam engine at the end. And then mm -hmm. you got to get the guys out of the back and then you got to decide to shoot them. And something about it is just too slow for it's too. It, I don't mind the linear missions later. I think it's just because you're already know you need to do all this stuff very particular to move the story forward. And for then you sure. have that mission. And for whatever reason, but I was I doing thought... the mission, just laughing at you. I was playing it just going like, I can't wait to tell Abzi how much I hate this fucking thing right now. Dude, I, I think the reason why I loved it so much the first time was because, um, it, first of all, it was very immersive. Like the, it was like a Western opening. And I, I really like yeah. the way the characters were talking, like they already know each other and not really like introducing you in a very obvious way by going like, oh, save John. Oh, John, that little idiot, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, right, see, right. Like, sets it up. Yeah. And then. And then especially when you go the first time killing people uh, and then you have these, uh, the, you go into this house and you're like slowly looting everything. And I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm like opening the drawers and looting yeah. and like, oh my God, this is awesome. And then they tell you to go lead the horse. And that, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. I'm leading a horse. I pat him and then I lead him. And then I could pick up my hat from the ground and put it on my head again. And I could choose whether to kill or not this guy. Um, and that's why it was like, I was like, oh my God. So introducing you to these very immersive mechanics and in a kind of natural way, but 
yeah the fifth like yeah yeah like redoing it again is just is just it's yeah i feel like it's you know i think you, it's you also because it. i play a lot of red dead one and i think that i'm accustomed to hunting and stuff so when i'm on the horse with dutch and dutch talks hello in that first introduction <laughs> and i see yeah. a deer and i'm like i want to get off and go hunt that deer but you don't have any of the equipment you know it's where it restricts you right at the starting and i think it just boils up and it's so funny that it boiled up even the first time i played it I, it could have been because i played a bunch of one and i was accustomed mm. to all the freedom i'd already unlocked but one does start dramatically faster than two and which i thought was interesting i don't know how else they would do it but yeah when i was playing it i realized why they did it i mean they did mm -hmm. want to introduce you slowly to john who's like you deal with him a little bit, then he runs off and you're trying to, you know, there's like hints of why he run off there. It's very, that part's cool. But also I just want to say, John is a fucking idiot because John has his horse killed and somehow he's fallen down sideways up, then down, then up a hill. He's you, when you find that dude, you've crawled under, you know, like there's rocks that you climb under and you find John on this little tiny cliff. That's like sideways and up and down from where his horse died. Yeah, like yeah, John, yeah. what are you doing? Like, the wolves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like, dude, come on, man. I, it took so long to find him in my brain. So long. It was probably only yeah. ten minutes, but man, that killed me. But long story short, it's not as bad as I say. It's not as good as you say. There's somewhere in the middle where, <laughs> you know, it, I don't yeah. think it would take somebody else five times, but maybe it would. Maybe it would. Maybe it's just me bitching yeah. about that game. I love the game anyway. It's yeah, it's awesome. To have it. Yeah, dude, it's it's yeah, it's one of the best games there is. Like, it's just very yeah, cool, for sure. e even though whew, he move, man, he stoved up, he stoved <laughs> up. Even when I'm playing right now, I was playing another game and I thought it was streaming that was causing the issue. I was like, oh, I've got a weird leg. And then I played it on the PC. I just jumped up, turned PC Native. on got my, and I moved it. And he's like. And you're whole, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> oh, Arthur's, no. yeah, or he's not like a spry 18-year-old kid. He's, you know, and they did a good job of replicating that. Very good. Nothing wrong with it at all. Um, let's move on to something else. So we talked about that. We talked about that. Next RE engine's going to support ray tracing? I mean, I I, that, I didn't really understand that it's going to support a new, I, I'm thinking path tracing, like a new form of ray tracing. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, because Resident Evil 4 already has ray, some ray tracing, not a lot. Um, but I'm thinking what they meant by this is, is probably path tracing, which is like the next step or whatever. But it's also going to be more optimized on consoles. Mm -hmm. And that engine's already super amazingly optimized. So um, I'm excited to see uh, what they do with it for sure. Um, and then the other one we can talk about for a second, but then I just want to talk about good stuff. Uh, people were freaking out about Mike Rose. He's dev for Stardew Valley Spirited Away inspired game. Spirit T. Spirit T. Yeah. Saying it's on he, Game Pass. Saying he doesn't feel okay for you, uh, for paying YouTubers for coverage. I did respond to him. Um, so basically just yeah, so everybody knows what that? happens is the game yeah. came out. He posted a screenshot, said... He wasn't comfortable paying YouTubers and almost every YouTuber slash creator who contacted him wanted money to cover the <clears throat> cover the game. And a lot of YouTubers got mad and they were like, it's my time, blah, blah, blah. I don't run the channel that way, so I have no clue what they're talking about. I'm assuming what he meant was streamers. So a streamer, they do ask for money. Um, a reviewer, at least the couple I know, do not ask for money. Yeah, reviewers shouldn't, I think. They shouldn't, but they do. So I got corrected because I found out some did, and I have my guesses on who they did, who who were, but they they didn't say. But the big, basically, what happened was he was saying we would have got even better sales. We got great sales. We would have got better sales if we had paid some YouTubers to stream it slash review it. And then I saw people, including YouTubers and streamers, saying, "Well, it's my time. I'm I'm making content for you." My personal opinion is I'm trying to figure out what they mean because you get paid for your streams. You get paid for that, yeah. Right. And so to me, there is never going to be money exchanged because I get paid for the stream, for Discord, or for patrons, for people, blah, blah, blah. That's where my money, that's my job. My job yeah. is to make sure it's good enough people want to watch a video. And Exactly. That, and what they were saying, and there was a lot of people on there that were like, no, how dare you, it like you should pay for all coverage. I, I at that point that I dropped out. That stumped me a little bit. 
I yeah. think we're changing now to where most, I mean, I've bitched about it in the Discord where I think a lot of people have just become like you, where you said you questioned when you did top 10 routers. You questioned the article. It is like this an ad? Is this a blah, blah, blah? And for, it used to be where it was on me as a creator to make sure I wasn't. It's somehow it's the onus has sort of gone on to the viewer and people are okay with that. They're like, well, yeah, the YouTuber should get paid. It's, 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 ends, it's, which it, it's weird to me because, uh, because I would trust someone more if they didn't get money from the person who made the game to review, to review or, or cover their game in any way, because right. uh, you're just going to get some disingenuous, maybe more positive things about it. Um, also there's the thing about like not spending money on a game to, properly you know review it in its entirety of like oh i spent this amount of money and how do i feel about that um he did say game pass helped him a ton which is great it's just very very odd to me um oh you should like the like it feels like uh, maybe it's virtue signaling signaling i don't know what it is but i don't know why there's this whole huge switch up where everyone's super pro like uh oh youtubers should get paid now for this and that or like but they do get uh, paid pro sponsor stuff they, they do, do get, get paid. paid they get paid just as we've always got paid which is by the side that we create the, the content on exactly that's the main source of revenue isn't the the game maker it's it the shouldn't viewers, be but it is definitely become that i i i don't know if i showed you but i showed reg what i got offered for a big R arpg and it was yeah. ridiculous. And I was like, what? The? And I, I was telling my wife, I was like, look what I just passed up. Like, what does that mean? And people can say, I don't think that's virtue. I think that's making sure that the communication line is clear of any other psychological impacts, including even getting it early. So there'll be an excitement that I'll see from other creators that I talk to in, in a special Discord we have. And we're talking, people are excited, right? They get the game. You're excited. Even that has to be tempered because... You don't want to be like, well, I got it early. I'm just going to ignore this bug or what, what have you, dude, psychology, there is that there is no argument. That's fucking psychology. Consumer psychology has covered this yeah. since any kind of recording or poll taking or any kind of stuff has ever been done for a consumer. And, um, like the consumer psychology is that a person who gets something for free will treat it differently. Even if they treat it worse, it will be differently. Dude, so I can. To I can me, it seems to like you wouldn't want to do that. Go ahead. I mean, I I used to when I was uh, when I was much poorer and and didn't have a lot of money and stuff. And I I'm not, I'm gonna admit, like a long time ago, I used to torrent games. And the reason why the main reason why I stopped is because it, it just feels completely different when you torrent a game. It's just there's a there's I don't know how to really explain it, but if you don't put money into something and you just uh, or you get something in a non like. Um, legal or credible way for example game pass there's still money coming out and i have that and it's official and there's a difference between that and like just like playing a game for free you don't feel there's something that's different where you don't uh, enjoy it in the same way yeah you know what i mean um so there, yeah. there's, there is something to that and, and getting money in the opposite direction to play a game i i I, I don't know what that would do to my psychology for, for, I mean, you've given me review codes as well before to like test out co-op games and stuff. And um, uh, there's a di definitely a different type of attachment to it. You know what I mean? Not definitely only that, but I'm reviewing it and you're not. So you yeah. are getting, you're experiencing it. And I mean, not being rude, but I don't, unless you have bugs, I'm not really listening. I might ask you like how something works or whatever, but that's still sure. on me to, to discuss how it all comes together. And it's not on you. The idea mm -hmm. that, so I think people are hiding behind sponsored. I think that's become a thing where so so many people are accustomed to seeing sponsored that now you can just say sponsored, but I'll still tell you the truth. And it's like, ah, what? Wait, it it's not that it's not that it's instantly disingenuous. It's that it's instantly transformed into something different. And that's how human mm -hmm. psychology works. It is yeah. quite. And if somebody says, "Man, I might even treat it harder," well, that you just indicated right there that now there's even more of an issue. Now you might bang on something even more because you got it free, because you're trying to recreate or you're trying to get back to normal. Why don't you just be normal? Why don't you just stay at normal? And yeah, it's weird. Like that was a really weird tweet series because I even saw some PR people being like, what are you talking about? And, and I, when I work with them, they never offer me money. Now that's probably because they know, but I saw a lot of people responding who were people I deal with, with game codes. And I can tell you straight up, they've never offered me money. They probably know that I won't, but it was 
interesting to see them respond because obviously some people with companies I didn't think paid are getting paid. And so I was like, oh, interesting. Because I know some companies probably pay, right? There's some companies mm -hmm. that, especially if it's a big company, not I'm, I'm just mentioning this company because it's in my brain. In no way, shape, or form is this saying they do. But if it was a Capcom and they were hiring you to go to an event, my assumption is, oh, there might be a transfer. But if it's a PR company, I just think of PR as more, here's a code early, review the game, but no money. Mm -hmm. But I'm apparently really wrong because all the responses I saw was that there's a, a tremendous amount of money going on. And I, I do agree with them. It does feel icky. Then oh, in no, some feel, sense. Yeah, it feels, I mean, yeah, it definitely feels weird. And for a creator, it probably yeah. feels weird. I know that he apologized because the way he tweeted it was a little off, but it was a very interesting conversation to see people talk back and forth about it and be like, I guess it's, I'm it, really it, old I, school. I feel like YouTube 10 years ago was just very different where it was like, oh, we hate sponsors. We hate that. And yeah. now it's, I think it's become it's so like, accustomed to it that like, and people will pay lip service even to me. They'll be like, I love that you're, you know, blah, blah, blah. You've saved me a bunch. And I'll be like, well, join the Patreon. Ah, I don't want to join. And you're like, all right, well, you know, it's like you don't think it's worth it, which is fine. But at the same time, it's like, does that mean that at the same time you will slowly uh, erode to being OK with watching sponsored because you're not supporting mm -hmm. unsponsored? But yeah, it's weird, man. It's, a, it's almost an unwinnable situation because I think. Did we talk about Fifth Element last podcast? Ruby, yeah, I yes. did. Where, yeah, yes, we it's did. like every yeah, influencer yeah. is like Ruby Rod from Fifth Element. And I remember as a kid yeah. going, that's so crazy. And now it's not crazy at all. It's quite no. literally less than that. Um, mm -hmm. Souls Keeper, $12 super chat. Last one before signing off. In anticipation of a big game with a certain theme, have you thrown yourself into movies of the genre to get hyped? For example, Spaghetti Westerns for Red Dead. Oh, dude, before Alan Wake 2, I watched True, De True Detective, and I loved it. Um, I didn't watch Twin Peaks, but uh, but that was because that was, like, one of the main inspirations of the game I heard, and and it was really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and I watch Supernatural stuff if there's, like, a, you know, Supernatural game coming out. Um, yeah. I'm I used to watch... To... Uh, Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Me and my friend had a routine. It was really weird, and... It, there's no connection to the game, but um, before playing either Gears of War Horde mode co-op mm -hmm. or uh, Halo co-op, we would watch an episode of Stargate Atlantis, which is Teal'c plus Ronin, who's uh, who's the Dothraki from Game of Thrones. You guys know him. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what's his name? I forgot his name, but he's he's the Atlantis guy. The that's funny. He was in Stargate Atlantis, and he's the king of Atlantis uh, from Marvel. Um, and we would watch that episode because it was so badass and it was it was kind of that brotherhood it was kind of those two guys against like a bunch of wraith or gold or whatever it was i think replicators i think it was wraith but it was both of them against it and that would get us hyped up to play like uh, gears or halo co-op those good times yeah i think um, yeah. watching stuff um it depends because sometimes i could see going into a game and not being as happy if the game didn't equal those shows so i i definitely watch shows I definitely watch stuff that interests me around mm -hmm. a game, but there's also so many games I'd be, I mean, I watch a lot of shows, but it would be hard to bounce around. So I would say I do for some, the bigger ones. Sometimes I'm not going to rewatch avatar, for example. <laughs> no, hell no. Oh, no. I did. The, I think before cyberpunk came out, I watched uh, Akira ghost in the shell, uh, blade runner. Yeah. Um, and yeah, a bunch of those cyberpunk movies. Um, uh, yeah, Kula Band says, I think I can understand a sponsored stream for a game, but they're not reviewing the product. See, I believe that's not right, man. I do not think that's true. They're, they're what, what still, did he, say? he said, he said he can sort of understand a sponsored stream because they're not reviewing the product. And I got to tell you, I just absolutely think that's a cop out. I think it's a cop out because if they're, you're not going to mention the negatives and I've seen the NDAs that state you can't mention, I've seen, like, I've shown them to other people in our Discord. I've shown them other reviewers. I'm like, dude, look at this thing. Like, or they've showed it, because I always make sure to not break one. And it's like, later on, I've asked companies, can I show it? Yep, and I show it. And it's just like, oh, that's really what's stated on, yes, it's stated very clearly on many of them. It's like, oh, just say all the yeah. bugs are fixed. As Dude, I'm telling you, I just think a lot of people love humanity and they pretend to be down on everybody, but really mm -hmm. they're giving everybody way more of a benefit of the doubt than they probably should. Yeah, what I do appreciate, I don't know how many of the 
it goes unchecked but um i do appreciate that there is a rule where you have to put like hashtag ad or something if you are getting paid to but play if everybody's game. hashtag ad what does hashtag ad mean do you know that what i you're mean you're getting paid right like sponsored but the, but if if everybody's dude like as opposed to someone just playing a game without so you could like tell oh this i will trust this more you know but like as i just think when you throw up enough chaff you get accustomed to chaff just like news now where we get accustomed to seeing some terrible news we get accustomed mm -hmm. to this stuff and so therefore you buy into it at some point and somebody can appear to be honest about something but it's like dude the money itself makes it not a normal transaction it, it changes things. Even subconsciously, things. like even if subconsciously. in the NDA it didn't say, it didn't say don't yeah, talk like Yeah, even if the NDA maybe... didn't say, yep. Yeah. Even if it said be brutally honest, uh, dude, if an NDA said be totally honest, that NDA immediately will cause somebody to be like, hey man, that was pretty cool. They said be totally honest. Yeah, so I'm gonna true. Get... Exactly, yeah, yeah. right? And nobody <laughs> yeah, yeah, thinks yeah. that. And oh, that's, that was I, cool of them. Yeah. We've sat <laughs> so for hours be... talking yeah, yeah, about this. Yeah, and I'm like, true. you don't understand yeah. how psychology, like I've written this shit. I can tell you. There are certain things people will write on purpose to cause somebody to bounce back. And, well, for example, we'll joke around. You guys tease me. Somebody will say, I hate this game. And I'll be like, yeah, it is great. I know. Because I don't want to push back on them disliking it. So I'll pretend like I didn't. I mean, it's become a joke. Sure. Everybody knows I'm doing it. But it's just like because that pushback is what causes a reaction. I, I fucking hate it. I don't know. For it's sure. just it's life. We're going to. Great just Shadow Legends. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, what's her name from Mortal Kombat? Somebody was also saying the more the AI stuff we were talking about. They were like anybody could have done the Mortal Kombat uh, voiceovers for this game, like uh, from what's Megan her name, Fox. Uh, Megan Fox. Yeah, those were terrible. <laughs> those were terrible. That was really bad. Yeah. Um, moving on from there, what do we got for good news? Uh, let's see. We talked about Konami and their developer. We talked about the patent, RT horror game. People freaking out. Um. Dragon's Dogma, Beyond Good and Evil. So, did mm -hmm. you see this? That Beyond Good and Evil, they leaked it on accident. So Ubisoft, like, it got onto the right? store. Yeah, it got it 4K, better graphics. They say I haven't seen any video of it yet, but it got leaked onto the store and then taken down. But some people have it, and I guess it was playable. Oh, or still shit. is playable. Yeah, yeah. So it'll I probably love be announced Beyond the game. Good and Evil, dude. It's one that of the great. Cool. And I was just listening yeah. to music this morning, and I was like. Fuck, the music is good in Beyond. It is. Very unique game. I don't think there's <gasps> any other game like Beyond Good and Evil. Dude, it's a it's, very unique game. There's a reason why everybody wants a sequel. Like, I don't know of yeah. anybody who does not like good. Unless you played it maybe in the last five or six years because the control's <laughs> rough. The control for yeah. that game feels ancient. You know, that's I played it back thing. in GameCube days. I, the only worry I have about the second one would be if, if, if it, like... They take away the uniqueness and it becomes like another open world. Open kinda. world generic. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. My but this, only, but this like one the, got yeah. leaked. People posted um, that they, I, I saw somebody posted a video on Twitter and YouTube, but when I win, it was already taken down and it looks like an accident. Probably going to be announced at the game awards. I feel dude, Xbox, maybe uh -huh. shadow dropped. Ubisoft, Xbox, all these companies, man, they got to figure out the leaking situation. It's ridiculous. Like whoever, <laughs> put that accidentally on the store and somebody said it wasn't an accident. I don't believe that that causes all kinds of issues. It's a disaster actually. Um, but dude, there needs to almost be a class where all these PR people go to a new class and refresh themselves. <laughs> and True. programmers yeah. are like refreshed on how to not put the wrong date in and let the game <laughs> go out. Like what is <laughs> like, like common sense uh, or insurance? We used to have to do CPR training every three years or whatever. It's like, dude, you're you've yeah, gone yeah. past your time. Let's get you back in to refresh on the basics of yeah. shit's getting out. It's getting leaked. It's getting like, I don't know. The idea of this going out is so it sort of sucks because I would have loved a shadow draw. I think that would have been awesome as like a yeah boom. Um, but I do think they'll pretend like it didn't happen on the game awards. They'll just yeah, be like, sure. we're, we're announcing a new, you know, it's just going to yeah, pretend yeah. like the people, no one knows. But I didn't get a chance yeah, to see it. GTA pr pretends like, uh, or Rockstar pretends like people don't know that GTA 6 is. They're like, oh, we're going to we're gonna show you the next uh, GTA or something. Right? Dragon's <laughs> like, Dogma pretended the, the March date hadn't been released. And we've yeah, seen yeah, the, yeah. the March date was leaked. it was on the leaked. Steam page. <laughs> it was on a Steam page. And they're like, yeah, blah, 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 this is brand new. Here's and the release this date. This the like, release date, yeah. Nobody yeah. really, I mean, in the end, release date's important, but the big things is what we saw. So, Beyond yeah. Good and Evil, 
I think a lot of people are going to like it. I think 4K improved. Again, anybody in chat, if you if you got to see the new game, I'd like to know, um, remembering that it's a, what is it, a, re a remake. It's probably mm -hmm. not going to look the best or whatever. But, dude, Beyond Good and Evil, I cannot wait. I will play that remake. I don't know if I'll review yeah, it. Yeah, we'll same. See, I, I love that game. It was one of my favorite games of the like growing up. And, uh, yeah, I it, also, also, another, oh, sorry, yeah. I was gonna just ask, what's her name? It's not April, right? Because that uh, April Shawnee. From... No, Shawnee is the uh, is what the the oh, fuck. I forgot. Like there was like this alien. That, that, there's some people that called her Shawnee, but I, I forgot her like uh, actual. For some name. reason, I can't remember her name. Isn't but it what Shawnee? Saying, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Shawnee doesn't sound right. But April doesn't sound right either. April, I think, is from Longest Journey. No, that's Chloe. Uh, yeah, there's some Jade. 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 Yeah, Jade. Duh. She even she's wearing yeah, yeah. green all the time. Yeah. But uh, what were you going to say? Sorry, I interrupted you. You were going to say something. No, else. I was just going to say that uh, other than that, another remake that's coming that I didn't know about was uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, which I'm pretty hyped yeah, about as we, well. I think somebody mentioned that yesterday in the di Oh, yeah. Because you said, dude, this cracked me up in the Discord. You're like, there's a re or there's a re-release for that, and the person was like, "You didn't know," and you're like, "Did you? Could you not tell from my response?" <laughs> of, I, no, nobody responds that way. <laughs> really? It's like a Christmas present, you know. I was like, "No, he obviously didn't know." It was so funny, man. I was I was reading it, going, "What the hell?" I, I think he would. You're accustomed, you know. Like, have you ever when somebody says, "Enjoy the movie," and it's the ticket person, you're like, "You too," and you realize they're not <laughs> yeah, going or to like the happy movie? birthday. Yeah, that's you too. exactly what happened. Is all he was trying to do is yeah, like yeah. he was excited, you were excited. But yeah, yeah, funny, I, you I know what know? The, the thing is. I was being like, I knew, I know, it. You I were knew being was, oh, you didn't know. Yeah, and I was yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I like doing of that. Of course, but, um... I didn't know it was awesome though because I was just I was doing something else. Maybe I was even in voice chat, but I was reading it going, What's going on over there? That was so funny. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm excited for that. So, what is that one? Because I've never, so it's Paper Mario, like Super Mario RP. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. You go. I asked the question and <laughs> continued to talk. Go for it. It's all good. No, what was your question? What was well, your... I was going to ask what is it, but I think you were answering. So go for it. Yeah, no, it's a, I think Paper Mario stemmed from Super Mario RPG where it does have that those like mechanics where mm -hmm. it's like turn based and you got to, you know, if you can hit the button as soon as you attack or hit the button to defend. And, uh, and Thousand Year Door was the one released on GameCube and I really liked it. Um, I don't know why they're not uh, remaking the N64 one, though. I love that one, too. But uh, I guess they're moving on to Thousand Year Door. Um, but hell yeah, dude. And, um, and I saw the, the side-by-sides. And obviously, it's the same exact game, but just looks way, way better. Like, changed a lot of textures and, and made it look better. So and it's one a, of those times. It's a little games. like RPG then in that way? Yeah, yeah. You have your, okay. you, you know, your crew, um, your team characters, and you got all the different attacks from different characters and spells and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, N64, you said you wish they were making that. What was the one on the N64? Or GameCube? You said one I of forgot. the two. There was a... Yeah, th this one is the GameCube one. The Paper mm. Mario in N64 was just Paper Mario, and it was awesome. Yeah, my childhood. I want... And I, I, I have no problem admitting this. I love Pokemon Snap. I really... Which I, one was that? I, I, that was oh, N64 yeah, yeah, yeah. as well, where you're taking the pictures yeah. and stuff. I taking dug that game. I would love to see a Pokemon Snap. I would play the hell there, out of that. There is a new one. Oh, I, on I've, I've checked it. Oh, then I haven't even heard of it. Yeah. It never popped up in... Well, I don't get Nintendo games, so it's very easy oh, for gotcha. me to miss one. Um, when yeah, was yeah. it made? You know? Um, It was like uh, two years ago, I think. Oh, Wait, yeah, Pokemon I for sure Snap wouldn't have known. Okay, Switch. yeah, because there was a full year where I wasn't even getting PR from them. It's I'm still only $60, now dollars, obviously. Oh, but of course it is, yeah. Is it a Pokemon, <laughs> uh, is a Pokemon Snap remake or is it a Pokemon Snap sequel? It, it's just a new one. It just says Pokemon <laughs> Snap. It was released on April 30, 2021. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I went. Maybe it's also because I played Pokemon Snap last year, so maybe my love for it is like rekindled oh, after that. Dude, they literally Japanese man. I love these guys. They literally called it New Pokemon Snap. That's what it's called. Of course they did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. New Pokemon Snap. Yeah, You're yeah. like, yeah, it is new, and it's Pokemon Snap. So I guess that's right. Wire Bug yeah. all over again. Yeah. Just the most generic name. Great Sword. Well, technically, yeah. Great Sword it really is bad. Um. Wannabe Dev just did it. He said, wait, you didn't know about the Pokemon Snap? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wannabe, you're yeah, in trouble. Yeah. Or I Next love how they voice named... chat, wannabes in deep shit. I'm just joking. <laughs> you're not, man. We had a good time. What were you going to say? Yeah.
the some Japanese people name games like Super Ultra, you know, or like, oh, yeah. or like Super Super, you know, I mean, obviously Super Mario. And they love those words, Ultra Mega. Yeah, and I like it in video games when you pull off a move, and they're like Super DMC. Ultra, yeah, sadistic, dude. <laughs> Super Ultra, un unbelievable yeah. fireball. Oh, yeah. and, or like, or when the translation's bad, and it'll be like Super Ultra, unlucky horseshoe, and you're like. Yeah. I'm thinking that translation wasn't perfect. You need to use chat GPT for that. Um, <laughs> new Pokemon Snap, it's a new game. That's exactly right. It's a new game. It's a new Pokemon Snap. I didn't know, so I'll definitely check it out. I think I'm a fan of the original. I might not be a fan of the new one. That does happen, too, where I think I'll be a fan, and then it feels... Does Do you know if this one's like the old... I mean, is it... Is it just sort of a cash-in? Because it, it's weird that it didn't pop up on any of my documentation. Or if it did, I, I, I must never have played the it. old one. I, mm. I didn't get it. I just saw some people play it, and you literally, you're on like a, you're on like this trail like rails. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, you're on, on rails, rails, and you just snap in pictures of Pokemon. Yeah. And dude. Then, yeah. Maybe I was just much more easily pleased when I was a kid. But that, that's, <laughs> Maybe. Like, dude. that doesn't sound in any way, I, shape, I never or form enjoyable. This game. Yeah. <laughs> That doesn't sound it, it, it. I I don't know why I liked it. I was also enamored with the um, N sixty four because I got it four years late. I got it when it was well into its death period, mm -hmm. and I was doing wrestling and all this stuff, and it didn't look great. But there was it was the first time I'd really experienced it. I played it a bunch, and I was ju diving into games that I would assume probably weren't great. But it was like at that time I was enamored with. Uh, there was a wrestling game that I liked, and then their version of Quake for the N sixty four. Do you remember that? Oh they yeah, Quake and or Doom sixty. Right, love it was just called. Wasn't it ends? Wasn't it Doom sixty four? Like talk about naming. There conventions. was Doom sixty four. Yeah, yeah, and there was. Uh, I think it was which Duke Nukem was it? Duke Nukem sixty four. Dude, I don't know, but Duke Nukem. Yeah, such Duke a, Nukem sixty four. I, I played yeah. that game a lot. Oh, yeah. that br brings up the other question. So, I don't know if. Google heard me talking about it, whatever, but it was weird. So yesterday in voice chat, I told you about the stuff going on in Discord where I'm like, I yeah. said something and it popped up later and it would never have been searched. And I was like, that's odd. So yesterday in voice chat, we dived into Wolfenstein. And um, we originally were talking about censoring and like what well, where Wolfenstein gets impacted. And I was like, well, is there a new Wolfenstein? What have you? Like, I haven't heard anything on Wolfenstein. No lie. Go to sleep. Wake up. And the first place I go uh, is a news aggregate and three stories on Wolfenstein that are older popped up. And I was like, I think the Amazon oh, device man. picked it up. But it was like, it was for sure. I thought I was like, that's impossible. There, it's, a, yeah. it's flatly impossible. Um, but so I went and looked. Not only is there a new Wolfenstein, but there was a LinkedIn job that was posted a bit ago for an MP uh, multiplayer developer. For Wolfenstein, and I was wondering if it was going to be that old. Remember the free Wolfenstein MP that sort of blew up beyond all belief and became incredibly popular? It was, really? uh, yeah, this was well before the um, anybody in chat, if you remember what I'm talking about, but there was a Wolfenstein armed something. I can't remember what it was called, but it was a Wolfenstein MP that was free. And it had, it was one of the first MP games to have objectives put the dynamite on a door. You still got to fight people while somebody's lighting the dynamite. You got to run back. Um, come on, chat. Somebody in chat's got to know the one I'm talking about. But anyway, you never played that one. You never no. played the original. I oh, just, okay. I loved uh, the the two new games before uh, Young Blood, and I I want more of that. Yeah, um, what was that? Wolfenstein. Um, it was very Quentin Tarantino, dude. Like Young, no, not Young Blood. Um, Enemy Territory for the multiplayer. Thank you, Enemy Territory. Oh, you never okay, played okay. multiple. Oh, dude, it was so good. It was. It sort of blossomed out into Enemy all the other, too. um, m most like bigger. Oh, MP it looks games. like Castle Wolfenstein. Yeah, and it was. I mean, it, it sort of exploded. It became like its own thing to the point to where other game developers took a lot of the ideas from that remember it's what's still the game available you on steam dude what's the game you play that turned into another game league of legends didn't wasn't it or oh, was it dota. wolfenstein yeah, it was, was from it was a custom league, game dota from world of became world of league. warcraft right spawned yeah, one became, of those yeah do uh, uh warcraft 3 uh made, like someone made a custom game mode dota which became yeah league of legends so and that's dota sort of how this happened mode. where it was a single player and then the character classes and stuff spawned enemy territory which then turned into its own thing.
So yeah, yeah, yeah that's and, cool. So you were talking about old Wolfenstein's New Order is one, right? There's New Order. Yeah, I loved both of them. Um, uh, I played them both back to back recently, uh, like last year. So there was uh, the new. There's the new and the new Colossus. I loved new, both of those. Yeah, and yeah. The vo I loved the scenes and the the the, the writing was awesome. I I enjoyed all of it. It felt like a Quentin Tarantino movie, and yeah. it had its really funny moments with the the black guy and the fat girl and stuff and and i loved uh that black girl as well um with with an awesome actress uh who, who's a very well-known actress with the with the afro hair she's which, really dope. which game was this which one wolfenstein new order i think she was also new in order. the first one um yeah. i forgot her name but she's Zel awesome. it wasn't uh, it, not zelda it wasn't zoe it wasn't the girl from avatar was it um she's a good I'll, actress uh, uh zoe something new colossus uh, let's do IMDb. She's she's really really uh, she's <coughs> she's in a lot of stuff, man. Uh, games and movies and stuff um, and shows. Uh, NC she says, the "Aren't these one? guys making Indiana Jones?" Yeah, and I think Indiana Jones. I've heard it's going to be at the Game Awards, so watch out for that. Uh, did you find her, the actress? I'm looking for her right now. Maybe she was only in the first one. Soul really Sleeper dope. says, "Let's not talk about Young Blood." I liked Young Blood. That's just the honest truth. I did didn't. You? Yeah, I didn't I love didn't it, play it really. but I enjoyed yeah. Young Blood. Yeah, I, there were some bugs with Young Blood though that I remember. Uh -huh. That I'm not saying that's why people didn't like it because it wasn't as good as the first two, but there there was definitely some issues with it. Are you still having trouble finding her? Is is it Brescia Webb? Ooh, I've never. Wait, heard no, of I swear to God, I swear to God, she's someone else. I'll find it. And she, she was in the Wolfensteins. I think the Wolfensteins are, uh, I, I like the idea, I like the series. What our discussion was, was can you do a game in Deborah Wilson, today, I think. Today's current environment. Deb, I'm, yeah. Um, I would like to see Wolfenstein continue the co-op, though, um, regardless of what characters you do. I, I sort of like the idea of a, a, a co-op, but I, 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 I like all the Wolfenstein games. I mean, Youngblood's the weakest of all of them, but I yeah, think Wolfenstein's sure. a fun world, man. It is a really fun world, and I love uh, when when there is some weird, very weird um, thing to get hung up on. I think uh, from the SJW side when they were like, "Oh, Nazis or whatever," and then Peter P. Hines was like, "Yeah, fuck Nazis. In this game, you kill Nazis." I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't yeah, remember dude. that, but that is true. Like, well, that yeah. was the discussion. And the, the game doesn't hold back, and there's like mm -hmm. the N word with the hard R and stuff. Uh, you, especially with the scene with your dad and like and like representing and actual racism. In uh, the one prior to Young Blood, to Young or, Blood, or prior, yeah, yeah. prior to Young, oh, when he yeah. makes you kill the dog, dude, and and he's like, oh, why are you hang hanging out with that n word girl and stuff like that, and it shows you like the hate hatred towards ra racism and a and a very, I think it's a very good way to do it, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that at all because that is how some people are, and they are bad people. You know what I mean? And you yeah, should, I don't remember any of that. Trying to evoke the sense of I, I remember them. something about killing a dog, yeah. but uh, what I remember is it was censored. This all came up because it, the the mustache was censored off of Hitler. Yeah, and then he was Germany, called right? the leader, and they changed the <laughs> insignia. And I was like, right. to me, changing the insignia, it's like I get that people. That's a that is a pretty powerful insignia. So changing it, whatever. But I was so stunned because I was like, you changed his name and his mustache, which to me is almost more noticeable that you change like it's like that dude is a bad guy in history you should be able to point to that guy and say bad guy bad guy i love the idea of a big bad guy that is uh what's the term uh unredeemable you don't need to try to it's like that guy's a yeah. bad guy and, and who is more unredeemable than hitler dude. yeah right there's very few and uh, you know genghis yeah. khan or a couple others that have slaughtered even more but it was interesting because um we were talking about where we were from and it was like united states uk Croatia, uh, one, one maybe for South Africa. No, somebody was traveling south. I can't remember, but there was four or five of us, and it was interesting because the censorship almost really didn't make sense of where things. You know, it's just it doesn't because like United States censors more sex than UK. UK censors more guns, so it it, it didn't make sense as a whole. It just but. doesn't make sense to me to censor any of that in a, in a game where, dude, if it's an evil person, let him let, let him be evil. Like he. Like they're evil for a reason. They can imagine an evil person being like, "Oh, I can't say this word because it'll upset some people." Like, oh, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Or, or like, I can't dress this way, or, 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 or have like a Nazi symbol. Like, what? 
What are you doing? Like you were, it would you were be cleaning. nice. Uh, and governments censor it, and governments' rules are late. So, like for example, we censor. We still have the PG thirteen sex thing, and so yeah. some we're past that now. Like for example, cable TV and everything show way worse than most games do when it comes to sex or whatever. And so, hearing somebody try to navigate that, of course, a game takes five years to develop. So they're developing for rules that are five years ago where maybe things change, but it's always, I mean, remember co hot coffee got cut from GTA. Hot coffee was the sex mini scene or whatever. What's GTA? Oh, what the hell? Uh, San Andreas got hot coffee cut from oh. it. Deborah Wilson is who you're talking about. Yeah. Deborah Wilson is in, is in Wolfenstein. And I love her. She, she's, she's a phenomenal actress and hmm. really, really funny. I don't remember much of Wolfenstein's stories. What I remember about Wolfenstein is good Overall good gunplay, cool weapons, and it was just bad guys that nobody tried to explain away. It was just like, these guys are bad guys, you're, yeah. you're the good guy, let's go for it. Um, Duke, or not Duke Nukem, but Wolfenstein and a couple others have sort of tried to toe the line, or not toe the line, sorry, sort of tried to be more acceptable in some ways. And when you look at some of the things that they're displaying, it's like, if you're going to go against you know the Nazis, just do it. Just, just do it, do, dude. Do it guys, to its full extent. Don't be like Call of Duty guys. and like hide the 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 the, the swastika. Are you kidding me? Well, I, I, see, yeah, I, I don't know. I sort of like we talked about that with the with Wolfenstein, and I was like, I sort of, I sort of get that. Well, I'll tell you this: we talked about it because we talked about three things that were changed: his name, the mustache, and the insignia. And I was like, I sort of get why the insignia was changed, but I, I was confused by the mustache. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I have a beard. Maybe I was. It's like. Maybe what, I feel is... mustached ist or something. I don't know what it was. Like, is this is this symbol? I don't know. I, I can't talk, speak to it. Like, obviously, I don't know people's experiences. And, like, maybe some people can look at a symbol and be like, oh, my God, like, I'm so hurt by it or something. Obviously, sure. But I, but I feel like that goes to the strength of the game of, like, making you... Well, some games had you know, it, you know, to and, it. Uh, and Wolfenstein here had it. This was, again, yeah, just in some in nations Germany. where, yeah, 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 where they were yeah, yeah. genuine, you know, not genuinely, everybody was genuinely impacted by it, but I would say direct, you know, it was like this huge thing. And it's always been a thing there. We yeah. talked to Reg who has to get games in other places. Um, James yeah. D. By the way, Debra, sorry, real quick. Debra Wilson was in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. She was the, she was. I uh, do Sierra love it that somehow, you know, I'm going to read a super chat. I don't know. I'm giving off a tell. Because every time I try to read a super chat is when you interrupt. You never interrupt any other time. So somehow I <laughs> must I? be like, yes, I, it, it's so I interrupt all the time. So you you are generally uh, less interruptive. But I've noticed every time I get ready, you're like, ah, and there's there's a thing. It's like, God damn it. <laughs> go every it, time. James D, five dollar <laughs> super chat. Man, what a long week. I was jonesing hard for another hit of ACG BDG podcast. I don't know what the BGD stands for. Or BDG. I don't even want to know. Thanks for the awesome content. Best right. best dick gaming, big dick, big best dick damn game. gaming. Oh, best okay. damn gaming. Oh, is that what he's saying? Might be. Um, the only adult game I played was BMX Triple X. Yeah, did you play that one? Triple uh, X no, BMX. Uh, it was Dave Mira, I think, did that. It was a adult BMX game, what? of all things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It it wasn't like Outlaw Golf either. It was a very just a very odd situation. It was Dave oh Mira's Triple X BMX. I think. I want to look at gameplay about uh, on that. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Genuinely not <laughs> a good game. Yeah, genuinely not a good game. That is so funny. You just. What else do we got? Anything amazing and cool happening in your life? Um, Any like anything awesome amazing. events? Um. Oh, I uh, uh, in December I'm gonna be uh, unavailable in December twelve to fourteen or something. Mm. I don't know if there's a Friday in there. I think there is. Um, December or Wednesday. 12th. There's gonna. I mean, there there's enough days. Pretty much something. has to be at least. One or day. no, fourteen to seventeen. I don't know something like that because I am um, for I'm a sound engineer for a festival, so I'm gonna be meeting. Uh, Metallica and and Dead Mouse and uh, and uh, and going and help them set up the music. Go go and help them set up and all that stuff and uh, have access to the artist lounge and backstage and stuff. Pretty excited. Uh, Want to sit down with Dead Mouse, but no, I don't know. Um, they have a helipad there. They bring artists with a helicopter or some shit. But yeah, Metallica they're not going to worry about. 
they're not going to worry about like driving a limo. They'll just ha- lay in the helicopter with everybody inside, yeah. not have to worry about. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, they there's a helipad and and stuff. But uh, no, I uh, I'm pretty excited about that because it's like a, a cool gig. I and uh, and I got to like. If you do a good yeah, job, can you do me a favor? Contact the guys yeah. at GDC who do all their videos and help them because every GDC ever has audio and video issues, and I feel bad for <laughs> okay. the devs. They're like, can we? I don't know if you remember, but Randy Pitchford got in yeah. trouble. Because it went bad during his. And he's like, can we get, you know, he sort of got frustrated and it got out. uh, Because a Mm -hmm. lot of devs are very good about it. But I'm going to tell you right now, if your entire job was to do audio video and your entire website was about audio video and developers, you better get your shit right. And it's not. Every time you you listen to a GDC video, there's audio issues. They can't get a movie playing on their tablet. Their mic doesn't work. It's the other mic from across. And you're like, who's running this? And it's been... Years. Yeah. It's not one year. We had it, and I went four years ago, five five years ago, and it was still having issues. It's just like so. You can go help them. Um, are okay. you gonna? I'll try to you, make a good job. What's yeah, up? do a good job, and then use that on your resume, and be like, dude, <laughs> yeah. I'd like to fix your audio because I'm yeah, telling I just, you, I just it's did bad. Metallica's audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah be I like, know. dude, I I, no. <laughs> I hope you know Kurt Emmett sound like he could play the guitar well. When it comes to those stars, yeah. who who do you want to meet the most? Uh, maybe that mouse because this guy Joel Zimmerman, um, like uh, I I really like his ideas about a lot of things. Um, ever you since mean like back in the day, for creating music or for the tech, like side? he's he's just all around like a guy that would be awesome to chat with because he's into gaming, he's into like uh software and tech and coding, and he's always trying to innovate his shows, and he uses Unreal Engine to like produce stuff and. And, uh, you know, he's very knowledgeable about like music and he has kind of similar uh, opinions and views that I do about about music. I'm not talking about any political stuff, but um, so that's someone I would love to just sit down and talk with. So, you know, he's I'm a huge fan of his. Um, You're being asked and... what nationality you are, if you don't mind me asking. Scott says, oh, I'm Syrian. I'm okay. Syrian. Yeah, he says what yeah, if yeah. you don't mind me asking. Um, I'm Syrian. I lived in Canada for like 11 years or something. Do you miss? Do you ever wake up and miss Canada, or are you like fuck no. loose, man? I don't want to live no, there. No, not really, dude. Because, 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 really? uh, not. I mean, maybe a little bit, but like, first of all, it snowed like eight eight months of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, it, there was there was like restaurants here are just miles better than restaurants back there. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, uh, and also, miles. I remember you were having employment issues trying to get whatever. Oh, you know, dude, like I was, trying to get I was lined freelancing up. a lot yeah. and COVID and 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 just staying at home. And and it felt like to me, um, I, at least where I was, there wasn't like a huge sense of community. Mm-hmm. I think it was like a whole mishmash of like people going to school and just locals and stuff. And uh, and it's nice. I like the feeling of community more here. Um, at least at least where I was, there wasn't like it was just like yeah, you work, you stay at home. Most of my interactions with people by the end of it, I mean, my college years were awesome and fun and stuff but um after that a few years after that it just like kind of dwindled and dude it just felt like when you're in a college my life was online anyway you know like i stayed at home and just yeah so yeah when you're in a college town it sucks because i lived in a college town for 20 years yeah i was in a college town you're either in college or you're not in college but something's already wrapped around because it's a college town so it's like every finance every schedule companies have it's all based around that and if you're not, and I don't give a shit about college sports, so it was like it, it was sort of lost. It was a, a lot of it just didn't feel like a community, like you said. And then you move yeah. somewhere where there is, even if it's a smaller one, it's unfortunately gossipy or whatever. It's like it's a community. It, it does feel different. Um, but you don't For live sure. in a small place, so no, I, no, I, big, I, I'm, big city. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. our city's a hundred k, and that's considered pretty big. You know, yeah, Portland obviously, which is bigger. But I'm assuming where you live is my, like my city is. 7.7 million um but that was 2018 i'm guessing it's a bit more but uh the cool thing about my city fuck. is that like 80 percent is a like people around their 30s 70 to 80 percent oh cool cool yeah so they're sort of aligned with you yeah dude i grew up in a town 2500 so it's like the idea of a million anything yeah. is mind-blowing to me like that's just yeah. nuts i wouldn't even <laughs> want to know what our city yeah. would be like if there were 7.5. I can't even handle the 100,000 that are here. So, like, I would yeah. just walk outside with my hands out, spinning in a circle, trying to punch people. I would be so uncomfortable. But, I mean, I would love the stuff you could do. I think that's the best part about a big city is, you know, if you dude, want the traffic something. Sucks yeah, traffic, dude, it never does oh, yeah. suck. Come on. 
it sucks Cause, here because gas we, is cheap here mm-hmm. and they oh, are so like people are like cruising around they, i really want them to increase the gas prices i know it's crazy to say but i, I need less cars on the road but um they yeah. are implementing like they're making a whole new subway system and all that stuff i don't know if people will use it because might as well just drive cars here but mm-hmm. um dude just getting back home from work is uh, you know it sucks ass yeah yeah. yeah, we have sports games too on Sundays and Saturday or Saturdays, sorry. And so you have like we had the Civil War here, which was the two biggest like football teams in our state come together to play their one game a year. So your traffic's mm-hmm. all terrible. And I'm just, the entire time I'm like, let's buy stuff the week prior so I don't have to go out because it's just tra- you know wall to wall, which other people are accustomed to. I talked to somebody from New York and they're like, what are you talking? You know, that's not you know that's God, no what's big New deal. York's population? I don't know, approximately. New York City that many too many whatever the number is million. yeah 8.5 terrible. million around there yeah terrible crazy I, yeah i i love the idea of being outside <laughs> and able to get in quick so if you want something because i lived in places mm. where you could not get almost anything so if i wanted a board game i had to travel two hours to a store that sold board games we didn't even have board games in my store or in my town so that kind of stuff i would love you know to go like yeah, you like, want to go that... look at a shop yeah, that's one thing I love here is there's so many different like there's so many sub communities where mm-hmm. you can find like, you know, uh, D- a lot of D&D groups, uh, many nerds. There's a we have like a, a a really, really cool studio that we can rent that has like um, um, one of the best like mixers in the world, like only like, you know what I mean? And then there's like a, there's like a whole dude, there's a whole uh, location, like a mini city of weeb stuff like just anime and yeah, samurai exactly. shit because <laughs> exactly. there's a lot of weebs here um gaming community here is is, is huge for sure like uh, people love games here and and building pcs and doing all that stuff yeah because you got um, your uh, pc g- from a local customer yeah there's right? the local uh like like um local game stores uh, still thrive um and and i like i like yeah like i built my pc from a store and I don't have to RMA stuff. I can just go there and, and, and switch out parts that are not working. And um, yeah. powder cake says something. He says, Carrick played board games with a cedar plank. You are not joking. So listen to this. The Is first board game Ed I ever Nettie? got, the first yeah. ga- board game I ever got was not a board game. It was the files that we had got on an Apple II drive to print out. And we printed it out on paper and cut the paper and played card games with paper printed out with the words on That's it. We, didn't even, we, did, we had Monopoly, obviously. But any, yeah, yeah. any like mage or whatever we or or magic, sorry, we would print out on a piece of paper and have the name and the rules written yeah. out on it. We didn't even have pictures or that. anything. Yeah, it That's was like amazing. So the idea of being able to play, uh, I still remember going to a place where you could drive somewhere quickly and buy something. Yeah, was like oh, but then I spent too much too. I mean, you got to like all of it is based around commercial. Um, your stuff is you know, like culture and and like music and stuff. That's awesome, but that requires mm-hmm. a bigger town than I'm in. You know, we have like Portland, which is huge for that, but it's also huge for other problems too. It's sort of a shithole. Um, Bobby <laughs> Hawk says yeah. it is. It's 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 terrifying. Um, ACG YouTube or Ubisoft just released a 20th year anniversary picture thingy for Beyond Good and Evil. Thank you for describing okay. that in depth. A picture thingy. I don't Ubisoft. know what that means. Let me see There's a Twitter. picture thingy. I'm assuming maybe he means uh, art, like uh, old old art. Yeah. Old Happy 20th Beyond Good and Evil. We're excited to talk more about the special edition soon. Stay tuned. Soon, as in Game Awards? Probably. Everything will be at the Game Awards, probably. Everything, even GTA and Red Dead 3. No. Oh, Red Dead 3? Can you imagine what the world would do if, like, they were already working on a Red Dead? They're all already? Red Dead. And they had a trailer. Yeah. The world would explode. That's the I, thing. I, I th- Let's go with yeah. game trailers. Do you think? Go ahead. Sure. And then I want to ask what you think will be there. But what were you saying? That's one of the things that I think will be there is the Elden Ring DLC. And I'm not, I don't think it'll be shadow dropped. Maybe more realistically, February or something, but hopefully it'll be shadow dropped. But no, it won't. But I think that uh, a release date will be shown on, on, on Game Awards. You mean you, we don't know the date then for that? We don't all? know the date for Shadow of the Ring DLCs. Yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. That would be ridiculous. Here's a trailer available now. Just, yeah, or they have amazing. the date to screw with people and it's that day. You're like, ah, it's about, yeah. wait, what? That's today. That would be sweet. 
Um, yeah. So do we have any data? Have they done preview? I haven't seen a preview event even for the DLC. I, I, all I know, they, they've just shown a picture and um, I think it's the land of reeds because it's literally a land filled with a bunch of reeds, which is there like you the go. Samurai probably, location. <laughs> probably the yeah. land of reeds then. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. That, that would be cool to see a shadow draw. I mean, Game Awards, December what? 7th, right? So December yeah. 7th. Um, you got one Ubisoft game. You've got uh, what's going on in December. You've got um, Rogue Trader. You have oh, hell yeah. uh, Avatar. Mm -hmm. You don't have a lot in December. So no. it would be pretty cool if they were like, spend your Christmas in the Land of Reeds. Oh man! And just drop it. Can you imagine that? That would be sweet. What? And apparently, uh, we have had some information where they said it's gonna be. I mean, it took two years, and they said it's gonna be a substantially large. That is exactly um, the question I was getting ready to ask: yeah. Is what's the size <laughs> of this? Do does anybody big. know the size? Big, big, big. Mm. We don't know how big. I'm thinking it's about like maybe like a couple of regions size from the from the from uh, the main game. Has from ever somehow merge their DLC into changing the base game a la Cyberpunk 2.0? I think so. Uh, not in that sense where... Because Cyberpunk 2.0 to me is like... It was a repair. Good, uh, yeah. A repair yeah. Mo mostly. But um, they have like introduced, uh, I think, new weapons and stuff like that that obviously can be used in the in the main game, right? Rodica says, Karika, are you going to check out the Stargate game next month? Oh, is it, is it coming out? The Commandos-like game? Uh, oh no way! I well, love Stargate. my look of puzzle puzzlement should probably uh, indicate timekeepers. Huh? Let's see here. When is it coming out? Twelfth of December. Oh my! I really hope it's good, man. Stargate, please be good. You know what happens a lot with me? We'll be talking about a game yeah. or what have you, and I will friggin' go to my email, and during the podcast, they'll say, uh. We want to give you a key or blah, blah, blah. Can you respond at, by by five our time? And it's always East Coast and we're never out by that time or we're rarely yeah. out. And I'll check email and be like, oh, it happens on Fridays a lot. So I have to occasionally right. open email and go, am I missing anything? I haven't heard anything about that. I don't know. I'll do a search. It, they may have pinged me on it. So it's a commando style Stargate game. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a Desperados, whatever you, you call those games. Strategic okay. to tactical. So then would you say that it bothers you that we haven't heard anything about it from anybody? It would be nice to have some PR if they wanted to do well. Yeah, I, I feel like it's not going to do that well. Um, I don't know what the developer developed before. Gladius, Relics of War. I mean, that was very positive, well-received. Yeah, Gladius Strategic was well-received. Command, Starship Troopers. Oh, that was also good. Um, Starship wow, Troopers. Okay. They have a good... Thank you. That's a game I might check out then. Start. Oh, and then somebody said, "Are you guys gonna check out day uh, the day before?" Oh God, dude! I think that's a scam. Still, I don't believe it. I feel like they're gonna delay it again, or it's gonna come out and it's gonna be nothing like the trailers because they they copied one too many trailers. <laughs> like they copied, I think like three trailers already. Like where they tr they copied the Last of Us trailer with its scenes, and they copied mm -hmm. literally Division. they copied the GTA trailer with the same yeah. words and the same narrator, dude. <laughs> so if you think it's a scam, my question is, what are they asking for pre-orders? What I would don't be know. the scam? Because I, so. I don't think they're asking for pre-order. Okay, I could be wrong. If they're asking for pre-orders, it's a scam then, you know, to, to um, like... It's going to release an early access. So that's a thing. Is it viable now, though? Because if it's not, oh, what's it's not. the... What, so what's the scam? I, don't I mean, know. I know what you mean. I as in those are scary, like the copying. But what do you think w is their ultimate? What's You're right. Their ultimate no, if goal? I think about it more, I just it just seemed sus to me the way they were it's presenting very, the game. It's beyond sus. I mean, they copied Division when it first came out. They've cop they copied everything. I'm just trying to yeah. figure out what the a scam usually requires the long play to come out financially successful. And I haven't seen any the long con, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like what are we doing to like, what are we, they've at... Oh, uh, so bit Lyra says they've asked for investor money. Okay. There's, I guess there's that, but I mean, who's the investor? Yeah, who is not the people? Investor? Is it, it like must public? be companies then? Oh yeah. Who is making this? It's a developer called fantastic who made, the Wild Eight. Oh, the Wild Eight wasn't that bad. Um, 
Radiant One. Oh, that I, was it. Prop I think Knight. they have a history, or not a history of, but I think they have one game they abandoned, but they're not the only ones. Right. Like, yeah. You know. I mean, Double Fine abandoned a game. Insomniac abandoned the VR game. Insomniac Dude, uh, had two, I think. Go ahead. What was it? It's just, it's just, you know what? It's kind of cute. Um, this game, like when I look at it, it kind of gives me nostalgia for the days where, like, the, you know, remember when the the whole Daisy shit came out and there was like twenty different Daisies coming out? It gives me those vibes again, man. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> I miss those. It'll days. be cool to see what it is, no matter what. But yeah. it'll also be really interesting to look at the financials of it all, and if it is a scam, what, like what they're getting out of it investor i need to look up what the investor part means because maybe they're going to business investors and the entire scam is to scam it out of businesses and if that's true man those guys like it's way worse than a consumer scam like if you're coming yeah. businesses you know they've got the money for lawyers and so, so it's like who's if you borrow from a bank you know what are they going to do but i also don't know where they're based maybe they're based in a place where you know they no no extradition law and shit that's true where they don't have to worry about it um New York looks really cool. Tommy Talerco. I don't know. What, though. Tommy Talerco doing the audio or something. Somebody's powder keg says Tommy Talerco. Tommy Talerco is the guy who did uh, Advent Rising. He's done a bunch of soundtracks. Seen known scammer now or something. I can never tell. Oh, dude, dude you remind me. I do want to mention this. I've I I haven't played this game yet, but I listened to the OST mm -hmm. and it is one of the best OSTs I've ever listened to, and it's for Off World Trading Company. It's an RTS I own game. Off World Trading Company. Yeah, it's I own about that like game. it's a capitalism uh, strategy RTS game. Uh, the uh, Christopher Tin. Um, it, it's an amazing OST. Were like, you just randomly it playing it and noticed how good it was? Uh, no, my friend uh, recommended because he 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 has good taste in music and stuff, and he's like, dude, you gotta because he loves Justin Bell and stuff, and mm -hmm. and we have like similar taste, and he's like, you you gotta you gotta check this out, and I I just played it, and I was like, oh, I was blown away. It's really really good OST. I highly recommend it. Yeah. I'll check it out because I own that game. I've uh, I, mm -hmm. I remember playing it. I don't even know if the sound was on. I I think I just checked to verify it, it ran, and it looked mm -hmm. very cool. And then I I don't think I got a chance to return to it. Yeah, I, yeah, I I never played it, but it sounds cool. Like the is concept it, of it. Uh, synth? Like, is it? Like, is that the mu What's the music style? Uh, yeah, it's synthy, spacey, but very uh, a lot of unique stuff to it. A lot, a lot of cool, cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get um. Well, I've been asked to get a composer on for a big game, which will be fun. Once mm -hmm. I figure out the timing, it shouldn't be too long. A couple weeks, but um, it's awesome. The it sounds so weird, but like a lot of times I'll love the vocals in a song in a game, but it's almost always the ambient synth stuff that I end up vibing with. Almost every time I find out, like it, whether it be Justin or or some, well, Austin doesn't always write that. I like his, but for a lot of people, I'll listen to something. I'll be like, this is great music. This is like big, and I like it, but I'll never listen to it again, even if I love it for that game. But it, I find that games like this, where it's like just, you know, like or Justin stuff or sci-fi stuff in particular, I'll just throw it up on YouTube in the background, the main music, you know, the the musical tracks. Yeah, exactly. And just yeah, play it. Yeah, that's the same way here. It's like ambient synth stuff. Yeah, and it just really seems nice to movies. vibe with me more than, I mean, I, I definitely like the other the the other bits that I get. Um, I was trying to think like Final Fantasy, I've liked some of their soundtracks, but I don't think I would listen to them. Yeah, Oops. like Soken, I I love it. Like it's it hypes me up oh, for so boss I fights know. and stuff, mm -hmm. but I would never listen to it like <laughs> normally. You know what I mean? Like just yeah, yeah I would say uh, Far Cry Five's I, it, bluegrass is definitely not what it is. I don't know what the term of what Far Cry Five's is, but I love that music. But I've tried listening to it. Other than the main track and one or two, I I can't listen to it as easily. I don't know what it is. Also, do you have a problem listening to uh? We're, this popped up in chat. Listening to vocal music when you're reading. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or if I'm like uh, reading something, reading an article or studying something, yeah, I can't listen to anything with vocals or anything that has too much presence. Um, you know, I'd, I'd want something more ambient. Diablo 4 soundtrack is good for that, too. Yeah. Diablo 4's is? What's Diablo yeah. 4's soundtrack? Is it? I thought Diablo 4's was more bombastic. Like, or like, is it? Um, there's a lot of like dark uh, ambient uh, fantasy, dark fantasy type. Uh, uh, kind of what do you call it? Not Victorian. It's like um, with that with that instrument. That's kind of like um, you know the the Tristram kind of track. Like those those types of I don't know what you call them, but the but the but they're really cool. 
No. Do you know who does that? Who does the soundtrack for Diablo? I do know that Diablo soundtrack and vocals got some pretty big kudos from everybody in the Discord. Like the, the Ted voiceovers. Reedy and Leo Kaliski. Don't know those names. Don't know who they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Bone says Subnautica's OST is glorious. I mean, there's a lot of games where their OSTs are awesome in the game, but I wouldn't listen to them out. And then there's some where I maybe don't like them in the game. Maybe it's because they're not dynamic enough, but I'll listen to them outside of it. Like Outcast. For sure. Or uh, out, Outcast? Yeah, Outcast is that way for me. Um, What else we got? Anything else you can think of? Anything else big and questions and amazing stuff? In life? Or... I think we've already hit all the questions, man. I think. I got the questions there. Mm. I didn't ask this time in um, Patreon. I asked in the Discord. Because uh, I've missed Discords twice. One time because I couldn't read the damn thing, so I had to change the color of everybody. <clears throat> Um, let me verify. CDPR, Zombie, MK Bandit says, seriously, what are the odds that Skull and Bones finally sticks to its release date? That's a question. Oh my god, I forgot this game is coming out, dude. Oh, I don't no. care. That's the answer. Yeah, I mean, neither. Yeah, that's one game that I do, that I'm so far past carrying that I don't even, you know, I'm sure some people would want it to be torn into or whatever, and maybe I'll sure. review it, but it just feels like whatever it is is so lost on me. I don't even... Yeah, and nothing I've, about it interests me. Right, right. It's just, it doesn't... I don't know. Everything I've seen, it, it doesn't even look like a game. I mean, it yeah. does, but it doesn't look like something I would be interested in for longer than like 15 minutes. I mean, it might... Yeah. I could be wrong. Wouldn't that be awesome? Shadow drop it like during amazing. the Game Awards and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're just yeah, like, oh yeah. my God, this game is a blast. It'll never happen. <laughs> ever. Hey, speaking of that, uh, before yeah. we'll, we'll wrap it up with Ark. Did you try out the new Ark? Whatever this new remake or whatever no, it is? No, but I've been, I've been hearing people disappointed with it. Oh, maybe because really? of performance issues, right? Damn. Yeah, Survival that's too ascended. bad. The, yeah, yeah, because Denovan plays it and a couple others play a bunch of really, but Ark's always had those perf issues every time like yeah, it does i think it, it's know. mostly perform game crashes constantly um, really yeah i think i think it's those issues i i don't see anything about yeah still unoptimized i don't think i see anything about the game itself there is a a lot of positive reviews as well but it's currently on at mixed right now love the games two dollar super chat spotify says i listened to ten thousand minutes to you nerds yeah, I oh, think damn. Doby Joe is still ahead at like 12,000 minutes. We were figuring it out. It's like 44 yeah. episodes. Yeah. And prior to yeah. doing bi you know, the twice a week, we're just doing the one week. He's watched a lot. Like that, that ain't, that's insane. That's insane amount of hours. Yeah. Um, I haven't even looked. I don't think I have a Spotify account for listening. I think I have a Spotify account for the podcast. But yeah, I um I don't know if I did. I canceled my account. I used to pay for it, but now I just pay for YouTube because I get like the ad stuff, not like no ads. I get uh the ability to turn it turn off my phone and still listen. And I get the ability to use YouTube music, which I really I like more because there's like literally everything on YouTube music, like everything I could ever want. Yeah. What it, what is the book what's the bonus of paying on Spotify? Um, you don't get ads, right? Hmm. I think that's I, the biggest thing. I haven't turned on Spotify to listen to something in forever. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joe Rogan occasionally, I, I used to listen to his podcast. He had one guest I really liked and I can't remember the last time. I don't even Post know. Post Malone is the last one I... Yeah, Post Malone's... Kind of... Dude, I track... Just not because he's a gamer. Uh, I actually remember I told you I thought Post Malone meant after... Malone left the NBA post Malone, like after, post and I didn't know he was a rapper. <laughs> so I was hearing post Malone yeah. and I was like, you mean like, uh, these new players? Like, what are you talking about? I never heard of him. And then I yeah. started, I heard him on the radio and was like, or on the, uh, on YouTube. And I was like, who is this guy? He's awesome. Tracked him. I tracked yeah. him on everything. I track him and the weekend though. The weekend doesn't do a lot of interviews, but I mean, I, I liked his music popping up, but yeah, post Malone's got really good music. He seems like a genuinely really fun like just, just an really nice. He's also really insanely nice respectful, man. When you hear yeah. him, when he answers a question, okay, be like, sir. "No, sir." Yeah. Yes, and I'm. I know yeah. that sounds so, especially in today's day and age, people. What I, I absolutely love when he talks to somebody. He's like, "No, sir," and no, sir. it's very yeah, honest. Yeah, no, I have not done that. <laughs> yeah, so, and I'll be like, "Dude, yeah. that's a." That's very a sweet. nice to fans. Yeah, I love it when he's like, I, uh, "Hot yeah. Wings." Asked him, the guy Sean was like have you noticed anything at your house? And he's like, well, we have aliens. And then by the time he got done with the story, it wasn't aliens, but it was so him 
to just be like, well, yeah. I saw an alien or I saw a UFO. And then by the time he gets done, you're like, I was probably ball lightning. <laughs> it was just crazy. Oh, dude, what he, uh, he showed up on, I know you don't like Kill Tony, but he showed up on Kill Tony as a guest. And usually like um, they rag on the bad, um, the bad stand-up comedians that do like mm -hmm. a bad minute or whatever. And they kind of like roast and whatever. Uh, and Post Malone would always be like, it's okay, man. You'll, you'll get it next time. All right. You got this. I know you're doing shit. And, like he'd be like really nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah I, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't partake of it at all. <laughs> like I just, I, there's no group in the world I would want to fucking jump kick more than that, that group of people. Yeah. Like I just, yeah, when yeah. it comes up, even on a YouTube short, I'm like nye, 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 as quick as possible. Like I'll be <laughs> laying back, you know, or on the PC or whatever, and I'll just be like, yeah, that's gone. I, admittedly, it's just not my thing. I mean, we all know with some no, comedians. for sure. And there's a lot of things um, that that they. Uh, they spout that I think is stupid, like the anti-vax stuff and shit. So, you know, there's oh, a lot of stuff. Oh, I didn't even know that. Um, Joshua says, is your birthday actually 1228? Yes, it is. 1228. Three days after Christmas. Fucking sucks. Three days. Ah, 1228. I mean, yeah, it's three days. So it's like, you know, you don't celebrate it most of the time. You do your Christmas shit. It's and like then my you get birthday through. is on Thanksgiving. Yeah, see, that's... Oh, yeah, right. Or or is it on the day... We did it on I don't Wednesday. know, 22nd. Yeah, I, Wednesday was my birthday. So Thursdays for for us is Thanksgiving. So it's the day. Okay, after. so a day before. But yeah, you're not. Or, sorry, yeah, it's a day before. Yeah, you're. It's just whenever you're around one of those big holidays, you don't really celebrate. It's no big deal though. Uh, dude you know wore what a suit and tie to school his oh, entire sure. life. Oregon Fresh says, "What's that? Post yeah. Malone? Is that who's talking about?" Wore no, no, I miss. Oh, dude wore a suit and tie to school. Yeah, is he talking I about guess. Post Malone or Tony? Wait, no, yeah, Post Malone. <laughs> no, Post Malone. Sure. Anyway, what are yeah. we saying? <laughs> um i uh i miss the like so now like games release on february most games and mm -hmm. summer is getting a lot but back in the day november was like the big thing so like my birthday would be around all these new new game releases yeah yeah it was <laughs> always awesome that. yours is unfortunately in the middle of the week mine many times drops on i guess mine would drop on a friday or a thursday but it is well, cool. i don't know how it changes from year to year yeah yeah it's uh, for Thanksgiving, it's always on the last Thursday, so it changes it regardless. It's which is also weird. It's like just mm. pick a thing, but instead just pick they, a date. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you know how it is. Every day I wake up. There's a up, lot of holidays in America. It's where it's exactly like, oh, where the, I was going. The second was, Sunday, the first. Dude, Sunday, yeah. every day I wake up, they're like, "Today is Beanie Awareness Day," and I'm like, "The fuck? Yeah. What? Like, it's so <laughs> oh, crazy." God. All these months and days to keep track of, and Women Appreciation Day, and it, something it's, else. Oh, and, it's so far beyond that. It's like, I'm yeah. not lying, there is probably a Bermuda shorts day in, in America because somebody <laughs> yeah, just yeah. wants to wear Bermuda. It, it is so crazy. Yeah. So, it, I mean, Short just like clothing. Yeah. Day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. I'm 1228, uh, double lot. And growing up, you always knew it was Christmas gifts. Hello. They don't, don't get me wrong. I'm grateful. Yeah. I mean, I got all my Christmas gifts rewrapped. Well, most of them weren't rewrapped. They were still. Oh, yeah. Christmas people presents. born on 2000 would be like, oh, I'm born in 00, like 122800. It's pretty interesting. Dude. It's a cool, cool number. Only 23 years old, man. I was already out of Seven school. Old. I was already, man, I was deep in my work, my work life when he was born, when his parents were getting it on. I could have been I, the guy telling his parents to move along and they're in the back of a car somewhere. So I was weird to meet those. Yeah. How old were you? Double, double O. You were. I, I was six years old. Six years old. Oh yeah. That's Game. ridiculous. Might as well not even been born. That's, <laughs> playing that's a nuts. playing on my ps1 i think ps1 was your first system a uh, first system well well my own i don't think i like had a system well oh your dad and 64 yeah my first system i played on is a 3do and i still remember playing gex the gecko when i was like one years old or <sighs> one year old and then i um and then the second one was uh, snes and then n64 and then I remember I was in school and my mom uh, surprised me and she came with like a big box and it was a PlayStation 1 with like Crash Bandicoot. Here's how another way we knew somebody was rich where I lived. They had a 3DO mm. or a Neo Geo. <laughs> and those were even different. 3DO was mid-class. You're doing really well. Neo Geo was your parents' own half of the town. That thing I think was 12... <laughs> 800 or 1200 for the console and 300 God per damn. cartridge. That shit was ridiculous. And we had one I mean, kid even and all like, of school had one. Back in the day, my dad wasn't, he wasn't making 
money that he much just money liked was, games um he just uh yeah and he was super into tech and games and stuff so yeah um soulskeeper says have my... many games on it yeah what were you saying we just you... didn't have many games on it either. Like we had Gex yeah. the Gecko and like another like twin stick shooter. Did you ever yeah. do uh on the Neo Geo? Did you ever do like Art of Fighting or uh Fatal on 3DO, Fury? Is there, uh, sorry, sorry, yeah, on three uh, on three DO. Did you ever what was do Fatal Fury? Fatal Fury was also a two D. Um, it was a two D fighter, but it was at that time only three DO and Neo Geo and a couple others were able to deliver like really good graphics. So I was just wondering if you had a comparison to like a There's Genesis. There's a subreddit that's R3DO. Oh, There's I'm sure there is. For everything. There's a subreddit Fatal for Fury. everything. Oh, is that like a fighting game? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. it was SNK, okay. I believe, at the time. They were, and Neo Geo had the arcade perfect ones because it was an okay. arcade. The Neo Geo was quite literally the arcade in a... Okay, it, and a you, smaller... Yeah, they just took it out of the cabinets and sold people. <laughs> and that's why it was so expensive. Um, I think the one I'm talking about is Commander Keen. Commander Keen. Ooh, Commander Keen's ancient. Wait, no, not Commander Keen. That's a different one. Um, wait. Um, let me. Why check. you look it up? I'm reading this. Soulkeeper yeah. says, "My second child's expected to come early Jan. I'm praying to the elder gods we skip December. Congratulations for having sex at least twice. Good for you, man. Second child." Yeah, I've tried to decide oh. if I want to, like, what I want to do. Do I want to adopt a child or just get another dog? You know, equal. Just joking. I was going to get mad. <laughs> oh, I what had you? Mad Dog McCree. Oh, Mad Dog one. McCree. Yeah, that was ace. Yeah, Gex, I, remember that. I loved the original Gex, man. Gex, yes, the 2D. Oh, it's so good, man. Was that so Dana fun. Carvey who did the voices for Gex? Let's let's go, Scoob. Let's get back to the mystery, man. He would Captain do the Quasar. Never heard of that one. Captain, Captain, Quasar, Captain was, Quasar was the shooter. Dana Gold was the voice actor, not not Dana Carvey. I was close. I got a, the Dana part right. Yeah, we didn't. Three DOs were really rare. Will I where I lived? We did have a couple people, including myself, who had a Turbo Graphics sixteen. Those were a pretty big mm -hmm. deal because they weren't really supported, so it was like special to have one. Um, I know my dad had a Commodore sixty four. Yeah, yeah, I saw it on my in my grandpa's house. Yeah, dude, it was crazy. The Apple like IIe keyboard. versus Commodore, and then there was Macintosh. Yeah. And there was, uh, well, Trash 80 was prior to that. But I remember Console Wars even back then. I remember it was either school or a friend at his house, but I had an Apple IIe, and I was playing, like, Bard's Tale or something, and he had a Commodore, and it had, I don't even know back then, what better graphics would look like. But it was already being mentioned. It was like, yeah. Jesus Christ, here we go. Yeah. I think Did Citizens... I, uh... Oh, go ahead. I didn't become uh, the only console warrior moments I had, and I was a huge. I was like, I was like up in arms. Was the Xbox 360 versus PS3, and I was just like, oh. dude, we got Gears, we got Halo. What's up? And and you what? You got an AC or something? I was like super. And then and then my dad got a PS3 because it was cheaper than Blu-ray players. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we, and then good games were on it, and I was like, oh, okay. I ate my words. I and the 360 like had, was it the 360 that did HD DVD? Yeah, it, HD yeah, DVD, with the little which add failed. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, it failed spectacularly. It didn't fail. It yeah. like it. I mean, it burned. It, it burned. burned to the ground. It had like it a week went. of. Just people not saying it was going to die. That was it. That was the best you yeah. could do. Right? I had it like was... two two movies on there on the HD I DVD. I had a movie on HD DVD. Was it Firefly, the TV show? I can't remember, but I did have one, and then it was all Blu-ray from that point on. And it yeah. was funny that the con I remember when the console came out, and it played Blu-ray, and it was cheaper than a Blu-ray, and it was just like, this is just makes yeah. no sense. It's like, might as well buy a PS3, right? Yeah, <laughs> it was cheaper. a smart move. I don't know if that was all planned. Like if they yeah. were trying to use it, you know, because some companies will use something as a Trojan horse kind of thing. They'll like let's let's scoot in here. But as and I uh, remember, go ahead. Oh yeah, HDMI came out, um, which was huge, yeah. and uh, yeah. we were we were we were still using. I don't know if it, do they still have it. I didn't, you I were using checked, red, but, green, yeah. yellow, blue. No, the optical optical cord for uh, for uh, for our, the amplifier for surround. Toslink. Toslink. Is it Toslink? Yeah, Toslink. Or you you are talking about it. it's got a little penis and it's, you can see the light yeah, if you push it towards your face. You, you can see no, the you optic. have to like open it and stick the wire yeah, in and close it. That's that's Toslink. Yeah, that's Toslink. Optical. Opti 
Okay, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, we used that. Yeah. I, I was talking about the original 360. Some of them came with just the the red, green, blue, yellow, the just yeah. the RCA style cables. And, yeah, uh, I had that. Yeah. And I remember we got HDMI, and there was that switch. And I was telling you that, like, my friend was over. And we were playing at 720 and didn't know. And we were like, "Dude, this looks awesome!" Because it was our, you know, color. Like you said, a lighting effects were better. And then he drove yeah, yeah. home. And as he was driving home, I called him and I was like, "Dude, I didn't switch it on the back of the 360 to HD. It's now at 1080p. You got to come back." It fucking whipped back, and he was like, "Oh my god!" It was so. It, it was, was like an upgrade of an upgrade. It was the weirdest oh, day of my life, man. Dude, so I got the Xbox 360. I still had a CRT, um, and I plugged it in Absolutely. normally. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and then I was playing King Kong and stuff, and obviously, still, I was like enamored by the graphics. But then um, I connected a HDTV, which was 1080 interlaced, mm -hmm. and um, and I was like, oh my god! And I didn't switch anything yet. I think it was still 720p. And then I went to the system settings and I switched it yep. to 1080i, and I was like, what am I look? What is this? You know? And it, everything just became clear. And, and I was all like, those games <laughs> were 30, so interlaced wasn't a thing. Yeah. And as in, it wasn't a negative. Yeah, it was just the higher res. Yeah. And I remember I had a Sony Wega is what it was called, 27-inch pseudo HD, and that thing weighed, I mean, dude, it crushed the box we put it on. It weighed like 8,000 pounds. Now I'm so accustomed to TVs. Be I put my 60-inch TV up, and it weighed nothing. Like one yeah. person grabbing the yeah. edge, and it didn't even yeah, bend. Yeah. You're like, nah, nah. And back then, <laughs> I, for example, Andy went to the hospital when I gave him the because he tried to put it in the back of his car and pulled his back and had to go get a oh, shot. Man, yeah. It was that. That's oh, how yeah. heavy those old TVs were. It was ridiculous. And it had three and then S video. Do you remember S video? S video was big for consoles for a while. It was just one yeah. video. And uh, then I had the antenna as well for a while, which was ridiculous. Yeah, those old, those old systems when you turn up the graphics or you go to uh, RGB when they would allow you yeah. to change color space and you'd be like dude that looks so much better it was such a it was such an awesome it was almost like 10 years of constant improvements if that like the tech was it was almost like people I, I don't think RT is the same way there was like this 10 years of jumping from different analog cables to and then you go to digital and then like you'd be able to turn up the graphics and then the original Xbox had a hard drive it was yeah. one of the coolest yeah, no moments to have cards. a hard yes and you're just yeah. like, oh, it's got a hard drive inside. What the hell? And it was yeah. so ugly. I loved it, man. That yeah. was the ugliest. It was an Xbox. That's all. It was an X on a box. Like, talk about yeah. unimaginative. Like and a I wire loved... bug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 What were you going to say? You loved yeah. what? I loved the. Uh... There was no, you wouldn't, there was no UI. Like there was a little bit if you had to like, you right. press something System for settings. UI, but yeah. you put the game in and launch and it goes into the game and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then, the and then I remember oh, uh, for the Xbox, I had no issues with this. Like every game would work. But I remember on my cousin's like PS2 and even on my PS1 where it's like you put the game in and we do this. I I do, I'd have this ritual where I, I just wouldn't look at it. You know, like I just, I just look away and and think that because I'm not looking at it, it would just it work. It would run. Yeah. So I was like, I'd be like, hmm. And then I'd hear the sound because there'd be like a distinct sound if a game is working or not working. And then I'd be like, yeah, it's working. Hell yeah. Oh, you mean you could tell it what it hadn't like got in the drive correctly? It, or it yeah, yeah, because yeah. sometimes it was like a 50 50 chance of a game would work or not. And you'd have to like reset it. Yeah. Yeah. I still remember like going into Blades in the 360. And I oh, still man. think Blades. I know why people love it, and I loved it. I'm not as anti-tiles as everybody else, but I do remember how quick Blades just... Sure. That OS, yeah, right? And it had yeah. the sound. It was like a Final Fantasy menu where the sound was like Pavlovian. You know, you were like, oh, that sound. And it was just like... Ch -ch -ch -ch, and it was fast. That was the last fast OS we got on a console, if that makes sense. Like PlayStation, yeah. I know some people like it. I know a lot of people dislike it. Same with Xbox, for sure. But their OSs suck. They're... They're, they're, they suck. They're, they're like Ubisoft OS or OS's made by Ubisoft. They're slow. You know, you go like PlayStation. When I go right to left, it's like, what think? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, dude, I want I'm not a snappy. Yeah. I, I don't know. I could be remembering this inaccurately, but I feel like blades was just like, buck, 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 buck. it was, you well, know, yeah, it was like, it was very fast. And, and I think, um, yeah, when I started kind of like 
disliking it was when they switched to the whole avatar yeah yeah thing and i was like not a fan of that they no. were so big into avatars and it's like look yeah. at my shoe you know because like, of me's right we know yep. that nintendo does something everybody motion controls Copies. everybody wants to copy it yeah 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 i hadn't yeah. thought about that but that is true that is why they did the avatars i guess because the the yeah. what was it we what were they called me's for the week yeah yeah dude i mean i get the personalization because i personalize my picture in discord obviously you want personalization but to create your own os or to uh, augment or, and change your entire os just for that and you're never in it yeah. like i mean and i don't remember... even do i see my avatar ever <laughs> i don't even think i see my avatar what are you gonna say yeah, at least we had your avatar play games. Um, and and I I remember in play, PlayStation had that PlayStation Home thing, where yeah, it was like a yeah. you make your character. And you go, <laughs> Dude, Abzi, it was so <laughs> bad. It they actually showed a guy walking to like a PlayStation to 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 start the game in their MMO, and you're all, what? Why would you not just hit a button? What the fuck are you guys? It so was funny. it was a mess, man. And it, it was, was a back... lot of like people trying to innovate at least, yeah. I guess, or like do something it, cool. It, it's like hacking on CSI Miami, where the ha you know the 3D hacking comes up when they're doing it in a movie, and you're all, dude, nobody hacks that. Like that, what are you? Like that's just ridiculous. It it's slower. It looks like shit. It's not at all what a person would do, but it, it became the zeitgeist for everything. I mean, even yeah, I guess the Matrix. Sort of some of what they showed was a lot of command line stuff, didn't they? Have you seen The Matrix in a while? It's been years since I've yeah, seen a course. Matrix movie. Last time I saw it was probably like four or five years ago. But but I definitely remember it all. Because it wasn't 3D stuff. I mean, The Matrix is The Matrix. But I'm saying when he's hacking at his home, they don't show it much. But isn't he's just using a command line, right? Isn't it yeah, just and when you see, like, you'd see someone in the real world looking at like a bunch of fucking right. things, and yeah, you're like, yeah. oh yeah, he's right there to the, right, the to code the... to like yeah. scroll down rain. Yeah, I don't. That <laughs> was an awesome idea at the time, but like now yeah. when you look back on it, you're like, dude, seriously. I'm um, reading some of the comments real quick before we uh, leave. Terrence says, "I miss those jumps," and I think he means tech. Yeah, it was yeah. upgrade. Oh, dude, upgrading to 720p was pretty big but i remember getting my first 1080p tv and i'm sure it was terrible but still being like dude this is fucking yeah it's all crisp full yeah. hd <laughs> yeah uh -huh. loved the duke as a controller souls keeper says yeah it's oh, my man. favorite controller Shut shonker up. it was <laughs> but dude we don't body shame and we don't controller shame we they what, they didn't shame. have if you remember they didn't they only had two trigger buttons there was no RB and LB and it, but there was a black and white uh, the button the black on the and white right. buttons <laughs> are my so I love six uh, six on the face kind of thing but I hated that they're down so it's down like, to the right yeah. yeah it was like white and B but I love the idea of them but dude it was the first controller I remember picking up going it fits my hands Mm -hmm. Because hey, I got American hands, man. I don't know what you want to say, man. I don't know what it is, but it's like I had giant grubbers. And so it's like when my friends would come over and they'd have their NES or SNES or even Genesis, they were always a little uncomfortable. Like they weren't they weren't sizable enough. And I remember I got the Duke and you could kill somebody with the Duke easily. Like that thing is a mace. You could whip that over your head. You could easily yeah. slaughter a teen <laughs> with that. I'm not yeah. saying I've done it, but I bet you I could. And I love that thing. It weighed, you picked it up. Now when I pick up, I picked up the Forza controller. It's pretty heavy. But you know how you get some controllers and they feel, they're too light. They feel like they just don't I feel like good. Heaviness. I yeah. do. I It makes, it lies to you because they could put lead weights in it. But it feels yeah, like yeah. And it's going to last. have adjustable weights, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, my I've mouse, been. I just got a mouse two days ago. And it's got adjustable weights on it. And I still can't figure out what the fuck I would ever use those for. They're still here. <laughs> But I'm like, yeah. do you add weight to your... I, I know why they... want Because obviously with weight, your muscles actually... it's uh, You can have actually more finesse depending on if it's too light or too heavy. Mm -hmm. Do you put weights on your mouse? Do you use them? I... um I um So I, I got a free mouse when I, when I built this PC and it was too heavy for me. I think I found the perfect like mouse... Uh, so I got, uh, I used to get, I used to love uh, the Logitech G mice. I used to always get those. This is the new every one, single time. Is that... Yeah, but I, I had terrible luck with them where they'd start double clicking yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, for some reason. And I just, I know Razer, people like to shit on Razer, but I, just this simple, Uru, what is it called? Uruboros, I think. And I've never, I've had it for like three, four years, five and you years like it? maybe. Death Adder. 
Razer Death Adder, and I just it's just perfect for me. I just so listen to it's this, light dude. enough. Yeah. It, so was that expensive? The Razer? No, no, not really. Not uh, really. Let me see. Razer so Death Adder. So the one I'm using quite literally has no English translation. It's a Chinese knockoff, and it's called like Glazonski. Yeah. And it's got like 18 <laughs> buttons, right? And I used that yeah. for five years and loved it. And I got to tell yeah. you, I'm using this one, which is a more expensive one. I believe this is like, it's a G502. It's nice. It's wireless, which admittedly I like it. I think it's got the new light speed technology. So there's like no mm -hmm. latency. But I got to tell you, price-wise and me, I haven't noticed magically that I'm better at FPSs or something. I don't know. Maybe I'm just... I, I I don't know what I'm getting with this one, I guess, versus the $18. That's how much my mouse was, 18 bucks. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's why I want yeah, to see no, how much this... your Razer was. Death Adder, I mean, the newer one is like $60. This older one is $42. Mine is still older. Uh, mine is... Uh, I can't even see mine. I feel like you can just only get the newer ones. Uh, yeah, it's around like $40 to $60. Yeah, I guess it's more expensive. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, but I just, you, it's lasted me so long. It's lasted you a long time. Do you think yeah. that, have you noted, do you use the side buttons? Do you? Just two, just two side buttons and I use both of them in games. Oh, do you? Just you two use of them. The side yeah, of course. Oh. oh, interesting. Okay. See, you don't I... use side button. Yeah. Cause like, I don't like pressing V for melee. So I usually put like melee on the side button or dodge this one or has a button here that reduces the dpi uh for like yeah. a sniper you accidentally hit it no i wish it's too far away so oh, okay. yeah i set it up and i'm like oh i like this and then when i put my <clears throat> hand on it it's that far away from the, the button is yeah. like for people with thumbs that are <laughs> like monkey thumb i'm not lying like when i hold it even here i'm barely at the edge but when i put it down i'm way it's got two Two buttons above the thumb, which I'll probably use for maybe reload. I don't know about you. Yeah. I also love to play games where I have a button to center the camera. Like, so for CRPGs, I'll be like, pop, and I'll center the camera. Yeah. So that's yeah, yeah. that's definitely what I like. Um, Oregon Fresh just said worst controller ever. If you're talking about my baby, Luke, no. I'm, we're going to have a problem. Or, or was, the N64 one, because the N64 was a really weird, bad why invite your control. friend over to help you play a game what a <laughs> why shit would it controller have three... dude remember there was I, I i don't know if it was golden eye but there was a there you can do like two player mode in golden eye where someone like moves around and the other person like shoots and looks around or something no way like a... <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> on the same control yeah. see even <laughs> no, they didn't controllers. know what they were doing oh okay okay i thought you golden were okay. eye co-op N64. I remember they like separated. Yeah, it's really funny. So you played. <laughs> um, let me find it. Yeah. Uh, the, the one option. I... Yeah, yeah. Sorry. What? Uh, uh, no, go ahead. What were you gonna say? I thought you. Were no, I can't. Me. I I need to find like a, what it actually did, but it was like literally a, a two player and one person controls half the character. Yeah. I was just gonna say. Speaking of weird control schemes and i've told you this before but when i got so accustomed to the dreamcast using the buttons to go left right up and down because it didn't have two analogs that's why i switched halo because i play lefty on halo because oh, i'm yeah, so you're accustomed crazy. You're yeah because I'm, right? so, I'm not but well i'm ambidextrous but in that i'm normally not but yeah i got so accustomed to the dreamcast and using so quake and stuff you would use those buttons to go forward I mean, it's almost like WASD, really. It's just on right. the, that other finger the other on side. a controller. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast controllers were angled weird, so they were a little uncomfortable. But overall, actually, like they the had the screen, right? They did. Yeah. The LCD thing that they used for like two things. Oh, you could, man. You could raise an animal or keep an animal alive or something by hitting buttons on it if it had its, its little like, I think it had a watch battery or whatever in it. It was just, it was. They were are they, are they the first the first to do the A B X Y in the proper in the Xbox placement? Oh, in the Xbox placement? No, yeah, because yeah, yeah. the original uh or well Sega Saturn did A B C X Y Z. Okay. So they would have been correct. Yeah. And then prior to Because I see them like A B E Y X, like Dreamcast has the Xbox placement. Oh, right. Yeah. They do the uh, diamond versus like a sort. Yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I, I just know that 
the for me, I still and somebody just said this. The Xbox 360 controller was their favorite, and I would say I think I'm still in that. The, they feel the same as the Xbox One and series, but there's something about their their hand contour on a 360 controller. It's almost like mm-hmm. it's got a deeper recess for the uh, sides of your pointer fingers, and they feel more comfortable. The 360 controllers, I really dug. Do you like a the 360 do you controllers? Like, were awesome. Yeah. Do you like thumbsticks well, equal, or do you like thumbsticks? So the Xbox does the what do you call it? Uh, asynchronous. Um... Let me see. So this is the Xbox controller. That's where they're e or they're. That, they... that, that's where they're down. I like this. I really like. I really like the PS5. I didn't like the PS4's controller really that much, but I really like the PS5 controllers a lot. Um, I don't know because see, when I do this, my fingers touch. So do mine. So do mine. Right. That's so weird, yeah. but that's I yeah. actually noticed that as well. Yeah. So I think I do prefer like yeah because they don't touch here. Um, but I do like the D-pad of the 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 Sony one more. Do you I know like what I noticed about the PlayStation Five controller? Also, is that they're a little bit more man spread man spready. They're a little bit more like this. It feels like, which is a little bit more comfortable. I and uh, for holding. Yeah. The one thing I do like um, a lot more is the R one L one buttons. I do like them more than the R B L B like like these these buttons, dude. For, uh, I, but I, I like the triggers of the Xbox more. You know, I there's hate some, yeah. the bumper buttons on the Xbox. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I despise it. I think my <sighs> and my old controller, like this one, the Xbox One controller, it, uh, one of them like is broken or something. Yeah, really and like... you'll get it where it's almost like a piece of bread is stuck in there or something. You'll be tapping it, nothing yeah, will happen, yeah. and you're like, oh, yeah. here we go, it's gone bad again. Yeah, I don't. That's one thing I like the bumper buttons better on the place. I don't I like the Xbox more. I don't know why the controller more, but I think mm-hmm. it's also because there's a lot of wasted space on that PlayStation controller with a little touchpad. And I have oh, accidentally yeah. touched the touchpad with a thumb or what have you and just been like, yeah, I'm not a big and also the battery life on that thing just pisses Did me you, off. You know what fucks with me every single time on this controller? Which button is start? Ha- Dude, games have an indicator, like, press this, and 100% of the time, I press the wrong button. Dude, dude, I, do I not we can't be the one. only ones who do that, because I will be playing a fucking Xbox game or a PC game with the Xbox controller, and it'll show the three lines, and I'll be, I'll fucking have yeah, to go. Yeah, and I'll be like, select. Yeah, yeah oh, dude, every time. Or yeah. how many times do you think it's the map, and it's the, it's the system button for saving and loading? You want to go to the map, and you're like, come on, guys. Yeah, I don't know what it time. is. I don't know why they put the. I don't even know what the lines mean. I'm sure it's just starting, but you know they want to be different. Yeah. But yeah, um, Hush Al yeah. Ghoul, five dollars super chat. I got stuck. I got stick extensions for PS5 controllers. They're too short normally. Huh. I don't. Know, my fingers bump if I like where to like move right while looking to the left. I guess. Yeah, if you go like this for whatever yeah. reason, I guess you. Yeah, it would be a certain move, but I definitely have that. Um. But yeah, I I definitely have found that Xbox 360 is probably my favorite than series. Uh, but I think ser- I think series and PlayStation both have issues with longevity. This one is the unsung hero, dude. Play- I love uh, this controller. Is that Nintendo Pro? Yeah, the Pro. The buttons are so nice and big. And... I don't like the bumpers on that either. No, the, the, I hate that's them. the issue. The triggers are way too small. The yeah, triggers don't have any throw at all. They're like... Bak-ak. They don't, yeah. 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 That's but the issue. Yeah. It is. It feels good. But I dude, think the that... battery life... <laughs> It's yeah. crazy, dude. The bat. I'm sorry, life. but the battery life on the PlayStation Five oh, is dear. ridiculously bad, man. That's it's why I so... have two controllers on a charging so station, I. and I have to yep. like switch them over. <laughs> I have mine on an Iron Man and Incredible Hulk, and they both <laughs> are sitting on those, and then they both have wires to them, so I can grab one if it goes bad at any time. I I, I do think that we're getting to the point to where I know people want rechargeable, but you know the the packs. Or they want it in the thing, but to me, it just doesn't make sense. It's like, let me choose the battery, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like, uh, ship me some batteries in the case, but overall, I want to control it because, dude, I don't know what's going on with the PlayStation 5, but I swear to God, it's like four hours. And you just, be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I is, play yeah. longer, but it's short. Yeah, it's, it sucks. It is very short. Yeah. Um, that's it. We'll end on that. It's very short, unlike this podcast. Here's, oh, wow. says, it, did we go for long? Oh, yeah, we did. Dude, I, I think we went for like almost four hours. Yeah, we got a, almost four. Yeah, almost three, three four hours. hours. We are longer than the war or the Call of Duty Modern Warfare campaign by almost an hour. Oh, I'm just joking. <laughs> it's about half an hour. But anyway, 
That'll be it for us. Thank you, everybody who uh, subscribed or joined the patron. I appreciate it. Uh, and that'll be it for us. Check us out on Friday. We're going to be doing a podcast with all the gents talking more games. Uh, and then a review from me next week. Yes, I still do reviews. <laughs>